Hello everyone, uh, it's time for Banjo-Kazooie Any% percent versus Banjo-Tooie- Nope, that's wrong. Banjo-Kazooie 100% versus Banjo-Tooie Any% percent with me, Smoothies, and Ted, X and Shadow. Uh, for the Wait, chair. did I get bamboozled? Am I doing 100% and you're Surprise, doing- Surprise, bitch. We hit 10k, okay. you're doing 100%. <laughs> oh god, okay, well. <laughs> oh. Alright. Um, today we prove which Banjo game is the superior Banjo game, it's Tooie. Um, yes. Isn't the superior one I the one just, you can get over with in, faster? <laughs> uh, no. You see, I can just, I can hear the silent disapproval of everybody else in the room, and it yeah. just makes me sad. <laughs> um, okay, I got, I got you, Ted. If nobody's got Ted, I've got Ted. Okay. Um, thank you, Stefan. I'm glad I've got <laughs> at least one person. <laughs> Mr. Brain is also on your side in the chat. Uh, thank you, Sabrina. Um, so anyway, uh, we are here today and the other days we're doing this stream uh, to, <laughs> to raise money for the Diabetes Research Institute. Uh, they do lots of wonderful work uh, raising. Uh, well, I mean, we raise money for them, but uh, they do lots of wonderful work coming up with treatments and cures for diabetes. As of this moment, we have raised. How many dollars have we? Ten thousand ninety-five dollars and sixty-nine cents. Kevin, I was hoping you'd finish that. Ten thousand ninety-five dollars and sixty-nine cents. Nice. Let's, let's do it as Joe Swanson together. Ten thousand ninety-five dollars and sixty-nine cents. Peter. 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 <laughs> and, and quick reminder that today our do we have our daily raffle, which is the the cute banjo kazooie plushie. That it's only five dollars. You put that in, that'll be raffled off at the end of the race. And also, at the end of the race is the last time you have to put in for the Crash Insane Trilogy Bid War Race, which will be happening uh, first thing on Friday uh, during our second weekend uh, uh, block. Right now, Crash 3 is a giant lead, but I mean, if you all put in, a, like, basically put in everything into it, you could have Crash 2 have, yeah. get a chance. Anything can happen. Do we want to get started and then we'll go over the rest of this, the charity stuff? Sure. Um, uh, uh, so Steven, are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, uh, can we have so, someone count uh, us down? Sure, I'll count us down. So on go, down from three as usual. Three, two, one, go. And they're off. We're off. We've done the thing. Uh, we do have two new donations that popped up uh, in between streams or at the start of the stream before we did the bumper. Uh, we have $40 from Headbod, who says, happy to donate to a good cause. Keep up the good work, guys. And he has a smiley face. Thank you, Headbod. Thank you. And we have $5 from Ian Bo, who says, After my playthroughs, my ranking of Banjo Collectathons plus Yuka is Kazooie, Grunty's Revenge, Yuka, Tui. Aside from Witchy World, I don't like any of the level design in Tui, and exploring feels like a massive drag. While Yuka isn't great, the fully upgraded movement is more satisfying than Tui. Interesting. I will, I I will give you Grunty's Revenge. Uh, good ass game. I like that game a lot. I, I know TJ. TJ is gonna be very mad because TJ also likes because uh, Tui as his favorite and hates Yuka. TJ hates Yuka. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, an immense disdain. Okay, <laughs> it's it's interesting because like, ukulele has problems, but I don't hate it. It's I, it's good. It's like it's exactly the game that people asked for. Um, yeah. Well, so yeah, that. The thing to me is, I don't think it's the game people asked for. I think people wanted a sequel to Kazooie, and they got a sequel oh, right. to Tui. What am I doing? If that makes sense, um, yeah. Like, and that's not a problem. Like, having a sequel to Tui would be fine. Uh, it's just that they didn't make it good. I already fucked up. Oh, oh, you're doing the you're doing the tutorial. You know what? It would literally be faster if I restart. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually gonna restart. Uh, do it. He's gonna go oh. for the lap. And he's it's back. okay. It's, it's okay. Um, you know, I need all the help I can get. You might be wondering why is Steven playing on N64 or more accurately Switch online and I'm playing on XBLA. It's because I liter I literally need every advantage I can get. Tui is a much longer game. Um if I play with the N64 version, the lag adds like an extra 2 hours to the run. Holy I'm not shit. even joking. Yeah, the I game, listen, Banjo-Tooie is a very impressive game for the time. I love it. Uh but the N64 
Bless its heart. It's trying its best. Um, the lag, especially when you get to Hailfire Peaks, it's like it barely chugs along. Yeah. Like yeah. If, 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 sorry, Ted. Go ahead. No, I'm, I'm, you can probably explain. Oh, man, I got achievements. Oh, boy. I, oh, let's go. I was going to say, um, I, if you haven't played Kazooie, or I'm sorry, Tui on hardware, you need to see it for yourself. Uh, I bought Tui at one point on N64 because I was like, oh, what if I bought every N64 game? And I quickly wised up. Uh, but... I was playing Tui because I was I I didn't play Kazooie until probably 2015 or so, and even still I'm like, man, this is a better game than Mario 64, and that's like one of my it, first it games is. ever. It is, it like, is, but it, it surpassed my nostalgia, which is impressive. You know what I mean? Uh, so I went to Tui because I was like, yeah, you know, I, I I'm sure I'll like Tui for what it is, and I, I do like what I've played of Tui for what it is, but on N64 it is unplayable. <laughs> it's just it, you can't. By modern play. by modern standards, I would agree. Um, yeah. Like, oh man, it is so nice playing this game on um, on Xbox because like the game runs at a silky smooth. Um, I think it's thirty. It might be sixty. I don't. I don't know. Um, it runs at a really nice frame rate, and it's just oh man, it's beautiful. I mean, I, Banjo One has some lag, but not nearly as much. Uh, you can tell they were trying their best uh, yeah. with Tui. Like, because yeah. if you look at some of the, like, the lighting, especially in the texture quality, they, it is a very impressive that they got the game to run, period. But, yeah. the uh, fuck? What are you doing? Uh, very, very quickly, uh, some, uh, something, something from, uh, somebody asked uh, a question uh, yes. for you from last, uh, for Ted, for, from last stream. It was basically, sure. uh, who do you think is the best Dragon Quest Eleven companion and why is it Silvando from John Struckman? Thank you for your donation, John. Um... So are we talking about battle or like as a character? Because if we're talking about as a character, then yeah, Silvando is like the best one in the t in the games by far. Um, in terms of battle, unfortunately, Silvando is like one of the worst, <laughs> sadly. Like he's okay early game because he's got decent status moves and he's like a decent jack of all trades kind of character. But by the time you get to end game, he just doesn't really have a purpose because all the other characters are just better uh, at that point. But thank you for your donation. We love Silvando in this stream. And also another question somebody had was, what was the best level in either Banjo game? The best individual level? Hmm. Um, that's a good one. Um, in Banjo 1, I think it's Treasure Trove Cove is my favorite level mm, in that game. That's pretty um, good. Yeah. Um, I uh some of the later levels in Banjo One frustrate me a little bit, but I really like Treasure Trove Cove. For Tui, for me, I would say Glitter Gulch Mine is my favorite uh level. What about you, Steven? What is your favorite? I'm a basic bitch. Stages? Click Clock Wood. Click Clock Woods. Okay. And I know you're not a huge fan of Tui, but did you do you have a favorite in Tui? Tui, I like um the circus one. Oh, the circus level's great. Uh, Witchy, Witchy World. World. Yeah. See, I like levels that have, like, a big pillar in the middle and I go around. That way I can never get lost. And Witchy World is sort of one of those levels. Yeah. Um, there's also uh, Pterodactyl Lane's kind of like that. But the landmarks aren't ne aren't nearly as, um, as striking as in Witchy World, for sure. Because Witchy World has a very clear like these are the four parks kind of structure going on if you think about the levels of banjo kazooie like almost almost every level is like there's a big Shit. pillar in the middle and you go all the way around except you know that's why um uh the swamp level is the one you get lost in because it's not structured like that goldstorm said steven's house has a giant pillar in the middle so he doesn't get lost it's true it's true <laughs> I, I, also, I, think, I think Pterodactyl Land might be my least favorite in Tui, just because it's like, I, I, even though there technically is a pillar, but it's just everything kind of looks the same, so I keep getting lost in it. Uh, not Grunty's Land. Industries? Pterodactyl See, Land Grunty, is just large. At least Grunty it's Industries, bad. I can... Oh. Sorry. Hey, everybody. Yeah. You, uh, you first. I was cutting you off. I'm sorry. No, I, I, I think, like, Grunty Industries, it's like the inside is definitely a bit confusing, but I think it's like it feels much more easier to figure out, especially because you have, like, the outside uh, area is, like, yeah, like, the outside area has the whole, oh, center pillar thing, and everything's connected to it. It was, like, Pterodactyl Land was just a bit too, especially trying to figure out where to go and everywhere uh, in there. Counterpoint, Sorry. dinosaurs. Yeah, you can't argue with dinosaurs, but uh, to go off of what you guys are saying here, everybody. Um... 
in my personal opinion, the worst of Tui was actually, I'm going to have to side with the Tari. Uh, no, actually, I side more with uh, Grunty Industries just because it's kind of like obnoxious. But, well, the two most obnoxious levels in that in the game are uh, Cloud Cuckoo Land and uh, Grunty Industries. But at least with Cloud Cuckoo Land, there's actually a rhythm to the madness you figure out. So what you start peeling off the first part, it all comes down, down easier. Grunty Industries just never fucking stops the complexity aspect. Like, yeah, I agree, Matt. Because, like, there is... It is... I think that there's... I I personally like how kind of interconnected and how complex some of the Jiggies and Tui can be, but Grunty's Industries does kind of go over the line a lot. Like, to get Weldar's uh, Jiggy, for example, you have to switch into... You have to... You have to Bring use down Mumbo a switch to turn to have Mumbo to go and become the washing machine to press the thing to turn off the fan so that you can go into the boss fight so that you can fight the boss fight and then walk to the Jiggy after that. It's like I that one was, Jiggy um, takes an hour. I thought it was um you had to use Mumbo to turn the EMP off so that the washing machine could hit the switch to do that. Yeah, that's I'm I tried to say that maybe I did a bad yeah, job. First is, no, you, no, first you do mumbo, then you go to humba, then you become the washing machine, then you do all that. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, the stegosaurus and it's times least, too. Yeah, too. It's also <laughs> the Starachosaurus family, which is like, oh fuck off, lady. Well, well one well, one thing I do, I I do love Mumbo's Mound. I love the simplicity of Mumbo's Mound. It's just like just because it's like oh everything is so simple and like done in a specific way that really gets you into the game and be like it okay, this is the way that you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah I, it's love, a good level. I, I love speeding through everything, just unlocking all of the uh, jiggies, but then going and get getting the uh, getting the transformation, so you can just run through and collect all ten jiggies like without uh, doing the like. I, this this is a level I love to speed run hundred percent in. Well, Mumbo. Oh, yeah. Right. See, Mumbo Mumbo's Mountain is also really good in the sense of like it's just like the, one of the perfect starting levels, even more so than a Spiral Mountain. Because yeah, everything's laid out for you in the way in that the player can easily understand and understand where they're going, how the level level layouts are gonna be, how each of them are gonna how each of them are gonna play out, how the notes are laid out so that they can guide the player combat and stuff like that. It's a really great tutorial level, especially since some of the abilities you use in here, notably Shit. the beat buster and shot, end up being the most used abilities in the game. Yeah. I, I do want to jump in really quick uh, for, for one funny thing and one uh, one answer to a question that experiment also popped in in chat. Someone in chat had asked, uh, like, I presume Steven doesn't allow you to use save states or restore points. Correct. Uh, he's playing the game as if it was on N64. Uh, if you were playing the Xbox version, it'd be different, but then also you would be winning in a landslide no matter what. Um, well, you're going to win in a landslide no matter what here, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, well, if, yeah, if Steven he, has if to dies, joke pretty damn hard yeah, if he dies a for me times, to lose, then it could fuck him over. Uh, and then there was a, a conversation happening in chat about the price of banjo tui uh, cartridges, and I looked it up out of curiosity. A, they have dropped in price. They used to be go like go for like fifty to one hundred. They're now oh, in really? like the thirty to forty range. But that's most only notably, because of the emulation port. Because what? Because at some point, like the retailer resellers have to get the idea into their head that why am I paying you hundred dollars for a game if I could pay five dollars for it just to like get it off of the um responding stores uh, prices. So it's interesting because this happened in the last year because it was like 100 up. last year. It's Final Fantasy few... VII had the same things too. Yeah, this happened in the last year since the COVID bump in prices made everything much more expensive. Like it was our banjo was already high to begin with. Um, so for it to have dropped suddenly several years after it hit Xbox 360 is surprising. Uh, Tui should have been the one that dropped. Uh, I'm sorry, Kazooie should have been the one that dropped, not Tui, um, because now it's functionally free if you decide to pay for the online. But my favorite part of this is when I searched the prices on eBay, the first result is Shin Megami Tensei 4. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, of course it is. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But yeah, I'm seeing like 25 to like 40-ish range. You can get it for cheaper, but they might be repro cards at that point. That's it, it's interesting. It's bad for repro. Well, repro and bootlegs are $20 according to Triforce 141. Yeah, and that's what cat. it seems like about. Um, and a lot of these are probably people trying to sell a repro as a real one as well because it's eBay. So there's some of that too, but uh, uh, buyer, be. buyer beware! Yeah. I got Nejo Kazooie. Wait, why do I have Doki Doki Literature Club? Oh no! If that uh, ran on N64, I'd be impressed. They're practically the same game, right? Ah yes, noted, noted. Uh, cosmic horror game, Banjo Kazooie. Uh, you know, I just you should always try to date Jam Jars. You know, like he's just best girl. 
I don't know. Jam Jar strikes me as the kind of guy who would agree to anal if you bent over. What the He's fuck? from the military. Uh, He's from the military, so I can buy that. Speaking of what Matt just said, we have eight dollars and fifty-one cents from the Goofy <laughs> Even, who says, "Bro, you see that bear? Why does it have a bird in its backpack? Why does it have a backpack? I think that witch did something to my shrooms. Did I put my dog down today? Uh, I'm sure he was healthy." Uh -huh. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. Ne Thanks, Mario. Next time you eat the bright shrooms you're supposed to be eating. Thanks, Evan. So we're at a uh, hundred. I'm sorry. We're at ten thousand one hundred four dollars and twenty cents uh, currently, which is just still incredible. I like uh, going on eBay and looking up to see the highest price of, of any one particular thing. It's always fun. Yeah, oh, what, you know what I, you know what like I like how much somebody is trying to sell right, any like, piece well, of garbage for? Well, you I mean, to... oh, oh. You first. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, yeah, the, the highest Banjo-Kazooie in 64 is, is it's it's almost $8,000. It's one cent low l less, but it is it is a WADA. There it is. Yeah. That's the my game, huh? The second one, uh, sealed N64 game Banjo Kazooie, it's 6500 or best offer. That's just someone. I'm going but... to offer $10. David. <laughs> David you I'm have not... yourself a deal. Oh. David, I want you to tell you... me your top 10 prices. And top, top five, 10... top five prices. Wait, wait, you mean on eBay or just like no, what you're... I. David's top five prices. Okay. <clears throat> At number five, my top price, of course, is twenty four ninety nine. That's a pretty that's good a, price. Oh, yeah. That's a right. At number four, it's a, it's a slightly strange one. Seventeen dollars and forty three cents. Hmm. Uh, number three, uh, nine ninety nine. Exclamation okay. point. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking. Uh, yeah. Uh, number two, uh. 350 or two for six and then uh number one is of course uh they 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 call it a benjamin uh because because you know why it's a hundred dollars yeah uh because benjamin franklin invented that that specific number wow i didn't know that i knew yeah. that the romans didn't have a concept for zero but i didn't know that the americans didn't have a concept for 100 before uh, benjamin franklin <laughs> but he was pretty smart so i can imagine it would it would take a mind like his to invent you, it you i mean after all he's a little kind of my right fellas anyway you, you could say he was keeping it 100. Hey, well. yeah! we, got, we got five dollars from ian bow who says, fun fact, if you do the hidden goggles puzzles in Kazooie before Click Clock Woods on Xbox, the last puzzle will despawn the four notes in the room portrayed. I learned that the hard way and needed to 100% the game two different times. We should have oh. left the goggles extra crispy. Should have oh, left goggles no. extra crispy, rather. I hate oh, that sounds awful. Oh, God. Right? Because you have That's no way such figuring a weird glitch. I hate glitches like that, too, for the record. Because you yeah, get a feeling it's a massive oversight, like... Because I wholeheartedly imagine that was one of those glitches that only sleep through because the developers were like, nobody's going to fucking do that beforehand, so we ain't got to worry about that part. It's F92. also such a random thing, too. Like, why would that happen, you know? F92 Diaz is saying that it was patched, so that may have been patched out. So that might have been Mr. Really patch! Oh, no! <laughs> Mr. Patch is one of my favorite bosses in the game. He's pretty He's cool. my favorite battle track in the game. Boss is kind of like, eh. It's, I mean, it's like, it's cool for... I don't know, Weldar's boss theme might be better than um, than Mr. Patch's. They're both pretty good. Uh, oh, no, you'll um, never get that argument out of me. I'll, I'll listen to Patch's easily over Waldar. Waldar certainly has a more menacing theme to it, but holy shit, does um, Patch's theme fit, feel like a big top battle? Right. And Ju Justin Mon wants to ask, how about Mr. Pants? Mm. He's on the, the TV in Bo Boggy's house. Uh, fuck him. I mean, Boggy, not Mr. Pants. Boggy's, Boggy's an asshole. Yeah, he kind of is. Like... No, he totally is. He's a useless ass, worthless ass son of a bitch. Yeah, he like, he's sitting at home watching porn. Actually, no. he's actually watching porn. This is canonical. No, more like um, he's he's off sledding while his children are starving. Well, there's that. But in Banjo-Tooie, he's at home watching porn while his mother... While what? his wife, I should say, is taking his kids to an amusement park. 
To be perfectly fair to Boggy on that one, and I can't believe you're making me defend Boggy. If the West is his way, I'm going to watch some porn before she comes home. Why not with? Do you think the wife has a boyfriend? She has to. Her husband's fucking Boggy. There's no way in hell you're putting up with that. <laughs> he can do better, I think. Um, although she does beat her children. Uh, that's also canonical. So um... I think she only beats the fat one. Jesus. Because yeah, but that, that's because... the only one we see her beat. That's no, because it's no, thing. it's because the fat one reminds her so much of Boggy, and it reminds her of the of the life she threw away. I hate this conversation. It's like she sees her husband. She sees her husband in the fat one, and she's like, "Why did I marry him instead of the other guy?" I think she's hitting Yuka on the side. Um, uh, by the well, way, I imagine she. I imagine she would have to tap Yuka. She can't really mate with Lily, or else the bat's gonna blow up. Matt, can you introduce yourself for those who don't know you? No. Oh, Sega. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm Matthew, uh, formerly of the SGB. No, not the KGB, the SGB. We're just formerly of the Super Gaming Brothers alongside some call me Johnny and Creepy Elliot. Uh, these days, I'm pretty much just relegated to wa wandering the earth, <laughs> so to speak. I make occasional uh, jump-ins for like Johnny's Twitch stream here and there, but ultimately, I'm just kind of like off doing my own thing for the time being. Which is a nice way of saying I'm too stupid to learn how to edit. <laughs> if it helps, same. Editing sucks, man. It's yeah. not that it's too hard once you learn how to do it. It's just tedious. It's no, I'm just too damn. I'm just too damn dumb to do it. Like I keep trying to learn it and it never sticks. Editing is my this life. Is, this is why I pay Chris to do it because I don't want to do it. Yo, hi, Chris. Chris, pay me to do the thing that Kevin pays you to Yo, do. Subcontracting. Let's go. <laughs> Steven, I'll give you 50% of what Kevin gives me if you edit the videos. I'm to post that <laughs> you want 50% to do nothing? I'll cut well, out yeah. the middleman. Steven, I'll pay you 75% of what I pay Chris. No, 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 no. Steven, I'm the one getting you the you're work. You're going to pay him longer. more than what you would make out of it. It kind of I makes me feel like you're losing out I'm on the investment. Do it for free. Chris, I don't pay scabs. Hold on, wait. Kev, uh, Chris, I'll pay you 25% to do the work. Okay, this is coming back, to like... back in the deals. This might this be is, this is the Patreon method. Everybody gives each other a dollar. It's infinite money. <laughs> Who said that? Who said that twenty five percent bit? Was that news movies? Uh, hey Kevin. Hey Kevin. I've got I've got something for you. you I'll sure do it for one hundred and twenty five percent of what you pay Chris. You know, I could do that. I mean, you guys, yeah, yeah, you guys work? suck as businessmen. No wonder why the hell you guys never learned how to use the Pokemon GTS. <laughs> Yeah, Kevin. Pokemon GTS trade offer. I you give me uh, <laughs> legendary uh, shiny Lugia. You receive level two Magikarp. You, mm. You're not businessing right. Kevin. How can you business on a platform on the Nintendo DS Pokemon Diamond GTS? Well, you simple. could, you could you're do business simple. on you're Chinatown Wars. Simple. Your ass has to think of your ass can't be the your ass can't have your demands met. You be the supplier. Just think a little bit about what goes good on the market. Starters. Yeah, people will. Yeah, but people are asking for impossible things like level no, six Venusaurs, you, and you set the demand, and then they, and then you, you become the supplier, and you make the demands. That's how I filled out my entire Black Two Pokedex. I just used the GTS. Uh, Chris, what were you gonna say, Daniel? Oh, I started eating again. I was just gonna say, you give me a hundred percent of what you usually pay me, and I'll send you porn of the vending machine from ukulele. Oh, I guess Does that, that exists. Rule 34, Benson, vending machine ukulele creature. Let's go. I, I get that from their official Twitter, though. Like, they... <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. Like, I mean, even when you like 100% Kazooie, you're going to spend like, you'll probably be done Kazooie 100% by the time you're even scratching the Pterodactyl land of the area in the second game. Well, Steven, how far are you in Kazooie right now? Uh, tr 12 jiggies. You, you're at 12 jiggies? Yes. Yeah, like, when you know what you're doing in each of the levels, like, those sort of take, like, 30 <laughs> minutes to just, post. Just beat Mumbo's Bound. He's about to go to Treasure Trove Cove. This I've got like four. Ted, and Ted was like, yeah, I'm on the washing machine world. And I was like, what? How? I've got four jiggies. <laughs> oh, Ted. Yeah, it's because, like, as I said again, like, because Banjo Kazooie's worlds are much more compact than Tui's, not only do you rarely ever get lost, you're able to move along at a reasonable clip. 
compared to Tui, where it's like, if you forget which particular pathway to go, have fun getting lost for like 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, it's kind of like Kazooie's better or something. I don't know. Oh, God. Uh, you shut your whore mouth. All right. If you're ever bored one day, here's a fun thing to do. You know that uh, the formerly Dolly Mini AI generator thing? I thought uh, you were going to talk about the former Dolly Lama. Go on. No, no, that would be a much different conversation. Um, so if you go if you go on that on the AI generating bot thing, uh, it is immaculate at producing washing machines in different video game franchises. So if you do like wa realistic washing machine in Alien Isolation, it will give you specifically like the the green hue. You can do washing machine in GTA San Andreas, and it looks like it's from GTA. It's it's actually incredible, uh, and the washing machine is always perfect. So yeah. Send tweet. Oh, I got bit by Snacker. What the fuck? I never get bit. Dun, 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 dun. I never get bit. What I always remember about Snacker is that he was almost a pinata in Viva Pinata. But then they were just like, I think they were trying to figure out like how to make him work. And they were just like, oh, it would have seemed weird if with him just waddling on land before you get to water. And then it was like, nah, let's just not do it. I'm like, oh, I would have loved to see Snacker as a pinata. That'd be a that'd be cute. I'm gonna be at Witchy World, and then Steven's gonna be like, oh yeah, I beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate. We had a first time chatter a moment ago. A secret humor man, welcome. Who said one jiggy, but 315 notes. Jesus Christ. Is that what you're at? That time? might be the one. That might be like one of the few um balancing things that's going to help out the Kazoo, the Tui runner is is that he also has to worry about notes. Yeah, like if... if oh wait, if, shit, Ted does too. It, well, yeah, not nearly needs, as much though. You don't need... I don't no, even need to you, get all of them. I no, don't even don't need, need to get, get all the moves. But you need a whole shitload of them if you're going to learn jam jars and stuff. Yeah, but like if I'm not getting all the jiggies, I don't need a lot of the end game moves. You're um, going to need and, at least Clockwork Egg if you're going to beat uh, Gruntilda. Yeah, I, I yeah, but like Neat. clockwork egg, clockwork. There's so many free notes that it's not really a problem. I Normally. don't. No notes aren't going to be an issue. Yeah, a lot of them are on the way. Especially because the way the way the notes are placed in Tui, it's like, hey, you can grab them and go whatever wild thing. Kazooie, you have to get all 100 notes in yeah. the level without dying, or else you yeah, can get like that, like all over again. That's the another reason why the XBLA version was a little bit better, in my opinion, because I fucking hated getting the notes in that game when it came to Rusty Bucket, Bucket Bang, Click Clock Wood. I, the worst story I've ever, I'm ever going to have with Banjo Kazooie was playing the N64 version, 100%ing uh, the uh, Rusty Bucket Bay at the first try, and then the game freezing on the last note. I kind of thought your story was going to be like, I was almost ready to 100% Banjo 2. Tui, and then next thing I know, the ninjas attacked. <laughs> By the way, have we read Juan Delgado's donation? I don't think so. Oh, okay. no, we didn't. Sorry. Oh, this one starts with Ted, so Ted, you answer first, basically. Juan gives uh, $5.49. Thank you, Juan. Who says, since we're halfway through the year, what is your most anticipated game of 2022 so far? And I don't... Of which, have any at the moment. Ted, what is your hopes for the Splatoon 3 Direct besides a global test fire? Hence, start with Ted, probably. I don't think we need a global test fire. Like, the game, I think the global test fire was always more for so that, like, Nintendo knew what they were doing. So, since we know that, like, Nin Splatoon Online's already fine, so I think we're probably okay on that. That's fair, actually, yeah. It's, it's pretty much just a hype builder at this point. In terms of my that. most anticipated game for the year, it's probably, um... It was probably Kirby, actually. Um, what the? I was sneaking, you piece of garbage. Okay. What else, what else is coming in the year? Uh, probably Splatoon currently. Um, but yeah. Um, other than that, like I would say it's probably either Splatoon or uh, Kirby. Uh, but Kirby's already out, so. Well, there's yeah. the the other Kirby game that's coming out. The. I mean, that looks fun, but it's not like the most excited game i am about for the whole year you know There's regarding also... uh ted's little snake blunder here sorry i'm gonna let you guys re-answer the question in a minute uh ted in the <laughs> xbla version it is much trickier to tiptoe in the uh, xbla version than it is in the n64 version so this one gets a little harder for all the wrong reasons all right we're back to your questions yeah. there's also right. bayonetta 3 coming out for those that might be excited for that um I'm curious how that game is going to run more than anything, because, man, that looks like it's a mess based on all the trailers. I have no 
like real f looking forward to games at the moment. As it stands right this second, I'm working through Digimon Survive. Kirby was a great time though, I have to confess. I really enjoyed my run with time with that. I also was playing um Fire Emblem Three Hopes. But other than that, it's like I really can't think of a game I'm looking forward to at the moment. Even Digimon Survive was like a what the fuck purchase off a of win because I was like, you know what, I haven't played a Digimon game in years, let me give this a whirl. Steven, how about you? What is my what now? Hmm? -hmm? Uh, <laughs> game you're looking forward to this year. This year, I was looking forward to Breath of the Wild 2, but that got delayed. Um, yeah. what, what, what am I looking forward to this year? I don't know what's coming out. I was about to say, yeah, because I got, uh, yeah, Splatoon 3, Bayonetta 3, uh, the Pac-Man World, the remake. Uh, th those are the main ones I was thinking of. Uh, I'm trying to remember what. Oh, else. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm excited for Frontiers. I'm like the only person on Earth who's excited for that game. Oh yeah, and I'm saying Sonic. I How dare you forget Sonic. I uh, have watched I multiple just, I trailers still and I still don't know what to make of that game. It's because like Frontier that's going to be one of those. Really... It's, it's not just still doesn't have a release date, so that, that no, it's not even a release better. date for me. It's like i watched all the trailers whoa, so whoa, far, whoa. and while I don't have any issues with the controller or anything, there's, I'm just keep God. looking at it like for Sonic me. Frontiers. Yeah, there is. Wait, am I thinking oh, Frontiers no. or, or uh, that's a new game, right? Chad, you have a chance. Steven's controller. Oh no, I did. I wasted time. I don't need to get any book pages. Uh. Also, the internet completely. I think the 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 uh, the lightning and thunder came over here because the internet completely shut off for me. <laughs> oh. Um, uh oh. Chris, I need to know what's the controversy around Bayonetta three? Does do people think it looks bad? Oh no, that, that, so that, that was um, that was me. Hi, um, it, I I think it looks kind of like the the it looks like it's not running at a good frame rate at all based on the actual trailers they're showing. Like the, there's the whole kaiju thing they're doing, and it just looks like it runs like poop. And I'm hoping I, that that's fixed by the time the game is out. But so far, I haven't seen much that left me confident in the stuff besides the main Bayonetta gameplay. Uh, Are they doing other things? They're doing like a weird kaiju system thing. Which, uh, the thing about Bayonetta, though, is it's like, don't get me wrong, 1 and 2 run great on it, but 3 is going to ask for a lot more, and 3 is also going to have to deal with the problem of the Switch, while an infinitely good system, does lack a little bit of horsepower, maybe necessary demanding of 3, so they're going to have to make a cut. And I hope they do, because in all honesty... Lag is not something you want to ever endure in an action game like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry. That's like that just sucks the fucking fun out of it. You're not you're limp, you're you're limp, you're flaccid like me on a Thursday night, and you just don't have it, and you just don't want to play around it when you're when you just sla when the game like slags on you like again me on a Thursday night. Um. So, but like, I mean, did any of you guys play Astral Chain? I've that's that was a game long on my list. I completely forgot about because again my ADHD. Because it's like I'm probably gonna forget what I just talked about in an hour from now. Uh, that but game's actually pretty good. I liked it a lot. I'm but I'm also not a big platinum fan. I liked it because it was a little bit less chaotic than most yeah. of the other platinum yeah, games. And so does the game rate you depending upon how well or poorly you do in battle? It does, but I like it doesn't make that. fun. It doesn't make fun of you at least the way that uh, Bayonetta does, where like when you're bad at the video game, it like calls you a loser um, all the time. So you know, there's there's that at least. But um, that game didn't have any problems running. So hopefully they use a similar engine and they don't try to do too much nonsense. Um, I um I have Astral Chain. I did not uh, did not start it. Um, the story's bad. Um, like it's trying to be interesting, and there's like interesting ideas, but it's like just the mystery isn't all in the care. The mystery, you know who the bad guy is literally immediately, and the characters are not super likable. But like it's a fun enough game. Um, the with a interesting gameplay loop. Um, yeah. I remember enjoying the Oops. 10 hours of it. I played back when I gamefly it when it came out, but I do not remember a thing about that game. Is Gamefly still a thing? Yeah, yeah. Chris yeah. put me on a Gamefly. They, they they have the best prices on game sales for like used games. Pretty much consistently. 
and you don't have to be a member to buy games from them either. So yeah, and they that's ship what with I like do if I actual, want something cheap. This yeah. isn't an ad for Gamefly, but they ship with an actual. Uh, See an ad for She-Hulk. Yeah, I was gonna say there's an ad for She-Hulk <laughs> on Ted's screen right now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Gamefly like sent like they keep the cases like in the warehouse or whatever, so you get the actual case, you get the DLC code if there's one in the in the box. Because all they do is they use the discs uh, and send those out. So uh, if you ever want to buy used games, check Gamefly first because they're usually pretty uh pretty on the spot. Ooh, yeah, very handy. I think I got um I want to say I got. I got a bunch of games for, like, the cheapest prices there, specifically. I can't remember which ones I did, but, like, uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon I got for, like, 25 or 30 bucks, and that game's still, like, 60 usually. For Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? For okay. The, for the uh, Switch one. Okay. That, it, that, po- that's a game I had, like, nostalgia for, and I just kind of wanted it. Pokemon yeah. Mystery Dungeon is really funny because I feel a lot of the fans for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon really only, like, one game in that franchise and it's the one of the ds ones uh i like the uh i like the first one but it's just kind of like a soft spot kind of game yeah um now speaking of chris we didn't get your uh most anticipated of the year what for what's oh, last oh thank you um i have a morbid curiosity for sonic frontiers i have a hopeful curiosity for bayonetta 3 and I'm going to be that basic bitch and hopefully not start Pokemon arguing, but I am actually looking forward to Scarlet and Violet. I think oh, the new yeah. Pokemon they've showed so far look good, and I'm excited to see how they handle an open world. I'm guessing very tepidly, but I'll have fun, so whatever. Yeah. It can't be worse than Sword and Shield, so, you know. I um, agree. <laughs> like, uh, I, don't, I, don't have the anim- I don't have the outright antagonistic animosity like you and ryan have about sword of shield but i'll also admit that game left a lot to be desired yeah and not for uh, nothing i one thing i fucking infinitely hated it for right out the bat was the tr system i cut sword and shield a slight bit of slack because all right there's more than enough ways to get him in that game as long as this is a one and done thing whatever but no other games decided to reuse that other games decided to reuse that mechanic too and i was like i knew it i let it get an inch and it took the mile I um I haven't I'm not I'm weird I haven't watched the trailers or the more recent direct for Pokemon because I'm just kind of at this point I'm like yeah if I decide that we're halfway between um car- we're halfway between um Pokemon and uh Yu-Gi-Oh five Ds yeah lizards yeah. will motor lizards that are motorcycles fuck yeah yeah what that means yeah no I um. I, I don't have to watch the Pokemon trailers or anything because I'm just kind of like, hey, it looks like it'll be good, but I know I don't really care to play it right now. I'm just kind of... I, I know that it's not really as much for me anymore, and I hope that there's a game one day that kind of clicks with me. Like, Arceus would probably be that game when I decide to pick it up, but oh, there's so many other things to play that I'm not going to, like, wait up, <coughs> you know? Exactly, yeah. That's like, very fair, yeah. Like, nothing <laughs> against it, you know? It is what it is. I it just... I realized at one point, I realized with, with um, Sun and Moon that the series was just kind of not for me anymore. And so I'm like, why would I why would I get angry about it at this point? Did yeah. you play Black and White? Uh, so I'm weird. I uh, Yeah, you I, are. Yeah. I just like that you keep <laughs> saying it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still weird. It's, it's a fact. Uh, so I skipped, uh, I played, I, I technically still haven't played the Hoenn games because I played Fire Red and Leaf Green and I played against my, not against, but with my buddy who had uh, Emerald. So we essentially completed the decks together. So I, I haven't functionally played it, but I may as well have played the Gen 3. Uh, played Platinum for Gen 4. Uh, love, I actually love Platinum for what it is, and I was hoping that the remakes yes. would be love just Platinum. Platinum was great. Yeah, like instead of Diamond and Pearl, I wanted that to be the unique one where they just did one game, and instead they did a sequel, prequel thing, which is cool too. But um, I then skipped Gen 5 uh, because I, I... We've talked about this before, Ted, actually. Where yeah. I... Yeah, I've been one of the charity things. Where I... I'm... I'm of the opinion that I didn't really like the idea of, at least at the time, <laughs> of oh, them shit. not giving me the option to use, like, a couple safety Pokemon from previous oh, games. Damn it. Uh, I did, so I didn't like Black and White 1 just taking away the option. And I get why they did it, and I'm not really, I don't care as much anymore about that, because it's a stupid thing to care about. But, um, so I skipped Gen 5, I skipped Gen 6, because I was like, as soon as it was announced, I, I knew, oh, there's going to be, like, 50 new Pokemon, because they're going to 3D. There's no way they're going to have too many Pokemon. <laughs> Everyone disagreed with me. They were all like, no, it's going to have a big map, and it's going to be the longest game in the series. And then it was the <sighs> shortest game in the series and the least Pokemon. And then yeah. they got me with the 20th anniversary marketing for Gen 7. And they, they hooked me in, and I was like, yeah, you know, I, I always loved Pokemon as a kid. I'll fucking play it. And I don't like Sun very much. 
I, I, it, I, I feel like I'm the odd one out with Sun and Moon. I really like those games. Or the originals, at the very least. I, um, yeah. Like them, I just wish, like, for all the talk of it doing newer things, I wish it did more newer things. Because yeah. it really yeah. didn't take me too long to see through the veneer that, hey, we're doing the same shit, just with a different flavor. But... What was new and good in that game, I did really like. So I enjoyed Sun and Moon. I also, for like, I also, well, I was on the fence with Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, but I Ult lean more on the positive for those. X Ultra and Sun y. and Ultra Moon uh, have better, like, things for competitive players, but they ruined the story, which is the best part of Sun and Moon, easily. Like, My Sun and Moon has the best Pokemon story, period. And, um,. They they like take a big old dump all yeah, over it. That was so. that was what kept me invested in Sun. One of the things that uh, about Sun that um, bothered me was that I, there were 300 Pokemon I feasibly hadn't seen between uh, <laughs> like Gens five and six and then now seven. And the first 20 Pokemon I saw were Kanto Pokemon, and I was like, come on guys! Like I I don't even hate Gen one. I'm just like, what? The, of all the Pokemon, give me ones that I haven't seen before. I haven't seen a half of the Pokemon at this point. And it was just a bunch of nostalgia. And I, I get why, but, like, most of the buyers are children, so I don't really get why. Um, and then I got annoyed yeah. with Ultra Sun and Moon because they just they, they rushed Sun and Moon out a year early, very clearly, uh, just so they could get a second game set out before they moved over to the Switch games. And that bothered me, too. Well, that's funny for you. One thing that also kind of... Whatchamacallit? There's something else about X and Y I was going to say. Oh, yeah. X and Y for me was the biggest disappointment, like, in terms of Pokemon games. Like, like somebody said it earlier that Kalos was big and beautiful, and I agree with them. But for me, it's like, yeah, it's just like the Yu-Gi-Oh! equivalent of playing Weather Painter decks. It's big, it's beautiful, and you expect it to set up to something, and it fucking doesn't. It just goes nowhere for me and it's x and y just ended up boring the hell out of me in a in a sad way because i really i really did like you know kalos as, as an area when you know there was something interesting in it and barring a few tidbits there really wasn't it's it's just not a lot in it that's special really is yeah. the thing like it's can, a pretty a paint by numbers uh campaign there's not a lot of interesting characters um Plus, the, the Mega Evolutions then led to the, the weird Z-form uh, counterbalance. And Why are they giving up on that fucking mechanic? It's it's the same. It's been the same thing every game. Like, it's... There, there's something I, to be said about, you know, I get that with some degree, like, you want to have, like, individual areas for individual mechanics you also can't really incorporate everything into one damn system because the bugging debugging test playing making sure everything works as intended would be a fucking nightmare that they won't have with game freak on the current um staff numbers they have for it but it's also like do you really just scrap the concept altogether like okay how about at least 10 new mega evolutions of different different types and then that's it it's like mega evolutions and z moves and uh, Dynamaxing in this new like crystal thing. Dynamaxing. They're all the same mechanic. Yeah, like, they are. It's, it's just a new like fancy kaiju they can sell merch of. And I, and you know what? If that's what it is, I get it. I'm not gonna knock it because it's a kid's. It's it's the biggest merch pusher in history. So, you know, do get your bag, Nintendo. I guess. Uh, we do have a donation I want to jump through here. Uh, we have a five dollar donation from Blast Six who says, after burning in the sun, waiting thirty minutes for no Uber. And a day of retail. I need this right now. I love, uh, and then followed by, I love Legends Ar Arceus. Yeah, I can't speak. Legends Arceus. Sorry, that's the correct pronunciation because we're pretentious. Most shinies I've ever caught. Uh, best one I caught is a shiny Baneri after so many attempts. Favorite legit, favorite legit shiny you've caught. Red Gyarados doesn't count. P.S. Tui is better. So favorite Red shiny. <laughs> Besides, fa favorite shiny. Uh, Steven, you go first if you've gotten a shiny. I caught a shiny Pidgey, I think. Oh, I caught a shiny Yo. Magikarp in Pokemon Go, but I caught a shiny Pidgey in uh, uh, Let's Go. Okay, that, uh, that's it. Ted? Um, I actually I got a shiny Gold Bat in Arceus, which I could actually use for my team. So I had a really um, I don't. Um, there's like a big meme on Brain Scratch. It's like, oh, Ted's never caught any shinies, but like. I actually have like 20 or 30 now. I just don't hunt for them because to me, hunting for shinies defeats the point of having them. But, you know, yeah. yeah I, but. 
I call it a shiny shinx by sheer luck and um what should we call it? I call it a shiny shinx by wild luck and um Arceus just by just by sheer accident and the other shiny I got was a shiny Paris I've yet to evolve. I know I oh and a shiny mischievous, which I didn't even know was a shiny because the area you catch it in was so dark. So by the time I got back to the house, I was like, oh wait, shit, you're gold. Nice. Yeah, so I was playing um I was playing, I think it was Sun and Moon, and I hatched a plusle egg. Um, and I was looking at the plusle that hatched, and I'm like, do you look weird? Um, and so I went to the PC box, and it turns out it is shiny. It's just that shiny plusle is just a slightly darker shade of red than normal plusle. So it's That's like... That's great. Yeah. Cool look, um... I think I, uh, I've caught a couple shinies, but I honestly can't for the life of me remember them because I didn't catch them until relatively recently. Uh, Chris, what about you? Uh, I'm going to disqualify Go and Legends Arceus because I played both of those too much and I have a shit ton in both of those. For me, um, I abused the fishing chain thing you could do in X and Y, so I got a shiny Clauncher, which was the little shrimp lobster kind of guy. It made him like a really cool red with blue stripes instead of blue, and I just really like everything about that Pokemon due to that. So he's my favorite. He hangs out in Pokemon Home with me. Oh yeah, uh, Stefan, are, 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 is your internet working? I know you were. Yeah, there. Okay, cool. I've never, I, I've never caught, I've never caught a legend. I've never gotten a legend. Uh, I mean, a shiny. Oh, yeah, really? I've, I've, ne I've never. I mean, I haven't played like a lot, like as me as much as a lot of other people. So that might also have to do with it. But so, yeah, every time I played, I haven't. Uh, I haven't found a shiny. It, it took me like 20 years to catch one. So like, you're not alone, you know? You have to play a lot to get a lot of them because you have to remember that the, the rate for getting them is like literally one in 4,000. Yeah, several. Uh, it's, it's gotten lower as time's gone on. They kept, they kept lowering it because people wanted them more. Yeah. Uh, and so they 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 realized, hey, maybe one in like 8,000 isn't, uh, isn't okay. <laughs> Uh, David, have you caught have you caught a shiny? Excuse me. Have I caught? Uh, I don't think so. Like I, I've I've played way far less uh, Pokemon than most people. Uh, the the one and only Pokemon game that I played with any uh, regularity was Pearl, which I know most people that that is not where they start or where they end. So, uh, I, yeah, I don't remember catching any shinies in it. It's also I also haven't played it since it was new. So, David, I really want to get you into Pokemon. I think we touched a few weeks back for an FTCR, uh -huh. like after huh. recording thing on the Pokemon multiverse. Yes, but which I, I find very version or version tapping giggity. Oh man, yeah. I forgot that there's a Pokemon multiverse because I most skipped. Extreme. Yeah, I <laughs> skipped Omega Ruby and Alpha <laughs> Sapphire where they started that BS, and I'm like, oh god. And yeah, now I, I just love, don't I care. I like it though. I like the idea that every every playthrough since it's a unique experience means it creates its own separate universe i mean if we because if we're talking about multiverse theory as a whole like every action you choose to do there are a hundred thousand other actions you choose not to do and so each one would split off into its own universe so actually saying oh yeah that's what's happening with pokemon i mean that means there's 10 billion different pikachus and and oh. they could all team up but then them teaming up would call would create ten billion other universes where they don't team up, and then um, basically uh, po Pokemon created every game is personalized, and they yeah. made it. Um, David, have you ever played Shin Megami Tensei? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, Should, so the one I? cool thing that Apocalypse added to the story of that is Shin Megami mm -hmm. Tensei is all about like multiple endings and choosing the path that you think is right. Um, and basically, at the end of one of the games, they reveal the plot point that because of multiverse shenanigans, every ending is is canon. Um, because mm -hmm. there's a multiverse where somebody, where the pro tag chose every possible choice. So, that's neat. Anyway, I just beat uh, Ma uh, Mayhem Temple. Uh, Steven, how far are you? Right 23, 23 jiggies. Oh, God. You've got more than double. <laughs> God, how many do you need to beat the game in Kasui, by the way? 96 and, but i'm going for 100 anyway well, well i mean now. if you're playing kazooie like and you, you need well. 96 you might as well get all 100. Yeah, um in tui you only need 70. um <laughs> there's 80 normal jiggies plus 10 you get from jinjos um in tui so oh i'm not at um experiment i'm not at bubble group i just unlocked it i can't remember where the puzzle is for clinker's capture 
I always get oh, I just remembered. Too, so. I just remembered. Yeah, also, yeah, also uh, I always get lost whenever uh, I'm in uh, Grunty's castle. Like, I, n I can never get the hang of where I'm supposed to go to go to every... Uh, Man, like, wouldn't it be great if you I could always... just warp between different areas of the overworld? Wouldn't that just be awesome? In, in that game, you can with the clinker pots. Too bad yeah, they kind of forgot about them. using them. Yeah. The oh, I hate the clinker pots and uh, no, the dig pots. I meant to say, yeah, you gotta yeah. find two of them. But the problem is, is that they kind of spaced them apart so far apart from each other that they're roughly worthless. It what also doesn't help it is that because since there are two places you have to know, you have to know where the painting is, and then you have to know where the actual warp uh, area is. Five times and they out don't of six, all warp to each problem. other. They are only warp. They only link to one links to one. You don't have yes. one that goes to all of them. Yeah, I only find that a problem with like Clinker's Cavern though. Like everywhere else I go to, like wherever the puzzle yeah, the is, same. the level's not gonna be like right next to it, so it's no trouble for me there. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that one. Like that's just the one that fucks me up. Well, I feel like that's one thing about ukulele that I just don't understand why they did. A lot of the time people talk about Tui being too big, which is not an argument I feel like having at the moment, for the record. Uh, but <laughs> it to me, the reason why it doesn't feel too big is because there's all these warp points and you can go from place to place fairly quickly once you at least have a passing familiar familiarity with the worlds. The problem is, is that ukulele Oops. has worlds similarly sized to Banjo Tui, but they don't have warp points for some reason. So they feel as too big as I feel like people say Tui um, yeah. often yeah. feels like. There's think... more to it than that. Like, it's not just the war points I find that that, that's game, that game's problem really boils down to. I mean, it, it wouldn't solve all the problems with the game. I'm just saying, like, that game needed war points and they didn't put it in, and I don't know why. Yeah, there, there's a couple, um, th there, there's a lot of issues with, with Yuka. That, uh, yeah, like I just said in the chat earlier, like it's got all the beats of a, of a banjo game, but it's got none of its rhythm. Ooh. Like by and large, the biggest problem of the game, especially with the level layouts this time was getting at, is that it was just plain, well, unintuitive. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think the um, I I really like the idea of the uh, planet ex or the planet the level expansion system. Uh, and it's just one of those where I think that the way that they intend for you to play that game is never outlined clearly. Like, Chris, you streamed it recently, so you can talk more in detail about this. But um, oh. I think if, if they had given you the option to have a clearly defined uh, first level, and then you go through levels one through five, and you go back to expand them after that fact, they would then feel novel. And that also, hopefully, you would have designed those levels to not just be, hey, we cut out part of the world, and now you have it, because that's really shitty. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, Chris, you, you elaborate more before I go into my thing about impossible air. Might have helped for me. Um, oh, as soon as I started speaking, like I got analysis paralysis with that game so hard, which is dumb because it's a platformer made probably for kids. Right. But I was going through the world, even just from stage one. And I was like, man, I'm doing all this stuff. I won't remember what any of this is new or not when I come back and I'll say 100% yep. everything I can right now and so eventually I said fuck it I'm going to go to the next level because that's what chat said to do basically and then I went there and was like holy shit this is so big I won't even I don't even see where anything could be added here I better try to 100% everything here because what the fuck and I gave up and went to the third level and it was bad and I didn't <laughs> get a good well, one was the third level again it's the swamp level right with the trolley Oh Part. yeah, that level's not good. Um, yeah. well, for some that, reason. Well, the reason why is because, like, when it comes to Banjo Kazooie and Tui, the levels are approachable compared in comparison. Like, take for example, let's use Jolly Roger uh, Bay from the second game in this case here. Within five ten minutes of getting there, you find out Jolly's partner is missing. You find out there's a mole in a room. You find pigs in trouble. You find a mumbo switch. You find a whole bunch of stuff within that little hub town to give you a good idea of where to go and how to start progressing forward. You get a mixture of short-term missions and long-term missions into that. Laylee doesn't do that. Laylee pretty much, and that's what I'm saying, like Laylee will throw down like a whole bunch of quills and stuff for you to collect, but then never really point them toward anywhere you really need to go in that game, making the levels bigger than they should be and more confusing than they should be. Yeah, yeah, quills yeah. as quills not being used as an actual uh, level design 
like Tenet is one of the biggest sins that game has because there are just some on top of fucking rocks and there are then little coves that are put into the really shitty Unity level design that like you. Why are you knocking say, on Unity? Oh. It's not their fault. <laughs> no, but so, it, it, it's designed like a shitty Unity game. So it's it's actually funny. Uh, there was a stream that the um, the Shovel Knight developers made. Um, back when they were doing all of their um, their like Kickstarter stuff. And I had donated enough to the Kickstarter to be able to watch them. And they made a big point where it's just, uh, they made a point there when they were designing one of the levels in that uh, coins don't exist in platformers for any reason other than to give the player uh, guidance on where they're supposed to go throughout the yeah. level. Yes, like yeah, any but... other use you can put for them is just extra on yeah. top of that. Right, but the thing is, though, is that Kazooie and Tui did that. Yeah, yeah that's what the notes always pointed you somewhere to go, or gave you the idea of looking somewhere. Did Tui do that? Tui um, did Tui not, it doesn't Tui not as much. Tui does it a little less, but Tui do actually no, Tui does it just fine. Actually, the only thing that Tui did is that they'll probably put like instead of like fifteen notes along it? the complete pathway, you get like five notes along along oh, like half the pathway. Me. Let's say, let's use uh Mumbo's um. I mean, uh, Mayhem Temple, for example. You'll get 15 notes as opposed to in, like, three note nests. But the camera and the viewpoint will allow you to look around and see where you're supposed to go from there. Not like yeah. Tui does. I mean, Tui like, uh, also has really less just, like, um, is less, clutter. like, leaving platform, um, leaving collectibles as a trail. It does that a little bit less. It's got a different f design philosophy yeah. in general. That That's it's, one of the things I don't love about Tui is that like I, I understand why they cut down the quantity of notes and made them like higher in value per note a lot of the time and it's because simply the game needed it to fucking run so I get it but uh, I don't really agree with it in the way the game is designed from at least from what I've played but yeah. um, one thing I was going to jump in and add to this is that uh, Ukulele and the Impossible Lair no one bought that game that game's incredible Ukulele uh, the Impossible Lair is so goddamn good and and I that's keep, the like, uh, that's the uh... Donkey oh, Kong God, Country. That one, right? Yeah, that, that's like, the other one they made. It's like half Link to the Past, half Donkey Kong Country, and it's better than both of those games. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, I, I will I, not. I really, no, you, I will fight you to the teeth if you say something's better than Link to the Past. But if, <laughs> but not the world's right. biggest fan of that game personally, but um, oh, it's, it's, I got wrong. I got impossible. I really like impossible. I I, I I suck at it. I'm really bad at it. But, but oh, it's, it's really hard. Bad. It's, it's really a hard fun. game. Yeah. And they, the only the work. only problem with impossible layer is that the last level, like I get that it's supposed to be impossible, but it is obnoxious. Um, other than that, though, like that game is awesome. Um, yeah, I, I I really love how that game does its uh, level expansion because what they do is like if for those who haven't played it, there's like a top down Zelda esque overworld. Uh, in between levels. It's not big, it's not super involved, but there are little puzzles you can do to, say, cover a level in honey. So then you have, like, wall jumps because the walls are sticky. Or to flood a level, or to, uh, like, blow air over a level, so now it's like a flying level, kind of. So every level has two different, like, A side, like, an A side and a B side. And I think that if you were going to do a, a ukulele 2, a tukulele, and it's probably inevitable, given that, like, what else are they working on besides their publishing stuff, uh... I think the way to do it is to, and they're probably doing this, honestly, is to take inspiration from Impossible Lair and make every level some sort of uh, wet dry world from Mario 64, where there's something in the overworld, something in like the Grunty's Castle equivalent, that you can use to affect that specific level's level design. So you can like hit a switch to flood a level with lava, and then that makes it a completely different level or uh, another half of a level that's very different, and you have to go back and forth maybe between them to to finish levels i think that'd be like a what fucking fuck? genius way to handle it and i think that they're well on that way and you can actually see where the freaking platforms are in um in, on the X ela so you don't like actually need to press the light button that's awesome okay uh if, if you go to uh fanatical.com they they are you can get impossible air for a dollar right now it's it is like literally one of the best 2D platformers I have ever played. Um, it, it's so fucking good. It's it's almost like a I, I wouldn't even say Link to the Past. I would be like a combination of uh, DK DK Country and um, I never said it like that. That's weird. And Yoshi's Island, which is fine, you know. 
um like like i said i've i've wanted to i just like never got around to that because right now like i said i'm working on other games yeah yeah it's it's but worth that's it probably me. gonna be something to get down the line when i um either finish or get tired of uh survive oh come on survive. you can okay you can you can skip this hole if you get a yo pro precise and if you get a precise enough backflip jump you can't do have this level. a donation that came in and then i want to go over uh, some of the stuff that we're currently have as far as our polls go and bid wars and stuff like that so i'll do that whole spiel in just a sec first we have a 120 dollar donation from anonymous thank you so much uh thank you they they say with this i've exhausted my donation budget for this marathon that's all you'll hear from me from th for this year i also have a voice request can i get Watto voicing this legendary terry bogard line from fatal fury special uh I don't know the I don't know the cadence, Whatever. so I'm just gonna do it as Watto in general. Wubba wubba, I'm in the pink today, boy. Uh... <laughs> what? Thank you so much for making me do that. Uh, no. Fun but fact: you could also use the Wonder Wing to do that too, if you have like the wings to spare for it. But you can light these guys with the Wonder Wing. No, no, you you can't light the uh, machines with the Wonder Wing, but you can light your path with the Wonder Wing. Oh yeah. I just I that I have the Wonder Wing in this game because like it's like the most forgotten ability in two E hands down. There's like one puzzle that needs it like ever. Um, I don't even think I need it for any. I never like I think I had a few games where I've completely gone without it where it was like oh right I could do that. There's like oh, one yeah, Jinjo no. and Hailfire Peaks that you need it for and that's it. Um, Not really. I just fly. I just fly. I usually just end up landing on it or falling down on it. What I do remember using the Wonder Wing for was when Grunty liked to try to throw one of those impossible yeah. those dodge attacks. Because I've actually saved myself by doing that once. So I was like, oh, shit, I can't hit something. So I hit Z and right C, and then I put on the Wonder Wing. I was like, oh, right, I had that. So I do want to jump in real quick and just go over some of the stuff we have remaining for week two of Charity vs. Room. Because as a reminder, oh, we're go back. For it next friday starting next friday we're back for another three maybe four days if we hit fifteen thousand dollars we're gonna do friday saturday sunday and monday if we don't hit fifteen thousand dollars you don't get monday uh so that's next week uh here are some of the things we have in store for next week both in terms of schedule and in terms of rewards so first things first let me look at the friday schedule here uh once i pull it up because i didn't do that because i didn't think about it uh... we start friday up August 12th, 10 a.m. Eastern, with, with Ryan, Nairman, versus Kid Icarus in a Crash uh, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy race. Uh, it's only one of the games. You can vote with your dollar on which game you want to see. Three is currently in the lead, and that ends tonight. So if you don't if you don't uh, put your money where your mouth is by tonight, Crash 3 is currently going to win. Uh, so that's at 10 a.m. August 12th. Followed right afterwards by Ryan continuing the fun with a bid war Scott Pilgrim versus the world versus TMNT Shredder's Revenge. It's Ryan versus Stefan. Whichever game is in the lead uh, during, I think, at the end of that run, uh, at the end of Caddy's run. Yeah, it'll be at the end of Crash. At the end of Crash, yeah. when that will. Uh, close. Yeah. At the end of at the end of Caddy versus Ryan, Ryan has to then hot swap over to one of those two games, and you can vote with your wallet once again to decide which game that is. Uh, and then after that, we have at 3 p.m. a Final Fantasy XIV dungeon race between John and Linky. That's going to run for a couple hours, and then um, from there, it's myself versus Elliot versus Chris versus Steven in an Uno fight to the death. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know. I've been making it up as we go along, but we're, one of us is going to die live on camera. Subsequently, there's oh, a uh, there's I wish it's me too. Uh, there's a two players one controller run of a Hat in Time. So we challenged we challenged Sabrina and Caro to play Hat in Time together with a single controller. So that's going to be some fun chaos. That's Friday. You can look at the rest of the schedule over at the uh, Tiltify link if you type in exclamation point donate in chat, like I'm sure Chris is about to do. Um, and then we also have the rest of our our bid wars that I want to go over. For example, for Fortune Street. Currently, the uh, stage that is winning for the Fortune, the Fortune Street Select Our Stage is the Ghost Ship with $180, but Super Mario Bros. 1-1 is only $19.01 behind, so that is still anybody's race. Oh, uh, somebody voted for Ghost Ship? Nice. Yeah, Ghost Ship's currently uh, leading. So somebody then, keep voting for Ghost Ship so we can hear the Dragon Quest Three music, please. There you Thank go. You. You you have you have you have been influenced. Vote for Ghost Ship. Uh, otherwise, someone's gonna definitely snipe that with Mario One One right at the last minute. Or I'm uh, gonna come to your house and break your knees. 
please. Uh, then we have in Dead by Daylight, currently Survivor is winning pretty handily for Elliot's, uh, what, what Elliot's going to play for Dead by Daylight later next weekend. Uh, but Killer is only $150 behind, so again, still anybody's race. Marvel vs. Capcom, you get to choose whether Johnny and Trav fight each other in Marvel vs. Capcom 1, 2, 3, or Infinite. 1 is winning by about 200 bucks, give or take. But two is not too far behind. So again, these are all anybody's game. One one person can swing the the uh, swing the ballot, or if you all donate a couple dollars, you could easily swing the ballot as a group. Um, continuing the fun, Stefan has to play currently Tetris 99. It's winning by eleven dollars versus Pac Man 99. So if you want one of those to win, you better vote on it again with your dollar. You because... should vote for Pac Man 99 because I'm good at Pac Man 99. I can actually win that. You have been influenced once again. That's why we're going to Cur vote for Tetris. Currently, it is losing, so you can either make Stefan suffer or try and see him win, which he could not do in Fortnite, I want to remind you. <laughs> oh, he had uh, to dance every time. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I TMN the top 20 most of the time, so I'd say that's a win. TMNT is currently winning in that Scott Pilgrim versus TMNT bid war. It's winning $906 and change to $540 and change. But we've seen a lot of big name, uh, big, big, big money. Big money donations uh, come at the last minute to swing these votes. So again, you never know. And then, like I said, Crash 3 is in a very handy lead of about a grand. But uh, some people have dropped a grand before. And if all of you watching right now dropped $5, you could swing the vote right this second. I'm not even kidding. So, yeah, those are our polls. Those are, our, um, those are in the poll section when you donate. Those are our bid wars. We also have more raffles. We'll go over those each day as the event continues. But today's raffle is for a Banjo-Kazooie plush. So if you want that plush, you can see it on the bottom left of your screen. That's five bucks. If you want to win a Nintendo Switch OLED, that's $20 to enter. $20 per entry to enter for that raffle. We're going to draw that at the end of the event, whether that's Sunday or Monday. That's up to you to decide because, well, currently we're only going on Sunday, but I think we'll probably get Monday. Uh, here, you should also point out you can donate for a raffle and to whatever bid war you want to donate. Yes, for. yes, thank you. So, so which, you don't need to pick one or the other. Which, which people have been doing? So yeah, yeah, yeah and and almost oh. everyone has caught that. It do, it goes through it in order, so you can see that pretty uh, pretty uh, handily as you go through the donate screen. Uh, unless you just hit the just donate button, in which case you just donate, and that's very appreciated as well. So also, that... also link, also because Linky asked, uh, the Heroes versus Mania crowd control bid war is not going to go live until we reach 15k, just in case because we don't want people doting for something that there's the potential we like we won't be able to do. Yes. So if you yeah. want, if you want Linky to play Sonic Mania, uh, crowd control or Sonic Heroes crowd control, currently that you can't vote on that, but once we hit 15k, you will be able to vote on that again with your donation. Uh, so so look forward to that. Uh, as or if we cross $15,000. Currently, we're at $10,249.69. We got two more donations in the time I was saying that. So we have $5 from Captain Kohai, who says, Random fun fact, the Statue of Unity in Gujarat, India, hopefully I pronounced that right, is the tallest statue in the world. Including its base, it stands at a combined 1,900 feet. In comparison, if you include its pedestal, the Statue of Liberty stands at only a combined 459 feet. Captain out. Thank you for that fun fact. That's a really cool fact, actually. I guess. I'm not uh, that um, tall. And then, and then we have the Game Freak 000. Wait, you aren't? <laughs> who donated $5. Uh, and they said, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll cause the Twitch debate with this donation. Mega Man 8 is better than Mega Man 3. Minish Cap is better than Ocarina of Time. Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest is un underrated. And Chibi Robo is the best GameCube game nobody played. And so you're completely wrong about all of them, but you know I, you're I would, be wrong. It's America. I, I wouldn't say. I mean, I mean, like Mega Man Eight over Three is like I can understand that. Minish Cap over Ocarina Tam, I can understand that. Uh, Chibi Robo, yeah, I can understand that. I haven't really played much of Castlevania too, so other than I know people don't like it, so I don't know about best, that. The best GameCube game nobody played is all of them. There. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I had a GameCube. I had a handle. I carried it, but I never brought it anywhere. Very, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's because maybe it's I had just watched uh, a yeah. Scott's video on the GameCube, but it's like it brings up the whole thing, like something that we mentioned uh, like earlier about the whole like, oh, the outside bubble is very different from the internet bubble, where it's yeah. like, oh, you think the GameCube is this big successful thing that like, oh, because you need oh, no. everybody talk about it, and that's oh, it was the worst selling of the main. Three. No, the GameCube, the GameCube almost killed Nintendo. It did terribly. Um, yeah, it's. I wouldn't say almost killed Nintendo. It did, um, no, it didn't. But, but like, but you know. absolutely. I mean, 
again, it was their worst, it was their biggest failure besides the Virtual Boy up until the Wii U. So, you know. Uh, oh, Minion Man has a good, uh, a good comment here. Uh, you know something? More people have probably played GameCube games through Dolphin than the actual console. It, it I might, would... It probably not, but it might be close because Dolphin's the most popular emulator. At this um, point. I would I'm assume sure. for some of the for some of the niche games, I would say yes. Like yeah, for Fire for Mario, Emblem, Sunshine. wouldn't be wouldn't be surprised for Fire Emblem, but for like Smash Brothers and stuff like that, I would say probably not. Um, so, okay, so so here's a fun uh, here's a fun thing that Tay just brought up because uh, it's a topic I've seen people bring up before, and it's such it's a disingenuous thing. Uh, it's not you saying this being disingenuous, Tay, but but it's a disingenuous topic. More people bought Croc than they did Banjo, but you wouldn't know that from YouTubers. The thing about Croc is that game launched at a discount and that game was at a cheaper discount by the time it started selling it was also right. a game that came out it was the essentially the first platformer on the ps1 that wasn't crash bandicoot or jumping flash if you're being pretentious so <laughs> fucking yes i agree with you i mean i made a whole ass video about every fucking croc game uh it's a, it's a you're a croc of shit that's yeah. for sure I, I, but, there's one and two how many of those are there uh 14 what i had croc 2 on game boy color a it's lot terrible. of them are mobile games yeah, okay, so there's, okay, there's, okay, there's Croc got... 1. Uh, we'll go over the list real quick. But first, okay. first let, me, let me finish the, the Croc yes, thing. Yes. So, so most of Croc sales were at 20 bucks, and it was because it was the only fucking thing around. Uh, it also had an install base, at that point, higher than the N64's total install base was. Because that was 97. The PS3 was already out. Or PS1 was already out for three-ish years. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Like... The, the PS1 had already outsold the lifetime of the N64 by that point. So, it kind you know, it's kind of... Kind of hand, uh, hand both ways there. Uh, so for Croc, let's go over every Croc game for this banjo race. Cause why the yeah, fuck? yeah. So we got Croc one. I'm gonna go in chronological order here. We got Croc okay. one. We got mm -hmm. Croc two. We got mm -hmm. Croc one. We got Croc two. Okay. You know, you're keeping track. That's four games. Okay, that's four games. One and two twice. Are, yeah. are those you should, you should like probably like, probably like, or... which systems those no. other? Croc no, no, we're not doing that yet. We'll do that later. Okay, okay. No, okay. Just... Um, so so Croc one came out, then Croc two came out, then Croc one Game Boy came out, then Croc uh -huh. two Game Boy came out. Okay. Croc 2 oh. Game Boy sucks. Okay. Yeah, continue. Croc 2 Game Boy is garbage. It's it's like a Zelda kind of game, and it's cute in principle, but it's a Game Boy Zelda game where your character is like one-fourth of the screen, so you can't oh. see what the fuck you're doing, and there's no direction, and it's pretty bad. Then there's three more Croc games. By the way, uh, these three Croc games were in part made by um, fucking Morpheme, the company that later made a bunch of fucking... Uh, I'll go over that later, actually. So there's, there's three Java phone games for Croc. There's Croc oh, Mobile, Jungle Rumble... <laughs> there's croc like mobile that. volcanic panic and uh in between actually there's croc mobile pinball so that's seven croc games there are seven there are seven croc games uh in the in the main croc prime universe uh, so so pinball oh, is part no. of the timeline like yeah oh. pin, pin, pinball is going to be canon uh, okay so so there are seven of those then there's the croc's world part of the universe <laughs> Oh, uh, no. You, you might be wondering, is that Croc? I'm going to say, shut the fuck up and let me keep talking. It's not. But uh, so there's Croc. There's Croc's World 1. There's uh -huh. Croc's World 2. There's Croc's World Run, which is a very ominous title. There's Croc's World 3. <laughs> there's Croc's World Construction Kit. There's Croc's Const World Construction Kit 2. Uh, that's 13 games. You might be wondering, what's if the If I didn't know game? any better, I'd say you're a Croc of shit. Oh! All right, you might be yeah. wondering. What's the 14th Croc game? I, I have am. 13. There was yes. a canceled pitch for a Croc 3 on the Xbox that was going to be a multiplayer game where Croc would teach the other small Crocs in his family that he meets at the end of Croc 2 if you 100% the game uh, how to fight the uh, the same villain that's the villain for all the fucking games in the series besides the, the, the Crocs World uh, prequel Baron timeline. Baron Dante. Yeah, wow. Baron Dante. Uh, it was going to be a multiplayer, like four-player party kind of game, and it never got anywhere because Microsoft was like, no, we don't want that. Well, why would they say no? They should have said yes twice. So that's impressive considering that Croc is just not a good franchise in general. It was almost uh, a Croc cartoon. Uh, why? People! Cause, cause, well, because Fox Interactive had the rights to Croc uh, at that point for like licensing, and they were going to put it on Fox Kids, and there was going to be a whole merch line. Croc 2 had a tie-in with fucking Lifesavers. The the collective, or the um, the power-ups are Lifesavers gummies. Because that, of fucking... That course they are why uh, pick a but, better game but croc 2 and here's the thing croc 2 bombed croc 2 did like it sold decently but like compared to croc 1 it did not do well because croc 1 was the only fucking game that's like saying it's like saying knack outsold fucking mario odyssey first off it's not true 
but but second off, <laughs> yeah, Knack was the only fucking game. Of course, it sold pretty well. Like Resistance One sold four million copies. You know how many people like Resistance? Five. <laughs> yeah, Five. you and your four sock puppet accounts. Yeah, and I'm probably one of them, and I don't like it that much. I thought that Resistance. That's the one with the guy with the three eyes in his helmet, right? Um, the shooter game. Like, uh, just like. So, there's a yeah, few of those, sort right? of. It, th th those, are like, of those are like yeah. those are the Chimera. Those are like the enemies, kind of. I may be like, thinking of Killzone with the three oh, lights on the helmet. Oh yeah, it could be Killzone. Yeah. I do, like, I don't. I the the, the oh, PS3 like era. Like a lot of that goes over my head. I was not paying attention that's honestly, at the time. That's um, that's very fair. But um, yeah, no. Uh, Resistance did not uh, did not do well. Resistance two sold half of one, and three sold half of two. Wow. But Resistance oh. One got eight. I got an eight out of ten on an IGN, according to what G Google tells me. That game you, to go back to. It looks you like have to bad. remember though that the PS again. It, it might be a similar <laughs> right. thing going on because yeah. the PS3, like the PS3, has a lot of fond memories now. But the PS3, especially at launch, did awful. Yeah. Um Because yeah, it, it was five hundred and ninety nine US dollars. Um, yeah. You know. Ray. There's there's a fun uh, there's a fun angle. It was it was seven it was seven hundred dollars over here. Oh. Well, your money doesn't count, so that's a little. Bit <laughs> uh, also, I really like Resistance Two. I think Resistance Two is good. Two Two is pretty good, but the problem is the co-op and multiplayer don't exist anymore. So you can only play the campaign, and it's like, yeah, I mean it's it's fine. It's a lot better than one. Like like if you play one and then look at two, it's night and day. Like one does not look good, but one was started development in two thousand two, so. It's really? a moment before there was a PS3. Yeah, uh, Ratchet oh. One did so well that they greenlit Ratchet Two five months before One came out, and they immediately also had a separate team start working on PS3 hardware, like engine. Wait, so hold on, oh, hold on. I need you to to go back. They knew yeah. that Ratchet One was going to do the, well before the game Sony, even came out. So Sony focus tested it, and they saw the focus test was like they saw the responses, and they were like, "Oh, this is going to sell millions. Start two right now." Wow, and okay. Th and that worked well for them because uh, immediately Insomniac was like, oh yeah, well that works well because we forgot to add strafing to the first game. So uh, we can make the second game uh, play well. Uh -huh. So uh, one plays okay, but it's more like a Spyro game with guns. Uh, but um, yeah, so that that's that. Um, that's uh, that. They started on Resistance right around then, 2002, because their first game was a Doom clone. Uh, what else? What about Resistance Burning Skies for the that, PS Vita? That game not only killed the Vita, uh, the, the, the rest of the support for the Vita, that that put the fucking bullet in Resistance. Wait, <laughs> that get, wait, hold on. There's a game that killed the Vita? Th so I, that, yeah, I have... it's, it's worse than Call of Duty Modern Warfare Declassified, and it's made by the same team. Wow. Okay, so... That makes want to play it. So, it's... but here's the thing, though. The Vita never so much lived as is came out of the womb on life support. You know, like yeah, it, it was never it was never alive. Like it was it was barely clinging to life, but at least it had fucking Gravity Rush and Uncharted. Or Gravity Rush, because that um that series like has a huge fan base, but they like they didn't show it. No, um, <laughs> didn't they want to do three games and then like hastily I, added the I've last? Never, I've never heard. Sorry, I'm gonna cut you off there. I, I've yeah. never heard anything about there being a three from an official source. They they were pretty clear from what I've always seen that they wanted to do a duology. And the game very cleanly wraps up everything in two games. So, yeah, I, I'm, the reason why I ask is we did a playthrough of it on Brain Scratch uh, a couple years yeah. back. And um, it really kind of felt like they stopped. They like finished the plot that they had. And then added like Shit. for the last third a whole game's worth of plot uh, out of nowhere. That's what it felt like watching it. Um, that there was just a random extra third of plot at the end for no reason. Yeah, did, you you get, did you just get closer to your mic or something? You sound way louder. Uh, okay. prob. I did. Yeah, I I leaned forward a bit. I'm oh, gonna okay. I'm gonna lean back now. <laughs> um, just gonna lean back, relax. You know, play some banjo tui. Uh, Stephen, how far are you? Um, I have 34. Lean back. I've got Lean four. Back. Yeah, you've been averaging more than double for me. <laughs> uh, I, I have one question watching this game. Uh, why uh, was Kazooie not uh, the model modded out with Watto? Because, um, you know, things and tiny. That's what I want. 
That's all I want right now. Oh. Did I? I'm sorry. I, I looked away for a second and then, like my eyes glazed over. Did you say Watto? Oh, did my internet hiccup? Yeah. No. No, no. I, 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 re I heard what you said and my brain didn't okay. process it immediately. Like, you know, I when said... you like. Right. When the stuff goes in like the back of your mind, and you're like, yeah, yeah, right. I was just looking at him like, why in this in these playthroughs uh, has Kazooie not been modded out with Watto? Okay, okay, cool. I I thought yeah. maybe I was going fucking crazy. <laughs> I just just wanted to make sure because yeah. now fucking probably a double or somebody's got to make a fucking piece of art where it's just Banjo Watui, and you just have fucking Watto just. It's time to play Chance Cube, and Banjo's just trying to kill Kazooie. That, what would Watto's Banjo Kazooie like? Uh 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 uh. It's kind of. Uh, uh, like. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, Kevin. It's okay. I can do that for a while. I do love the idea, though, because uh, better yet, don't mod Watto into Kazooie for this game. Do it in Smash, because Banjo Ooh. beats the shit out of her in Smash. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably easier to do. Everyone I mean, loves Kazooie it. also likes the idea of regurgitating eggs more than pooping them. So, like, you know, there's, uh, there's that. good protein. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Ow. Okay, anyway, uh, it was great being part of the charity room. I really appreciate all the work we've done together. I did, um, uh, did you read those? Movies? No, no, I I, we, I was going to pop into those now. If you want to do them, Stephanie, by all means. Uh, let me see. Uh, what is it? Uh, we got $5 from a bear holding a shark. This bear is a chump. He's only holding a bird. This guy sucks. And then there is $20 from Jameson. I just had a delicious Baja Blast from Taco Bell. Ah. He face. Also, Dolphin is, my, in my opinion, the most impressive piece of community-driven software ever written. It's good enough nowadays to just pick up and play, especially if you have a GameCube controller to USB adapter. Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, Dolphin is fucking insane. I um, I've been, I've been a fan of uh, what we're talking about uh, emulators that you should definitely uh, legally own the games for. Uh, Duck Station mm -hmm. uh, dropped uh, dr dropped into my mind recently. Like, it's a thing I found out about recently. And uh, if you like PS1 games and you like upscaling them and giving them 16.9, Duck Station is fucking beautiful. Like, as soon as I showed it off uh, to, like, Trav, for example, he immediately swapped over to it. I think official support ended for it, and, like, the community picked it back up. Uh, but if you need a good PS1 emulator for your legal games that you've dumped legally, uh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Ooh, um, Duck so. Station. Yeah, yeah. It's, is uh, that PS1 I, or PS2? That's PS1. Uh, PCSX2, as far as I know, is still the one to go with for PS2. Uh, it worked for me for the uh, the Ratchet deadlocked video and also all of the tax stuff I played, actually. So. Is Tack and the Power of Juju good? Not really. Okay. <laughs> it's, like, right. it's, it's fine. Like, they, they're all completely different games. Uh, oh, Duck Station has the original dev back on board. Okay, thank you, Experiment. That's good to know. Um... Yeah, Tack is fine. Like it's an it's one of those B list ones that I think got a little bit more uh, love because it's a, like a B list PS2 GameCube era platformer, like in that KO the Kangaroo kind of way. Um, but every game's wildly different. Like Tack One is like a, a more general 3D hub world collectathon kind of game, not really collectathon, but like like that kind of game, like this like this banjo style. Uh, yeah. And then Two is like linear, but only like the f the first two thirds of the game is linear. Then the last third goes back to having like hub worlds or hubs, like, like wider open worlds and like more mm. things to do. But the plot doesn't matter at that point because you're just filling time. Like you're straight up just filling time. And then three is a co-op game and three is actually pretty good. Three I like a lot. What the fuck? Uh, mainly because three has a lot of... Uh, Lock, it's me, Lock. <laughs> uh, you, uh, I, you mentioned A E double, but he, he's back and he did another drawing. This one, it's, it's uh, Kevin has bottles. Uh, oh, Chris no. has, uh, I don't want to die. Uh, Chris has Grunty, uh, Ted has <laughs> Banjo, yes, and then there's Steven, uh, in the backpack. And Kevin goes, I don't like to edit my own videos. That's why I pay Chris to do it. <laughs> I'll pay 25% of what Kevin pays me to edit videos. How about I just have Kevin pay me 20% and 5% on it straight up? No, I need that money. Kevin, so I'll edit your videos good. for 125%. <laughs> you know what, Ted? You drive a hard bargain. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Holy shit. Thank you, A-Double. <laughs> I'm sorry to have given you more work with the Watto one that's probably coming now. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, he's also been like tallying himself how many times he's drawn everybody. 
Right now, he's drawn Chris eight times, plus one time as Watto. Kevin seven times, plus one time as Watto. Steven five times, and Ted three times. <laughs> we gotta pump those numbers up, Chris. We gotta fucking... Let's go. <laughs> I've only played TAC 1. Did not beat Same. it. Yeah. Uh, I it, have it, no experience with TAC. Uh, it's, it, it's it's very much just kind of there like it's not bad uh i i appreciate what they tried to do with two because like one was trying to be kind of a parody of a of a 3d platformer mm -hmm. and then two they were like we're actually gonna do that more now and then oh. two like two has like a fake ending like where it's like the credits roll and it's like fake credits and like you know it's not real right uh, it, it, very much like parody like looking at the camera like jim halpert face kind of thing it did eventually become a show, right? It didn't start as a show. So, it started yes. as games, right? Yeah. So yeah. the the guy who uh, the guy who ran it's Avalanche Software, I believe. Uh, the guy who ran that company mm -hmm. had the idea for TAC years prior, and then eventually they pitched it around and they pitched it to THQ, who brought it to uh, Nickelodeon, <laughs> and Nickelodeon was on board and they wanted to like do a unified like show kind of vibe with it too and have a show come out alongside the shows. Or the games, rather. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And the show then got delayed several times, as far as any indication I've ever seen. So the show didn't come out until after the tax series of games was done for two years. Wow. Uh, I, it's I also didn't that yeah. late. After. Yeah. And they released a game based on the show, which is garbage. Uh, they released a game based on the show that came out by the time the show was canceled. Like, it came <laughs> out... Like the, so the show had a one season run that lasted two years because they were just like burning off episodes whenever they had time to fill because right. it is the worst Nickelodeon show of all time pretty unanimously wow not, that not, bad okay because there's some pretty bad Nickelodeon shows it, like the it, Barnyard one it's it's, it's yeah, not dude, I've seen far worse no, attack it's Barnyard back to bad. the back cave is, is not bad I don't oh wait back at the Barnyard is, is so dumb in so many ways <laughs> that like it comes around to being like like fun, stupid. It's it, it, dumb, but it's also like not malicious dumb. There's some it's, people are bringing up Mr. Meaty, which I've never heard of before, but I don't oh, think I want Mr. to. Mr. Meaty, because it has really bad puppets. This, yeah. Oh. Um, tech, tech, it's at least as far as like the the uh, initial response to it by, by critics and the general public was, wow, why does this exist? This is bad. Mm -hmm. And so there probably are worse ones, but that's the one that like it just gets the it gets the cake because it looks it looks fine like it looks like the actual games do actually uh it was nickelodeon's first in-house animated uh 3d cg show also because they didn't do jimmy neutron themselves they had a yeah, that, do it. that was oh that was oh entertainment yes. oh entertainment yeah they recently went bankrupt too uh, uh, and, and, no, 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 no it wasn't no it was D dna did the animation for that because that was uh john davies uh yeah animation studio and then the whole reason that TAC games ended before uh, the show started was in part because Disney bought the studio Avalanche. I believe it's still, I believe that's their name. Uh, Disney bought that studio. And so as they were finishing up TAC 3 and a few other games, they were bought by Disney. And so they finished up and immediately went to work on creating what would become Disney Infinity. Oh, and, and then Dis Yeah. Huh. And then Disney Infinity after that uh, died because they well, killed it off. Technically, they made Toy Story three first, and then they went to do Disney yes. Infinity. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a, there was some stuff in between because they they were working on like five games at once in like oh four oh five. Are they and still around or no? so? Yes, nope. now yes, nope. they are. Um, yeah, they are around because Disney then sold them off because they were going to close them down, and then uh, WB came in and bought them, and now they're working on the Harry Potter game. Oh, oh no. Oh, Which I mean no. isn't their fault. I mean it's it's not their it's not like their fault. It's like no, what? it's not. But still, like that's unfortunate because they have to deal with the the he sh she who should not be named. Uh, yeah. Uh, see what, what if, I did there? Uh, I'm clever. What if they replaced Harry Potter with uh, with Tech? <laughs> oh, I mean, and like, like and, uh, yeah, straight up magic, just, just that one. No, because he's then got, you got a wand. A whole bunch he of does super. magic. Uh huh. Well, yeah, yeah I, but you're going to have a whole bunch of Nazis crying foul on that. Oh, yeah, because and when like, you and stop like, being... Yeah, and like people saying in the, ch yeah, the chat, the chat, be... DNA got bankrupt. DNA got bankrupt because uh, Ampoly bombed, and that canceled Jimmy Neutron season four. 
beautiful. Uh, no, the only had four beautiful. seasons. That yeah. show was on for forever. Dude, dude there are, like so there are like f there are at any given point two or three seasons of SpongeBob that haven't aired. Yeah, like, like right, right now. Yeah, because especially because they they air like the episodes out of order. So it's like I think right now there's still a couple episodes in the last season that still haven't come out, and while well, they're airing the current season, it's yeah, like yeah. Right. To animation and television it's why like there was the whole the whole like the netflix controversy about the whole like oh we're splitting up into separate seasons but it was ordered as one season it's like ordered versus release is like it's always such a mess like in animation always so that's why it's like it feels like it this season's been going on for like years but it's like oh it's only three ordered seasons actually exist it's yeah, yeah it's like mess. um hey arnold only had uh i think two seasons or three seasons and it ran like six years and there's there's like yeah. five different voice actors for Arnold. <laughs> yeah, th yeah, I don't know how that one turned. I don't know how that happened. But yeah, like it's everyone, like uh, everyone thinks Hey Arnold ran a lot later than it did, but it ran from like ninety. I looked it up recently. It might have been like ninety six to like oh one or ninety three to. I don't remember, but someone. Can the, the, the Hey Arnold movie was two thousand two, so I think. Okay. The, I think the show was still on when the movie came out. So. Okay. Uh, so right. the, the, someone said in chat ninety nine to oh four. That's what it was. Yeah. Um, I got my got my dates mixed up, but yeah, so it ran for that long despite only having like a small handful of episodes compared to how long it ran. Yeah, hey, Invader Grimm oh. had two seasons and ran for six years. <laughs> Fact and nobody, and, uh, and his, hey, and I love and don't get me wrong, I'm cool for Zim having a devoted fan base, but holy shit, do people never like not talk about that show? <laughs> I'm right, surprised the, Invader Zim even had totally that many seasons to begin with because it didn't do well on TV. Um, it didn't at first, but you know how cult followings work. Once it like, once it really hits its stride, it hits its stride. The the, the trade off there is Nickelodeon has a lot of spite for its uh, for any show that succeeds against its will. Uh, oh, yeah, Avatar's Avatar is the most one famous, of them. famous yeah. example. The, um, all, the whole Avatar franchise up until Nickelodeon was like, or until Viacom was like, oh shit, we need something for Paramount Plus. Hey, here's a buttload of money for you to leave Netflix come back yeah please. there's also something else with that too Oops. like what should we call it um regarding the hate for avatar like in addition to like don't get me wrong it's still one of those top quality shows ever but at the same time it's also like expensive as shit yeah i mean i'm sure that that had something to do with it and like it didn't do bana bananas but it was like it was oh it didn't do bananas within the crowd it wanted to hit well that was more of a cora problem um like av at, at the the legend well, no, of uh, even, even I mean, because Avatar was like Avatar had their their highest single episode rating of all time. Like they Avatar did, but at the same huge. time, it's also like. But network execs have this weird hard on for making sure a show hits its demographic, and yeah. Avatar or at least or at least Ang story was yeah. hitting with both younger viewers and older viewers alike, so that it kept it afloat. Korra kept hitting the numbers for the older viewers rather than the kids. And as well, a result, and, the exec started screwing around with that shit. And, well, and the weird part was, I mean, it was fucked from the start because they only wanted the one season and kept extending it for one season at a time. Exactly. And then, yeah. exactly. And season two in particular was, it, I'll defend, well, when, um, defend's not the word I'd use, but why Core's season two was such a clusterfuck was because the writers at development team had no idea where the story was going to go beyond that point. So everybody's yeah. sitting there like trying to, so yeah, ba use. basically what happened was that season one was finished and before it aired they're like we want a season two so then they're like okay so it's like well we can't do anything then after season one aired they're like okay give us a three and four so like yeah. while they're working on two so by then they're like okay we we can figure out what we want three and four to be and then and two was basically just they've been figuring it they were just like so stuck. they were just they worried that they were gonna be canceled at any point so no 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 it wasn't so so what happened was uh cora was cora was a uh designed as a limited series it was only meant right. to have ten and, episodes. Yeah, the and first it, the first hour of episodes, like the first. And then, book, yeah, the first the first ten eps were uh, were that, and then it did so fucking well that they were like, or it, rather, it, 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 it tested so fucking well, I should say, that they were immediately like, oh yeah, season two, even though it was it was already meant to have like a quick run and ending, so it was kind of rushed to the finish of season one. Same thing happened with two, and then they had to build out a three and four. But then the problem was, as three is airing, because they were they were being produced in um in uh in tandem by the time three started airing nickelodeon was still on and off with uh going against that show not just because of demographics because they knew going in what the demo was going to be it was avatar fans who are now seven years older they knew it was college kids they knew it was like you know like, like 16 to, to 19 year old kids they knew that was the audience and they aired that fucking show at 9 a.m on saturdays 
You know who's not up right. at 9 a.m. on Saturdays? That Falls demographic. Games. Yeah, because yeah, no, okay. I remember exactly. Well, also the problem with season two was that they lost uh, the studio. Yes, that they were the busy first season for That's half right. of it. So half of it was done by like another. I forget the name of it. It was another studio, and they just ended up doing like a very like mixed job yeah. for the first half. Yeah, but then they got it back for three and four. But I yeah. know because they they what happened was that the a couple the first couple episodes leaked online early. So then Nick was just like, okay, let, let, let's just throw out like they threw out the first three episodes on one day. The next week they threw out the next two like episodes and like they did it like that. And then they're like, oh no, these episodes are doing poorly. I wonder why. And then they're like, we're just gonna cancel on seeing it on TV and just throw every episode online. Yeah, which they didn't even have fully set up yet at the time. Like. Like yeah, I said, it was like yeah. it's a common theory is is that somebody on the team hated Cora, and it's hard to tell who it was, but like I really hate to see that show get screwed around like that for that reason. Another thing that's worth to remember is that Paramount probably maybe more than any other studio goes through resume changes so much yeah. that it gets to yeah. a point and animation takes so long that by the time a thing finally comes out a new resume is in charge and they're like well we don't want this Regime. so that's why it gets dumped out like yeah like like i'm pretty sure like when cora was first like uh greenlit that was from a different group of people and by the time it aired it was somebody else that came in like Oh, so that's uh, like a discovery it. thing that's happening right now. Exactly like, that. I know. Like, yeah. The Hey, Ar the hey Arnold, uh, Invader Zim, and uh, uh, Rocco movies were all greenlit by like a, like by a specific person, and by the time they were finally finished, uh, another like per like it was another person had taken over, and like they didn't because the whole thing was like, the reason they were all. Uh, greenlit together because they wanted to do like this revival thing like there was that nicktoons movie that was gonna be like roger rabbit with nicktoons that they were big on but then they left a new person came in that became like the ceo and he was like oh we don't want to do that anymore so that's why uh rocco and zim took so long to come out and then they just got dumped on netflix because they're like oh we don't want to do those kind of nostalgia stuff anymore and then like rise of tmnt took so long to come out because another person came in they're like well we really want this so we're just gonna leave it in the dump for a while and then dump it over uh on Netflix, like just now. Man, Nickelodeon's a shit show. <laughs> it's a well, fucking I mean, I mean, Paramount was for a while. I mean, Paramount was like for a while. Uh, anyway, I mean, like even like on movie side, and then like now, I already made this joke before that now it's been saved by Tom Cruise and Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, because <laughs> Top Gun is really like, popular for some reason it, yeah. it like blew up i think even more than top they, gun they is like, popular shit. because not only is it a good movie it's doing that same wool over the eyes thing that the average person who would complain about that movie would miss like in other words it's like it's a prey predator thing where basically everything they're bitching about in prey they was the exact same thing you would see in predator but the difference is is that prey stars a woman Doc when stars a white man they're used to and they're eating it up a face value and they're missing all the subtlety to it. Yeah, like, yeah, it, 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 Top Gun, it's a very, yeah, it, I mean, like, yeah, it is kind of like that, but it's still ultimately, like, oh, it, it is a movie. It's still a great, it's still it. a good it's, movie, though. Yeah. Like, on its own yeah, merit. Like, like, and then you, yeah, and then you have just, yeah, Sonic doing super well, and they're like, oh, shit, we got a family franchise right here. Let's go. And now it's like, yeah, and Paramount Plus has been doing, like, oh, like, decently well for what it is they've been like i mean the nickelodeon side of paramount plus has been kind of but i mean like as a whole it's like taking a shit who are we talking better, about yeah. <laughs> at least until well yeah at least until the i mean the the, the avatar stuff got, although they, they said the avatar stuff is also gonna be in theaters so it's like they're really given that like the premium treatment at least they are but would love to I see what the streaming numbers on avatar are like after the fact like i'm huge yeah, I know. Like, like, when, it was when on it was Netflix. On, yeah, when it was on app, like that was the reason why Netflix like quickly scooped up that live action series because they're like, oh, this is doing super like amazingly well on here. Are you saying that Nickelodeon should bring back the live action series, The Thundermans? The Thundermans. If it, if it does I well, I don't see why not. I never watched. Should it Nickelodeon again. bring back the live action Animorphs series? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they should back I, I, I would, oh, wait. I would, I would be interested in a, a new th a reboot of it. Oh god, don't get started on iCarly. Like, I mean, I like I'm not surprised that. to hear some of the stuff from Jeanette McCurdy's um, uh, yo um, that shit autobiography, but it's it's pretty. It's like it's Ain't worse it. than I thought. Is yeah, yeah so exactly. here. 
I made a joke once before because I thought like Schneider was just being a foot perv on uh -huh. SGB years ago, where I was like, hey, I guess hey, older guy is divider kind of thing. Because like I said, like I thought he was just being a foot perv. It's infinitely worse than I realized it was to the point where I cringe thinking about that shit in retrospect. I'm like, oh. Yeah, you can't help what you don't know, you know, like. You can't help that you didn't know that that was happening at the time, you know, and honestly, so one of the things I came up is that, like, they offered Jeanette McCurdy, like, 300k to not. Violent. Like, that's kind of an insultingly low amount of money for hush money. Uh, honestly, uh, when you think about <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, you're, you're absolutely Damn. right. You pay me three hundred thousand for that. Fuck out of here. I'm like, sitting. where did they? Where did they film the Nick? Like in Orlando? Like that wouldn't yeah. even get you. Like that doesn't, that doesn't even, even like really pay even, for college. You know, that doesn't like, even pay for your fucking rent. Yeah, in it's goddamn like, California. It's like three hundred thousand dollars. They're like, it's like that one Futurama joke. You know, do refrigerators still come in cardboard boxes? Yeah, but the rents are outrageous. Kevin, uh, yeah, Ted, I have good news for you. I am messing up. Um, oh, ooh, uh, where yeah, are it you? Looks like Mr. Pat looks like somebody's uh, having a crappy patch job there. Oh wait, no, wait, that's Ted playing banjo. He's, uh, a, he, he's, in, he's in. Uh, he's in. He's uh, in. He's Bubble Gloop Swamp. Yeah. Oh, Bubble Gloop is normally easy. The only problem is. No. Um, oh, I wild. died fighting Mr. Patch. Never mind. Uh, I turned into the crocodile too early twice. So. Oh. Huh. Oh. You turn. You, that's why you gotta. You gotta <laughs> stay how'd, how'd, you die, how'd you die by the? I don't remember that happening. The, 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 the punch. The the punch thing that just hit you. Oh, uh, when you um when after the first hit, if you stand on the ground, oh. uh, you um. You okay, have to yeah, um. Right. You have to start flying. Uh, I needed to stop and get more eggs, and um, I I got hit and died. Um, I'm used to playing with double eggs, but I'm skipping all of the like as many of the the Cheeto stuff as as I as I need because like that wastes time and you have to backtrack in order to do it. So. Um, also, like God forbid, I'm. Um dreading the eventual reveal of avatar behind the scenes and i'll just throw out all my avatar merch right there like well see you later i mean the, yeah, yeah you, you 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 just never know with a lot of things like oh sometimes like sometimes like a production could be like oh it's like everything is perfectly fine like everything's like everybody who worked on it is like oh like actually like good but then sometimes we'd be like oh there's just this one person on there that either did something bad on the production or does something bad later on it's like yeah you, you're never gonna know it's just <laughs> that's just the thing with like art in general is that it's something you got to deal with and I hate, yeah. when it, I hate when it's like found out i hate like See, if it's something like happens later on, like, I don't know, like some guy found out to be a massive, some guy turned into a massive creep after the show. That's one thing. But if it's like when it comes out, they were a creep during the show. It's like that feels for me infinitely worse. The iCarly example, it's just really bad because they were kid actors, too. That you know? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like sometimes it's funny, kind of like when you find out that like for Suicide Squad one, like the cast all really liked each other except for Jared Leto who everybody hated and they like didn't invite him to the cast party and shit like that. And, they, like, and then you that... find out the reason why they never did and you're like, "Oh, man." Yeah. Well, he had the last laugh. He's Morbius. I still can't believe how Morbius is the worst internet meme to come out in years. A uh, hot take. The whole reason that happened was one Montenegrin YouTuber, Yugi Tuber. He just said, "It's morbid time" and the fucking exploded from there. But I have I like to confess, the fucking comedy of the whole thing is he literally. I do find it very funny that a Sony... shit post that made Sony go minus nine hundred million on another fucking. Chance yeah, they put it back into me. theaters and then nobody went again. That was funny. Like that was a fucking pisser. That's gonna be Ronis' most legendary moment for, instead of his YouTubing thing. I mean, I oh, want I want them to make this Morbi Morbi two. They have to call it Morbi two. The, you know, it's Morbi, you see, but you have to go with your bros because it's it's not Morbi me, it's Morbi us. Well, yeah, Ted, it's called you to Russ, not you to you, but uh, I hate to break it to you, that's still an entirely woman's uh, decision on of itself. Mm. 
That kind of happened ever... with our. That kind of happened with arms. With arms, arms wait, like the, uh, the video game. Video game? Like, yeah, yeah, that's what somebody said in the chat. Wait, what happened? What with arms? happened with arms? I don't know. I guess like making it, like trying to make it a meme, but then like it just didn't didn't take off. Arms never really became a meme. It just didn't have an audience. Is the problem like? It was, I get what they were trying to do. And I feel like, I feel bad because the game clearly had a lot of effort put into it, but they were trying to do a lot of the things they did with Splatoon and they didn't succeed the second time Splatoon around. Splatoon doesn't really, because with Splatoon, you can understand why Splatoon, the model works for Splatoon. It does it with arms. I feel like it's, for arms is just interesting in that I just feel like the appeal wasn't as universal. Like... It's such a weird concept for a fighting game, you know? Um, yeah. And the designs just aren't as, like... I don't want to say I... eye-catching, because it's certainly memorable. Like, you see an ARMS character, you know they're from ARMS. But, like... I don't know, it's weird. I couldn't tell you, like, what they would have had to have changed in order to make it ARMS came successful. Like, it came, like... Legs. Oh, my God. <laughs> It came, um, I don't know, I think people were pretty over, uh, 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 what are those games where you use physical objects instead of buttons? Motion so, controls? Motion, people were still sick of motion controls, and then it was like, hey, we have a motion control game, and it's like, uh, fine. Yeah, I mean, I feel like motion control, I feel like there is a lot of, like, especially among the hardcore demographic, like, a lot of anti-motion control among hardcore gamers but mm -hmm. i feel like it's just kind of another tool to be used like for example um splatoon has fantastic motion oh yeah. Controls. yeah yeah um, um i feel like they just need to be used the correct way you know um speaking not i was gonna say speaking of but this has nothing to do with what we're talking about uh do we have a um any donations uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, there is a bunch of donations here. Uh, yeah, let's let's read out some of those because we haven't them. done them in a while. Uh, I'll donate a hundred dollars if somebody hits Matt in the head with a brick. What? <laughs> um, oh. I if it's a hundred dollars to throw to hit Matt in the head with a brick, I'll donate a thousand right now. Yo. Wow. Uh, so we got five dollars from some <laughs> gut named Job. Uh, Disney has a four season limit, if I recall right. Star Wars: The Force of Evil has its fourth season pacing affected by this. I don't think this is exactly right because there are a lot of season, there are a lot of Disney shows that don't have four seasons, like that have less or sometimes even more. I think, especially with cartoons, they try. There is a general average of about 65, 65 episodes because, that, because that's what you need for uh, syndication. So yeah, yeah. Usually yeah but that... at least like, they've driven, like sometimes, like I think like like with with Gravity Falls, it was a thing of like, oh, the creator was like, oh, I only want forty, and I'm good. So like they they, they probably would have gone for more if they want, like if he wanted, but he was like, nah, I'm fine. No, it, Disney's more. straight up. Disney's very strict on that. Sixty-five, and then you're shown the door. So many writers and developers try to put it so that um, for three seasons, yeah, right, exactly. Like three seasons of twenty episodes, like, and yeah, and then sometimes they get cut to like, uh, like uh, yeah, Amphibia was able to do all sixty episodes for its three seasons. Uh, Owl House wanted to do that, and then they were like, ha, 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 you're too gay. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, and then, uh, what was it? Uh, Wander Over Yonder wanted to do, Wander Over Yonder and Milo Murphy's Law wanted to do that. They had third season plan, but they're like, oh, it isn't doing that well. So they just cut off at two. I don't watch a lot of Disney children's shows, but Wander Over Yonder theme song is perfect. Yes. Amphibia is something I'm going to end up watching at some point. I just need to get around to it. Yeah, Wonder Over Yarn is probably my favorite. It's just it's just uh, that pure, uh, like, uh, even, like, I love everything else. I mean, technically Gravity Falls is my favorite, but I just love everything about Wander. Uh, we got uh, $19.02 about Elk Sjorb. I have no memory of this place. I'm trying oh. to see if this was, like, a name backwards. Uh, was that really all the snowmen? They're already on Freezy's EP? Damn. I okay. just I just uh, killed all the snowmen like the fastest I've ever done it. What the fuck? I didn't Oh my god. Yeah, the snowmen end up taking end up being what slow my ass down tremendously. I hate moment. those guys so much. I, the snowmen. That's why I'm so it's surprised. Less, it's like, less what? the snow. It ends up being less the snowmen and more so the friggin' aiming with the uh beak bomber that ends up giving me hell. Yeah, no, that's why I was so like impressed with and myself. Have, and then we have 
And then we got five, have just left five dollars from Miko Kubota of Nickelodeon's Glitch Techs. Hello, fellow <laughs> gamers. Oh, I love that. Show. Neighborhood Glitch Hunter. When talking about Nickelodeon among gamers, Glitch Techs makes sense to mention. Five, five and I did some pretty cool stuff and have fight scenes around as fluid as Rise of TMNT. I highly recommend watching our adventures. Hashtag Glitch Techs. No, that they there's no joke on that. Glitch Techs was legit. Mitch Williams being one of my favorite characters, admittedly, but. Yeah, it was like, the glitch text seems to have been like one of those things where Nickelodeon just threw on the Netflix as part of a deal and then let it die because there's been nothing heard of a new season for like two years and all the everybody else is going on to different projects. No, nobody has officially canceled it yet, but the writing's on the wall. Which is heartbreaking because that, sh that again, that show was legit. Like, great. Oh, uh... Steve, uh, Steven, Tango of Wind puts up a good point in uh, chat. Can you do two Banjo Kazooie any percent runs in the time it takes me to do one Banjo Tooie 100 percent one? You know what? How much money would we need to get that? 15k. If we, we reach 15k, 15K tonight, tonight <laughs> Ted will 100 percent Tooie. It, well, that, Ted has to agree to it. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll just call in sick tomorrow. Oh my God, I w I will 100 percent. Tui twice. <laughs> Do we twice or Kazooie twice? Or, cause, well, Kazooie, oh god, Kazooie. Right, careful, careful. <laughs> Watch your words. Watch your language. So yeah, if we get $4,696.29 before the before the run is over, we'll, we'll fucking do it again. I I, I won't. It's, I won't you're, you're playing the Ghosts and Goblins version. <laughs> I, go forth rapidly. <laughs> I like it. I like the idea. Let's, um, please, please I am asking, please, because I want to, I want to see this happen. Because I, I want to see how long and, and how much people will lose their minds. Let's do, please. Right. Do, do it. Chim do it Chimbus in me. chat. Yeah. Chimbus in chat says, do it for David. Yeah, do it for me. I'm not playing, so I don't care. It yeah, affect. I'll be fucking gone at some point during that if we do that. I only I only sign up for one. I'll go home. I'll go to bed. <laughs> You'll keep going, but you know, I gotta drive out go of to state bed tomorrow. Just be like, you guys handle this, all right? Be like, you oh, you know, have it's... fun. Be like, well, See the ya. sun's still out, but uh, let's, I'm going to bed. Bye. Uh, the fucking run ends on Thursday night. Yeah. <laughs> but every five thousand dollars we play Kazooie again. <laughs> it's just fucking Groundhog Day. <laughs> well, Ted, it's a race, so really all you have to do is wait for me to beat uh, Kazooie twice. But if we get five thousand more dollars, then you gotta play it a third time. Oh. Kevin, stop talking. And he'll do. He'll. He'll. <laughs> Steven will beat it four times, and I still haven't one hundred percent. Wake today. up, play Banjo Kazooie, jerk off during Mumbo Mountain, go sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear oh. your Watto and Banjo again. Oh, that was vomit. <laughs> <laughs> Acid reflux, let's go! <laughs> David, what would what would David sound like in Banjo? Oh. I imagine Blubber's belching would probably be what oh. it would sound like. Oh, 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 uh, oh, 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 no, let's not fucking, oh, oh. let's not do that oh. ukulele shit where everyone's just moaning. Oh. I hate that. Oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 do your, do your tails in, uh, that's just Mickey Mouse. It's just no, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse just... is much higher. See, okay. See, Tails is like this. Hi, my name is Miles Tails Prower, also known as Miles Tails Prower. But then Mickey Mouse, he's like, wait, <clears throat> blah, like, oh, oh boy, ha, ha, it's me, your old pal Mickey Mouse. Come here, Pluto. Ha. I, whenever I'm trying to do a goofy voice, I often end up doing banjo. And whenever I try to do banjo, Ooh, I often do I often do goofy. They're pretty uh, close. And, and it also no, and also that's a it is so hard to do a good Mickey, and that's like one of the best Mickey impressions oh. I've heard. Uh oh. Like, 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 like people can do the laugh. Like people can easily do the oh. laugh when it comes oh. to actually talking. It's like like it, it's it sounds like very like kind kind of like a in the middle between like Walt Disney and Wayne Allwine like uh, Mickey. Yeah, there's a lot of Mickey's. Well, there's a couple Mickey's. I think there's uh. <laughs> How many Mickey's are there now? Like the Mickey out of this conversation. <laughs> I think we have at least six, uh, six? main voice actors for Mickey. 
Right, because I guess... Um... Right, they didn't do an official passing of the torch with with Mickey recently. Because when the, uh, oh, I forget, I forget uh, the actual names of the of the real people. You know, the one who was married to Wayne, the all, woman Wayne Allwine was the one. Yeah, Wayne Allwine is the one written by Rusey Taylor. Yes, and Rusey right. Taylor is the voice for Minnie, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Isn't she like ninety and no, still doing Minnie? A couple she years ago. Passed, yeah. Oh, right. Because I guess when you know, like when Walt handed the torch it was like oh they you had to meet in person and it's like i'm going to tell you the secrets of how to be mickey mouse and then that happened again but with the with the with the last torch passing they didn't get the chance he uh he passed away before they could have that secret mickey mouse meeting oh yeah there's um, someone in the chat that said there's five walt disney jim mcdonald who took over after him wayne allwine then took over and was mickey for the majority of the time until his passing i think like in like 2009 ish and then uh, Brett Iwine uh, took over after that. And then Chris Diamantopoulos plays him in the uh, the Paul Rudish Mickey Mouse shorts. Right. Which I, I think I prefer that one more than the, the current regular yeah, Mickey. Yeah, he, yeah dude, he's a much better vo He's a much better Mickey than Iwine. Like, Iwine just kind of sounds like... It, it, he, it's, he sounds a bit too... Like, his throat uh, is a bit too, like, uh, like scratchy. Did, did we? I, I know we're not on Family Feud anymore. Do we? Do we talk about the meme that um, uh, Dome and Dragon posted on Twitter, where it's Family Feud and it's just nine Joe Swans? Yes. I, yeah, I, was <laughs> I, was, I just just cool. fucking saw that. Holy shit! I'll have to watch that later. But that was a great run you guys did. Oh, oh that's so. I funny. wish I could have been there. It was. Oh uh, man, I you'll, I was you'll at have to work. Catch the vod. It was a fucking trip. Yeah, good job, Kevin. By the way, you're a great host. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right, you I, I'm glad it turned out well. Yeah, like, all the all the oh. questions were fantastic. Yes, I think you're. I think you're next in line to take over real Family Feud. Because one day Steve <laughs> Harvey will bow out. Uh, well, because there's been. His, can uh, I have his wait. mustache? <laughs> there's been Steve Harvey is the sixth host, right? Yeah, because the first the, one. Yeah. The, there was one that like no one talks about. Then there was uh, Richard, right. I think. Well, Richard Dawson was the first one. He, no, no, he, he was the second one. No, it wasn't. There was, there was, I, I believe either I'm getting it wrong, and there was a second one that was very brief after no, him. Richard Dawson was the first host, then he left, then they brought in that second guy. What's is his name? Ray Combs? And uh, he's the one that shot himself? Yeah, he's the yeah. one that killed himself. And then they brought back Richard Dawson <laughs> for like a year. And okay. then, look, okay. I know it sounded gross as shit to say it like that, Ted, but that's kind of what happened. No, I, yeah, right. I, I, I right. think that's right. I, I, right, because, bad. uh, yeah. right, because. Family Feud is sort of a spin-off of Match Game, like the the fast money bit at the end, uh, essentially. Uh, that, that's sort of like where the idea came from. Oh, wait, and, Ray Combs did it for like six years. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, he did it for a while, yeah. So, uh, How long has Richard Steve Harvey been on Family Feud? Uh, 2010? Really? So, like, 20, uh, 12 years. He's almost about yeah. to be... He's about to be the longest running host, I think. I feel right. like it, it. He's always been the host. Wait, but, he's actually the uh, longest running host because uh, oh, Richard really? Dawson only did Richard Dawson did nine years and then one extra one. Steve Harvey's on yes. twelve. Ray wow. Combs only did six. Yeah, right. he's the longest running. That's then, interesting. Right, so when they brought it back, uh, Louis Anderson was the first host, William. and then and then I forget I forget the order, but one of them was Al from Home Improvement, and the Rich other is Martin, yeah. Yeah, and the, the Mr. Peterson from Seinfeld, right? I don't remember the one before. Um, I don't remember the one between uh, Karn and um, the other guy. Right. It's uh, I don't I don't remember the actor's name because it feels like there is sort of like a dead oh, zone of oh, feud. Fuck. I like that dead zone term. <laughs> Has anybody oh, read Steve Harvey's dating <laughs> dating book? Why would I take advice from a guy with three failed marriages? Because this is America. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. If you've if you've had three marriages, that means you you've been on a lot you're, of. Yeah, you're yeah. really good at it. it right? You like... succeeded three times. Right. <laughs> John O'Hurley. That is the name of the. Uh, yes. The, the other host. The yeah. right. The guy. He, he was, was good. Was... He's the guy that looks like every uh, every boxing announcer you ever thought you saw. <laughs> <laughs> In this corner, Steve Harvey. Um, In this or corner, Ron Swanson. We have Ron Swanson. Ron Swanson. Hey, <laughs> Peter, I'm a libertarian now. <laughs> oh, Hurley, no, no. Really, isn't that also the guy who did? The, yeah, that, that's that's the guy who played uh, Neptune in SpongeBob uh, the series. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I think it is. Neptune only have one episode in the actual series. In the in the first uh, season, but then I think he made like two other appearances post the first movie with that with with him coming back. I know right. that he reprised his voice in the in Battle for Bikini Bottom because Battle for oh, Bikini right. Bottom got back voice actors who only had like three lines for characters, but couldn't get Clancy Brown to do Mr. Krabs, and I don't know why. <laughs> Peter, I work for the government because I don't believe in it. <laughs> uh, we have twenty dollars from Ace Chives, who says hashtag double banjo. So they got the train rolling. Thank you so much. I'm just imagining like a metal band, you know, doing like dueling guitar solos, but it's on banjos. <laughs> Isn't that the end of the fucking uh, the the Bears movie with the music? The Country Bears. Yeah, that's I, oh, the one. I you just the name. you just put you just unlocked core the memory. Core memory, core memory. Let's go. <laughs> core memory. Oh god, that's a Country disgust. Bears with Christopher Walken. That's a disgust. Core memory. That is I, that is a cursed movie. We have I, a Country Bears uh, McDonald's toy hidden somewhere in this house, and it is like one of the ugliest, most terrifying things you'll ever see. You like Ted, hide it from one another. Ted, for some reason, yeah. I thought you were going to say we have a Country Bears role playing Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like to talk about that one, but yes. Oh, um, banjo. Start it. Go. Go. I, I, I saw Country Bears. It was required, I guess, because there is a cameo by Elton John in that movie. So. Really? Wait. Yeah. Elton, yeah. you have better things to do. Well, you know, uh, if, 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 you know that movie was directed by the guy who made Freakazoid. Steven what? Spielberg. I... <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah. These things. I'm, I'm so confused right now. Um, yeah. Also, About Steven, what? are we planning on taking a break at any point during this, um, or no? I sure hope so. I've had to pee for a okay. while. Okay. Oh, All man, right, just because. Bladder at critical mass. Mm. Maximum mass. I wish also, I knew what that was like. Also, we got uh, twenty dollars from Ace Chives. Oh yeah, I got that. Double banjo. Yeah. Yo, double banjo. Get the hashtag going. Should we tweet it? Double. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Ted fuck it. really I'll, doesn't I'll want to tweet do it. out. Hold on, I'll put a tweet out. Fill oh, my okay. eyes with that double banjo. Right. But you have to type oh, it. Oh, I forgot to do. Letter oh, I forgot to do Chuffy. Oh, damn it. Okay. Well, I don't need Chuffy. Um, and, and also, have people keep posting in the chat that, yeah, like just a couple minutes ago, they put on Twitter that the Sonic Three movie is now officially slated for December 2024. December. That's well, interesting. A Christmas release. A cr wow. That's interesting. All right. So the first one was Valentine's Day, and the second was. It was. It was earlier this year, right? Like. Yeah. When was it again? Oh my God. April. It's like, April. Yes. So like early, like they consider that summer now for some reason. It's not summer, for the record. But you know. David. Um, it, it's summer now. David, yes. when did they announce that they're working on the third movie? What was the date? Uh, I think they announced it. I think before the second one even came out, That's they were right. like, "Oh, by the way, number three and a knuckle show is coming." And it was like, "Oh wow, Wait, a knuckles show!" Oh no, where have you been? They're not making a knuckles. Show. Knuckles and duckers, baby. Let's go. I, listen, where have you been, Ted? Been, I have everything Sonic related muted on Twitter. Um, I, I don't I, blame you. Why would you do, <laughs> do that? Sonic, why would you do that? Sonic sanity. is great. Sonic's great. Yeah, no. Sonic is so cool. Look at him; he's blue. Uh, but David, when was that? When did glad they announce you, that? I'm glad you you oh, get joy. That, from, that was from that was this. during like Paramount's whole like announcing thing. I need that, a that was, I need was, a month. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm, I'm I'm looking for the month, but I'm pretty sure it uh, was. He says it on Wikipedia. Sonic the Hedgehog film. I'm just I'm just like. Right. There's gonna be so much like. Um, uh, on Ken February Pender's nonsense if they do a, a Knuckles show, and I don't want to deal with it. Like, I don't want to deal with the internet yelling about that for months. I, want, uh, I just hope they call it a Knuckles Briefs, like the uh, uh, Sonic Paradox did. February 15th is when they announced uh, what, it. What year was uh, that? This year? Twenty. This year, 2022. So, yeah. So they're spending a whole two years on this one. Wow. Uh, yeah, about time. Uh, so they're going to spend a lot more time on this one then, huh? Uh, hopefully. 
Right. So, so yeah, look, no, I, I think a Knuckles show will be cool because we don't, well, we don't really know what Knuckles is going to be doing. We don't know if it's a prequel or a sequel, or I guess it would be like an in-betweenal, uh, between two and three. Uh, there's a lot, there's a lot you could do with Knuckles because he's an echidna. And is that it? Is that the only reason that why there's such a, a great input? I mean, there's there's a lot of I, hey, Knuckles has a lot of lore that you can just explore that has nothing to do with Cam Penders. Hmm. Um, well, we, entirely... we also don't know, see. We also don't know exactly because when they announced the Knuckles show, it was shown with the title Sonic the Series, not like Knuckles the Show. So that makes me think that it's going to be like oh, a general Sonic kind of like TV Sonic World TV series with like everybody, but then it's also going to be Knuckles focused episodes. Right. I mean, which is Chaotic entirely possible. Go. Oh man, I would love uh, a chaotic spinoff. Just they exist and they've existed for years, and nobody's questioned the fact that they've been there. So even though like Sonic is weird, like Vector is normal and has been. <laughs> no, I want him to be a he's fucking real like ass turtle. crocodile though. Like not even a CG crocodile. He, he, he he's like the turtles, and he like goes around wearing a. He's like the turtles, and he goes around wearing a, wearing a giant trench coat, and that like um, that's when he's like oh, meeting. With yes, people. yes. Oh, and then, the then when he goes to fight crime, he takes it off, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, it's a giant fucking crocodile!" <laughs> and they curse. I love it when the and they curse. <laughs> and and I, 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 what I'm I'm thinking they might end up doing something like uh like 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 the, the Sonic Drone Home short, where it's like that that one's it's like it's all CG animated, but it's kind of like realistic CG animated. It's like I think right. they might do something like that, where it's like, oh, they, they don't have to worry about getting like other live action people. Like they, uh, Idris Elba is not in that short, but they confirmed Idris Elba will be in whatever series that is. So right, oh I mean it's even Chat, a different look, voice actor for Tail. Look, guys, so. look! Oh my God, it's the fucking the ice key. It's the ice key. Oh my God! Oh my Ted, God! You have to get the ice key now. Yeah, the ice key is just randomly sitting in a cave in oh, Tui. So it's cool. like, man, I wish that they were able to do the swap and stop stuff that they wanted to yeah. do because there was so much vision and then. It's like, oh, the technology doesn't work. And... Well, so, so here's the thing. It actually, it worked on early models, but the problem was that they revised it. At the, the revised N64 after, I want to say, 97 didn't have that. So so that's why it could have worked mm. as of Banjo-Kazooie. But the part of the, I, I don't remember the exact thing the experiment, I think is if he's in chat, he'll be able to give the exact more detailed version of it, I'm sure. Um, but from, from what I recall... It was something to the tune of the revised version uh, shortened the uh, window of opportunity for you to uh, swap cartridges. And that was why it was functionally not necessarily no longer possible, but it was that combined with Nintendo saying, hey, we don't really want people to fucking break their systems. So maybe don't do that. Ridiculous. Wow. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's like it, it's like they had all this vision and it's just like, uh. You can turn Kazooie green and yeah. uh, have Dragon Banjo. Really cool, though. I, I like Dragon Kazooie. It was, Tra was going to be... Kazooie's neat, but like not worth all the buildup. You know? It was, was going to tie into uh, six games, which is what I thought would have been most interesting. Because it was going to be God, something Kazooie, else. DK64, Tui. I think they said GoldenEye or Perfect Dark and maybe Jet Force Gemini. And there was a sixth one they never decided on. But they were going to have them all cross into one another in like a big circle. I get what you're getting at too. I heard about that. Um, yeah, that, that was a more recent interview. That um, it might might have been might have been males who talked about that. Um, I just think it would be really cool just to be able to explore Kazooie with the Tui power ups, because yeah. that's just like one of the things I really like about Tui is that it picks up right where the original left off, and you have all the abilities from the first game. You should play Yakuza. Uh, I think Blue Dino was <laughs> Blue Dino. I think is correct that Conquer was the sixth one back when it was the different version of Conquer. Oh, the like, the isn't tales. that yeah? Isn't that game like eighty percent done or something like that? And they scrapped most of it. I I think th there's probably a build somewhere. I don't know if it ever got leaked, but um, yeah, that game was like pretty far along when they were like, oh Damn yeah, it. this isn't this isn't working at all. But it'd be cool if like they implemented it into the uh, 360 version. They did. Stop as well. Huh? What? Yeah, but it's kind of lame. Yeah, but the way they do, it's kind of lame. Um, it also ties into uh, nuts and bolts. Yeah, if like if you have Bandra, Kazooie, and Tui, um, say files and nuts and bolts, you get like two or three extra car. Yeah, it's not something like things. huge, but it's, it's like, like at least they did acknowledge it, you know? Because right. it, it, it was already going to be like kind of just there to begin with, like it wasn't like it was super. 
involved. Yeah, um, I mean, that's the kind of thing that you can do really easily now, like with save data. And it, that's still an under um, an yeah. underutilized thing of of Speaking gaming of you should play Yakuza because they do that, <laughs> too. <laughs> Oh, like, um, do they, like, track whether you did certain side quests or They, they don't go. They don't go super involved. Like, it's not like where, like, the PS2 era stuff where, like, Ratchet did some very involved ones where if you had a gun in the first game, you get it for free in the second game if it was in the second game. Uh, it's not like that. But um, in Yakuza, if you have one save vial from one of the games, they tend to give you some, like, oh, a bunch God, of items. Oh, God, no. Oh God! Why did I do that? What I liked about Ratchet was that in Ratchet, if you do uh, the, having like the save file in Ratchet One, gives you stuff in Ratchet Three. So it's like it get, it's like they're, they're yeah. like setting it up for like an yeah. Like, I think you just get like, like a like, discount. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, so yeah, what it was no, was it, it, it won't it won't go into effect for another two years. Yeah, two years what later. what it was was Ratchet was like I want an employee discount, and the the guy is like the CEO is like oh well that doesn't kick in for two years, and then in two you can get the Gadgetron guns from one. Uh, for free if you have a save file that has all those guns. And then if you have that save file from after that planet on one, by the time you get to three, you get like a 10 or 20% discount. I forget which. But That's you clever. That's um, really funny. Yeah. And and, and Ratchet, had, they didn't do that as much with the PS3 stuff, but there were some like bonuses. Like you could wear a pirate hat in uh, Kraken Time if you had the uh, game that should have been an email. What, Size what? Matters? Or uh, no, like uh, uh, Quest for Booty. The, oh, one, right. the one the one they only made because they promised multiplayer to Sony and then said, oh, shit, we don't have time for multiplayer in the first PS3 game. And then so they overpromised a, hey, what if we give you a downloadable game to make it up to you? And then they cut Kraken Time's development down to like nine months instead of two years. So uh, what? Yeah, Wait. no, th those games were developed under fucking insane crunch. Don't yeah. people really like the future games, though? Yeah, I'm they're, personally they're fond of Kraken Time at least. Uh, Tools of Destruction... I enjoyed my time with, but I can't tell you anything about it. And I'm probably the only person in the world that liked Size Matters, so you know, take that for what there, you will. There's a small sect that loves Size Matters, so you're not alone. Um, yeah, there, there's a yeah, crowd but we're that also likes wrong. There's a crowd that likes the PS3 games, uh, and it's usually like a lot of the ones that like came up first with those games versus the PS2 games. Uh, a lot of people from the PS2 era do like the story telling of the ps3 games which was also kind of fucked by the production because they changed writers about like six months before the game came out so the new writer who was a junior writer had to write a whole story and then write a setup story for the second game and then write a story for the third game and also he wrote resistance 2 uh and he's doing all this while setting up like hooks for the later games but all the characters are already modeled so he has to include these characters he didn't create that he has no idea what to do with that sort of thing um I'm, I I don't I don't really want to talk about this anymore. I talked about this for two years, so okay. it's uh, it's just um I really resonated little... with the um oh if you grew up with those games you like them more because that's actually I think a good reason why I like Tui more than Kazooie. I played this one first. Um, yeah, and, that's, that's, and, that's, that's, yeah. that's normal. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so like this game has a completely different vibe than Kazooie. It's much more like a Metroidvania play style and. Um, kind of vibe when you're playing it versus like a Mario 64. Not that Banjo feels like Mario 64, but uh, Kazooie certainly feels more like Mario 64 than it does a Metroidvania. So, yeah. 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 It's like a completely different kind of thing that they're going for. Um, yeah. And I did appreciate that. And also, like, there's a lot you can tell they learned from DK64, where like it probably would have been even bigger in scope, and they kind of like adjusted for that because people didn't take to 64 too well at first. Like, it did pretty well. It did well, like, commercially. It did well with players, but there was already an audience immediately that was like, you know, I don't know about this one, guys. Maybe this is too much. I don't know, Ted. <laughs> I feel no, like to, to DK64 would do really well with a remake, I think, like, if they... Yeah. It well, could. Even, yeah. even there's a mod that exists now that uh, lets you swap between characters at any given point, and that fixes for a lot of people the game's main problems instantly i actually kind of like playing dk64 the way it is set up where you like you play each level essentially five times because all you do is you just play through the one character all the way and then you switch and you do the whole different different set of missions if you don't do that then you're gonna end up missing one or two fucking bananas and then you're fucked um that said quick interjection we do have two more donations that i want to read through here 
Ian Bo donated nine dollars and one cent, who says, according to IMDb, Clancy Brown wasn't in Battle for Bikini Bottom because he was busy with Jack Two. Speaking of, I recently beat the, beat the PC decompilation of Jack One, and yep, it's definitely Naughty Dog transitioning from Crash. Yeah, absolutely. And then Bottles donated twenty dollars, say, who says, thanks Banjo, I'm fucking dead. <laughs> It's his own fault. Everybody else is like, uh, yeah, we're leaving the house. Um, please leave bottles. And bottles is like, no, I'm going to stay right here. Well, I'm fine. I'm going to, I'm going to freaking die. It's okay. It's like, he thinks die. everybody's cheating when they're actually running out of the, th out of the room scared for their lives. Okay. Okay, dude, whatever. Bottles. Also, I don't, I don't completely buy the idea that, oh, we, I was recording the voices. I was recording voicing for one thing, so I was bu I was too busy to record the voice for another thing. I'm like, no, I, that isn't really how it works. It's like, if no, you were recording really. something in live action, then I could buy that. But it's like, no, it's like, the, the, well, the, that's something that, that you could easily kind of work, work around. It's just, I feel like it's just simply fact of, oh, they just didn't want to, like, go to pay him for that. Or maybe he, like, the day they wanted him to come that, in. That's what I was going to say. Is like, was... there are specific windows for recording uh, voiceover stuff especially back then versus now where they're a little more malleable uh especially with like people recording from home studios and stuff now so there is a chance there was overlap that like maybe the one day he would have been free to do it uh was the day they were recording stuff for jack 2 and if he's already contracted to do jack 2 he can't swap over and do uh spongebob just because he wants to not that he wants to necessarily just the, I mean, i'm sure he would it's like yeah it, that's a huge role that like, he's Known like the it. um to not to go back to Ratchet, but the whole reason that the plumber's voice changed and Skid McMarks actually was because um Neil Flynn, the voice of the the plumber, started getting a lot more live action roles. So he was busy doing uh he was on the dad on a sitcom and he was the janitor on Scrubs, so he got more and more That makes sense uh, film time yeah. and he yeah, and although, so he, uh... he just wasn't around. Yeah, but, but that I, I think there's a difference between I think live action and voice because usually with voices like the recordings they're much more like uh like sing day. singulated. So yeah, that's why I'm like I'm pretty sure it's like I feel like oh if he was if it was doing yeah if he was doing a live action role then it's like yeah that makes sense why they wouldn't have time to set up for a voice acting role but if he's already doing a voice acting role it's harder for me to buy that oh you couldn't also do another voice acting role at the same time it, it would depend on the scheduling of it all because yeah. if Nickelodeon was very precise about we want like this specific time frame then there's a chance but I also wouldn't really trust IMDb as far as that goes at him Especially Stephen because, yeah, at yeah, him he was still, and he was still recording everything like for the TV show at the same time like no problem so well on the other side is that the the which studio developed Battle for Bikini Bottom I forget uh, Heavy Iron. Iron Heavy Iron Heavy Iron's probably not located near where he is I'm sure yeah so then he has to fly out or drive out uh, yeah, because Studios... also Ernest, yeah, because Ernest Borgnine was also the other VA that they didn't get back for that, so that's why oh, they... like, it seems more like yeah, uh, and it kind of makes sense like that. Like everybody else was easier to get a hold of, except for those two. They are in Cul yeah, they, they were in Culver City at that point, so they're they're not too far from where they would have been. But also driving through any part of LA from the other part of LA would be a fucking nightmare. So yeah, I just for the rehydrated. I wish they did. They didn't do anything to the sound. It's the same exact sound from two thousand three. Um, and that was the biggest disappointment for me for that game is they didn't remix the music. They didn't re-record any of the lines. They didn't add new sound effects. They didn't do anything. And I wish they did. Oh, so, uh, Ted, I really like this level that you're in. Oh, Jolly Rogers Lagoon's great. It's one of the better levels in the game, for like, sure. I, I, I think the 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 water part, I think, is maybe a bit too big for its own good. But I really love this actual lagoon-like section. I think it's, like, I really... it's nice and uh, I'm together. sorry. I talked about this earlier, but Jolly Rogers Lagoon is what I really would consider excellent level design in terms of teaching the player what they're going to be expected to do in this area. And it also sort of kind of slightly lays out to the player the clues of what they're going to need to do in, in order to get done what they need to do in the level. So they have a good starting point to where they go with everything. The only thing I hate about this level is that fucking pig side quest. Oh, yeah, that one takes until literal. At the very least, Banjo does say, yeah, this one's going to take a while. So, like, they tell you right away, don't think too hard about it. You're not supposed to be doing it exactly. right now. Exactly. But, like, yeah, you, you literally cannot complete it until the very end of the game. Um, I think you, yeah, you have to get to Cloud Cuckoo Land in order to, um, in order to complete that side quest. So, it's, yeah, don't bother. Um. Why does the game keep switching me back to normal eggs? It doesn't do that on N64. All right. Um, 
So as a quick reminder for those that may have just joined, we're raising money for the Diabetes Research Institute. This is day four, the first of our two possible incentive days for the Charity vs. Room event. We're picking back up next Friday, or this coming Friday rather, August 12th, and then we're going to go 12th, the 13th, the 14th, and maybe the 15th if we get to $15,000 by the end of next Sunday. So if you want to uh, stay tuned for that, make sure you follow us on Twitter, etc. Follow us here so you know what's coming. You can check the schedule out by typing exclamation point schedule in the Twitch chat, as I just did for you there. You can donate by typing exclamation point donate, but also it's right in the same thing that I just hit for schedule, so you can just click that instead. Or you can click the donate button down below. There's a little panel there you can click. You can do that. We got raffles. We got more raffles. We got even more raffles. We got <laughs> bid wars. We got more bid wars. We have incentives uh not as much anymore because there's only the one left but we got that big incentive and you're going to want to see our monday next week if we get to fifteen thousand dollars because we have a sonic 06 relay race pitting me chris and steven versus john stefan and experiment my team is playing the ps3 version and if we win they will never live it down so you're going to want to tune in for that or or, or don't if you're uh, a, a, a when are we it. announcing what the super duper secrets ultra when final hit, instinct when we hit 15k yeah so when we hit 15,000 you will hear it immediately probably actually we'll probably reveal it right that second so if you want to hear it tonight uh i got some good news for you if we hit fifteen thousand dollars tonight <laughs> steven and ted have both agreed that they will go longer ted will try to 100 percent banjo tooie instead of any percenting it and steven he's gonna go all in he's gonna fucking 100 percent this game twice for Kazooie. Well, that make, that's a um, race, though. So if I yes, if I beat 100% twice before he can do 100% once, then we'll end it there. And it's definitively the better game, though. Yep. And Ted has to admit it. Listen, Banjo-Kazooie... Banjo-Tooie's a long game, but it's not twge longer than than uh, Kazooie a uh, longer game. So sure, if I, if, if I can't beat uh Tui with all of the handicaps that I've been given uh then yeah I'll, I'll admit that it's the worst <laughs> it's the worst game all the handicaps and you doing it twice then sure you know what you, you <laughs> there got you go one. you can get Ted on the fucking record here we fucking $15, go fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> I want to see you spin on that record stand on that turntable I want to see you do it okay. and yeah let's do it I'll do it. Well, I forgot Ever. that they wrote all the dialogue in this game three times for when um, Kazooie's alone, Banjo's alone, and when Kazooie's all by him. Oh, that's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. And so, like, Kazooie has to sometimes not be a jackass uh, because... Challenge level impossible. <laughs> yeah, Kazooie not being a jackass, challenge level impossible. <laughs> no. Oh, I've... Oh, right, I have to... I'm I'm supposed to um not be in here as Kazooie alone. Uh god. I need an adult. I like Scoob. What is your like. favorite thing to do on the weekends? <laughs> like Scoob, Kazooie's looking kinda cute. Oh, my voice didn't crack there. <laughs> are, you Ryan, to do are you cheating on me? That was the That's... first unvoice crack I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> come on, come on, Scoob! I've got you two girls that are even looking at me and Fred. I fuck it, got the biggest. I'm turning him into an Italian chef. That's like here's the thing though. Uh, that line I did, that's actually a quote from a real Scooby Doo show. In Mystery Incorporated, Scooby says to Shaggy, "Raggy, are you cheating on me?" Because yeah, at that is. point, Shaggy is dating Velma. Um. My oh, personal shit. favorite joke in that entire series was Traps Illustrated. Oh yeah, basically where um Freddy, where uh I think it was Daphne who thought he found a dirty magazine of um a dirty magazine called Traps Illustrated, thinking Freddy was into like you know transsexual women. Then he opens it and it's just no, it's just literally traps, like how to catch bad guys and that shit. And Freddy's like, I, I read a Freddy articles. Like it was just like one of the best gags I've ever seen in my life. Mr. Incorporated is responsible for saving Fred as a character. Um, and yeah, resp uh, no, Mr. Incorporated is responsible for giving Fred a character. That is, that's what I meant. But yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, All right, but what does Fred say? Um, Fred? let's split up. <laughs> 
uh, usually. Have you, have you seen the video? Uh, have you seen the video where it's like a t it's like analyzing all the Scooby Doo characters and it's like, oh, who's the best character and why is it Fred? Oh yeah, you. Oh yeah, I watched that after we talked about it in a Discord call once. It's like that's an hour and a half of my life that I'll never get back, but I was engaged the entire time. Uh, oh, congratulations! What congratulations? Can somebody kick Kevin from the call? Congratulating. <laughs> because I was engaged the entire time. Oh, oh, oh! So, do you see God, how, like, um, words you you have that that any multiple it. meanings? So. I hate that. Oh, I, I see. We got a donation. Uh, five dollars from Blah Six. Now that we're on Gobi's Valley, I want to say the Grunty's Lair song near Gobi's Valley is my favorite track in the Banjo series. Love that it changes near each entrance. Pokemon thoughts. Uh, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and Black and White uh, 2 are great. I love getting all the legendaries. Delta episode rocks. Mega Evolutions are awesome. My personal favorite of the, um... Of the, uh, Grunty variant is honestly the Mad Monster Mansion one because it's so fucking depressingly solemn, but so good in that regard. Like, it hits all the right notes. Did I ever tell you guys my, my Gobi Valley, um... Plagiarism story? No. Ah, uh, that's good. That's I'm I'm listening. What do you got? <laughs> in in middle school, we had this like really angry band teacher. He was always so mad. It's like you should not be around children because children are obstructive. They they're not nice. So you shouldn't be in this field, <laughs> or at least maybe you should be teaching adults. But he got so mad once he was like, okay, you guys think writing music is so easy. I want all of you to write something right now. And he gave us 30 minutes to write something. And I'm like, this guy's never played Banjo-Kazooie. So I wrote down the theme to Gobi's Valley. <laughs> and I got an A. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> nice. Did he look at you and say I was wrong? I was wrong to doubt. <laughs> no, he, he just... He'll never admit that. He gave that little surprise look. He was like, mm -hmm, okay. <laughs> What if he had played Banjo Kazooie though? Your oh, ass would be in jail, <laughs> or at least you know you get an F. Well, I don't think you you go to jail for plagiarizing and not you as a do child. in college. Not and as a child. In, like grade school or middle school, that's just yeah. They app. they only send you to juvie for that. It'll get wiped off your record. Juvie. Well, I don't. I th I think they just fail you and say yeah. They, no, they just fail you. Like, no, when I was in school, they were like, if you plagiarize, you're going to, to liar's jail. Like, but what if you plagiarize yourself? You still go to jail. That, Nintendo does that every time, and they make millions of dollars. So Remember, I don't know. Ted, the rules of the poor do not apply to the rules of the rich. Good you point, well made. Plagiarist. What if they notice? What if they notice what? No, it, it's a, it's a, it's a Scott the Was uh, reference where he's talking about the game. He's talking about the Game and Watch, and, uh, and, you know, and it's like what the Game and Watch, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the uh, dual screen screen ones look almost exactly like the dual DS. screen. <laughs> I heard that. Too. Sorry, I sorry, that. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I had too. It's just like it was just funny to hear. That's all. And he's just, he's just pointing at he's pointing at two Nintendos. And he's just like you son of a bitch plagiarist. What if God they damn know it? This? Sorry. <laughs> Go on. Let's oh, keep yeah, talking. That part's annoying. You're having to run into the, run into the. Yeah, I don't mean to interrupt. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. That, that was it. Besides, you're playing the gamer. You're in charge. Right. You can tell us all to to, to give up, so, put up, up or shut up. One of the words. One of the shut ups. You can tell us to up or just shut or both. David, I want. One. Uh, I'm gonna let chat. <laughs> I'm gonna let chat uh, vote on if you're going to shut or up. I need to save on college essentials. <laughs> Why didn't you let me go? I hit the fish. Why didn't you let me go in? Stop. We do have a five dollar donation from Cookie Monster. Uh, does anyone have a Cookie Monster voice? Because I'm not. I, I, I can do that. Let me. See. Okay, thank you. Hello. Me hope everybody doing good today. Thank you, Cookie Monster. <laughs> cookie. Oh. Um, 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 um. That was pretty simple. Well, me, me. Do think about how Cookie Monster sounds like the the enemy uh, soldiers in Jack Two? Hey. Hmm. You kind of run it. Oh, people are voting. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> it's supposed to be that. I kicked Fat Albert out of that. 
Hey, hey, hey. Ow, They're, stop. They are pretty close. Leave me alone, you piece He's of garbage. Big, big, big Cookie Monster, I believe, was Frank Oz, so it's like he 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 does he usually does that uh that, that very growly uh voice. It's like a growly it's like a growl gr a a growlier version of his Os of his of his uh not Oscar, a uh, Grover. Cause then Grover is just uh more coherent uh Yoda. Obviously, the let's see the the the, uh, the people in the comments are saying uh, up, shup, down, up, shmup, up, left, up, down, up. Okay, do all those, David, in that order. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll do them in order. Okay, so it, is it is it like choo choo shoot or yeah, that's up. sure. Yeah. Up, shup, down, up, shmup, up. <laughs> Oh, the cat move. Left! Up! Down. <laughs> That's a carrot. Um, <laughs> up, down, up, down, choo, choo, choo. Choo, choo, rocket. Why aren't you playing that? <laughs> David, if you want to play choo, choo, rocket, then you need to add it to the schedule and get <laughs> someone to race it against. Oh, okay. I'll just, I'll just throw I'll it in there haphazardly. I'll play some Choo Choo Rocket with you. That game's oh, yeah. fun. I've never played it. I haven't either. Actually, a, a game that I wanted to add on here, but like there wasn't time because it was really late. I wanted to add Sega Superstars, mm. the iToy game. Oh. Wow. Deep cut. How many games are there for the iToy? Uh, released, I in Ameri released in America, I think like 12. Uh, more than I would have thought. Oops. The I this one. It's... If you got two eye toys, would your would would your setup come to life? Because I technically you do have two. Well, I have my the PS2 one, and I have the the PS3 uh, one, which also works on PS4. What the what the cat doing? What is he doing? Um, he's sort of hobbling. What he's doing. So we we did get uh some some more of his uh the the, the pain the the cat morphine. Uh, Yo, hook gave us him up. some a couple hours. <laughs> gave him some a couple hours ago. Give me pressure. <laughs> I had four seconds left. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh man. I just thought of that one song from uh, that album I fucking love. Give but, me Nova Kane. <laughs> but he's still he's still walking a little funny. Like his back left paw, he's folding as he's walking. Oh. So I don't know what's like if he's still he, in. How, is he old? I mean, he just he he he's somewhere between nine and ten, I guess. Uh, he it could is be something failing in his system. You might want to. You really. You no, should it, it's probably because he had surgery a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> right, right. I guess. Sorry, I was thinking here. of my cat when that happened. No, you weren't like, here. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. Um. Right, because uh, a few days ago we took him to the vet. Um, we we had taken him because we were like, oh, he needs his teeth cleaned. Because I guess I, they, they need to, they need to be cleaned, um, and they did his levels, and they were like, "Oh, his thyroid is is super high," so we had to change his diet, give him like specific food to control his thyroid. So it went from a, a 16, which is super high, down to a two, which is normal. And they're like, "Oh, all of his other levels are fine," so they went to do his teeth cleaning. But he also had like this strange bump on his underside, and they went, "We can you know take that out too." Uh, I guess they think it's it was like a, a, a malignant tumor. Uh -huh. So they're like, oh, we, we, we think we got it all out. We don't think it's an issue. But because of that, he had to be put under. They had to, you know, do surgery. Uh, 
And then when we brought him home, they also brought a bunch of cat morphine and said, hey, give this to him. So <laughs> we did that. And, you know, after a day, he seemed to be acting pretty normal, running around, uh, acting like not super intense jumping, but enough where he's like, oh, he's he's eating regularly. He's going into his litter box. He's hopping on stuff. He's acting normal. Uh, but then we ran out. And so yesterday was it yesterday oh geez he 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 just squatted behind me and and went to the he, he peed in the closet which is very unusual uh he's like he's pooped in protest before uh because so, sometimes I like hate those with, protest poops right I wish but, i could do that right but him peeing was like you can you just gotta throw it at a politician's window right him peeing was I can't jump into my litter box because it is a slightly higher it's a it's a top you know a hole in the top and you go in uh so we we got more of the of the of the of the drugs but it, it's only been like two three hours I don't know how long it takes to kick in but he's still kind of being slow and doing this foot drag which he's never done before like if, if it was something that was like occurring over time i feel like the vets would have noticed it when when he was in there so i think it is just him dealing with with the pain and uh i'm just keeping an eye on him because also i, I don't want him to just pee in the carpeting again uh <laughs> i hope he feels better soon uh yeah. i know that having sick pets is like really worrying and can also be really expensive so i hope you yeah. don't have to deal with that for too long yeah i mean i i that's that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping it's just like oh he's still in pain from the surgery and it'll go away in a few days i mean i know he is getting older um but they were like uh, when when they cleaned his teeth because um it had been a while uh and they were like oh usually at this point like we might have to remove a tooth or two but they were like, oh, his teeth are, are great once we removed all the, the plaque harder. It's like, oh, that's cool. So he he's just curled up right now in the closet. Um, I had him on my lap. Uh, I was just petting him. He was purring a little. But then he, like, awkwardly jumped off of me. So I don't know. He, uh, he's, you know, he's been through some stuff. He's a cat. The worst part Sandry. is that you can't explain it to them. I know. Um, yeah, they look at you like you're an asshole because you're not feeding them instead of trying to teach them why they can't eat or anything like that. Right. Well, because he, he's very much been a... Uh, he likes to beg. Like, beg for human food. Kind of like a dog. I um, did you not answer that during the... What? Huh. How did you not answer that during Family Feud? For which part? The dog one. The dog? I don't oh, remember yeah, now. Oh, yeah, begging for food. Yeah, begging for food was one of the answers. No, no, no! Oh, God. Uh, you know, I don't have a dog. I have a cat. <laughs> Quote, you know, like a dog. Like a dog. Like Shh, it, no, it, no, no. Shh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So he, he, um, you know, he likes to beg, especially if we're, if we're eating chicken Oops. of any sort, even if it's spiced in such a way that would be bad for him. I mean, he doesn't care. He's jumping yeah. his face. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can't, you know, every once in a while be like, oh, we can throw you something if it's safe for him. But we were told oh, you can't even do that because he needs a specific medication or medicated food. The science diet. Hey, mine Ooh. too. Yeah. So, you know, it. It. he's been on that on that diet for uh two three months and it seems to have worked well that's so, that's good at least yeah so that's why i'm just sitting here going oh this this has to be a pain thing if it was something else yeah uh, it well and, and with cats like specifically would... if they're in pain like like the first thing they do when they're in pain is they don't eat or drink like that's yeah. just how they are cats are, he that's just how cats are yeah Right, because I, I checked his litter box to see if he used it at all oh, during the night, which he didn't. Uh, but he did he did get up and drink a little water earlier, like like 20, 30, like, yeah, right before I put him on my lap, he was drinking some water. Yeah, I mean, I can tell. You know, he, he, I've had him for a long time. 
he showed up at my door one day. Uh, it was cold. It was winter. There was snow out. Snow is terrible uh, when it's everywhere and you can't leave. But uh, I was going out to get a pizza. I opened the door and there was a cat staring at me and he meowed. So I called over to, to the girl I was with at the time and I said, hey, look, there's a cat. And she got really excited. Uh, we, you know, in an, we were in an apartment complex. She opened the door and he just strolled in. Uh, <laughs> oh, those are the best. Yeah, he just strolled right in, went to the bedroom, jumped on the bed, curled up, and it was like, well, I guess that's it. I guess he's ours. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which is, uh, yeah. He, yeah. Yeah, we, we put up signs because clearly he seemed to have belonged to someone because uh, not only was he uh, spayed and or neutered, I always forget which one's which. And domestic. Or, Right, he, uh, somebody uh, declawed his front paws oh. as well. Oh, that's, oh. Yeah. Right. So he's not, he wasn't, whoever had him definitely didn't intend for him to be an outdoor cat, if that was the case. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, because I, I know that that's not something you really should do. If you're worried about nails, there's those little rubber nubs you can put on them, and it's like, that usually lasts. Ooh. Infinitely more humane. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, because uh, declawing a cat is like, like the first imagine novel. if you like cut off, like didn't just rip off your fingernails, but cut off the top oh. digit of each, the top little bit of each of your fingers. That's like what declawing a cat is like. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's awful. It, functionally, you, the, you would be doing the same damage as cutting off a cat's tail. The can't balance. Yeah. Like not right. the same, like not the exact same like thing, but like the same net effect. You know what I mean? R right. So, I, but it, I know, I know it is a thing that some people do. And since it had happened, it, it wasn't something that occurred in the wild. Yeah. But it couldn't, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't chipped or tagged or any, any you know, he didn't have a collar or anything. So I don't know what happened or what he went through. Yeah. But he was, he was very comfortable coming in, which is funny because most of the time, whenever he meets a new person, he, he hisses and, and runs away and can't, doesn't like them, he doesn't like new people. It, it's so weird with cats, like how sometimes they just instantly decide, you're my person now. That's it. Like Yeah. <laughs> and the, the inverse also happens. The cat just decides, nope, you stay the hell away from me. And yeah. that's always heartbreaking when that happens personally. Yeah. Like I, uh, I have a friend who just uh, adopted a stray recently. And uh, it was another cat that was spayed and neutered, but they live in a city, so it's like th that's what the SPCA tends to do, and the animal control tends to do in those regions. Is like they'll try and like. Are people grab. not about doing that anymore? Um, no, people are still about doing it, but I meant like they'll take like stray animals and try and get them spayed or neutered, like at a city level, because in cities it's kind of a problem, especially with dogs because rabies. Um, so they'll try and like avoid it since cats, you know tend to destroy wild bird populations so if you that stop. is that is true i'm pretty yeah. sure if you don't count humans the most destructive invasive species is the common house cat yeah. um so if um, you count humans it's humans uh humans but, are the worst invasive yeah. species yeah uh, <laughs> but uh yeah they uh they the cat was just super like one of the most chill cats i've ever seen in my life and i've had cats a lot of my life and like very clearly like i think somebody owned this cat at some point because he was way too chill like mm. But then that's sometimes how uh, that's how cats are sometimes. I mean, like I have a cat currently. Uh, his name, not, I swear to God, not the one we gave him. The one he came with is is Big Chungus, <laughs> <laughs> and he is a big Chungus. Like he's he's a fat Maine Coon, uh, and he's just the sweetest boy. Like just doesn't bite, doesn't like complain, uh, just just enjoys. I would Love like him. to have a cat, I think, but. Um... My parents are allergic, um, yeah. so we never had one growing up. Uh, we never had any animals growing up. Um, so that's something that I kind of always missed. Like, I'm not good with dogs still, because dogs are too kind of hyper for me. Like, um, I, everybody will be like, yo, man, my dog's so friendly. And then their jo dog will run up to me and jump and bark. And I'm like, are you sure that's what friendly is? I don't know if you that word means the same thing to both people, because uh, that sounds like that dog is trying to um, attack me. 
Uh, they're not trying but, to attack you, know. you. They're trying to play. But I also agree. Like, I'm not really the biggest fan of dogs because they are hyper. They jump on you. They lick you. And it's like, I don't want to be covered in spit. Steven, that's <laughs> how I treat you. Well, <laughs> I know where your mouth well, has been. You know, swear <laughs> you though, do you? Do you know where? Where has Chris's mouth been in the past 30 minutes? Hey, chat, uh, where do you think was, my mouth's been in the last 30 minutes? Oh, was, your phone's now. He was with me. I, yeah, I was gone because I had to go see Kevin, so that's... Uh, <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Uh, you know, I'm Chester's a Chester's chicken. chicken. <laughs> Chester's um, chicken. <laughs> Give me some you're... Chester's chicken, babe. Yeah. You're allergic to cats, David? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh. When when the when the dander gets intense, I'm just like, oh god, and I have to, you know, take some, some some Claritin or fake Claritin. Oh, but you know, he's such a cat, I can't. You know, I wasn't gonna. Even though he peed in the closet. Okay, that's Gobi's Valley's done. Gobi's Valley. Gobi's Valley. So how many jiggies do you have? But I gotta go back to uh, the swamp level. Hang on, let's see. How many wands are left for you? Three? Uh, yeah, I, I, am, I, stand no ch I stand no chance. Hey, um, if we get to 15,000, you might stand a chance. If you maybe. <laughs> That's the yeah. only way I stand a chance. Right. But um, we're, we're... I'm not even I'm not even halfway done with the game yet. Um, like, I'm at um, 26. I need to be at 70. <laughs> um, not that I'm complaining about bit playing Banjo-Tooie. I can play this game all day. Um, but, you know like normally when we do these kinds of races i like to finish at the very least you know um the game but if you win i'm probably just gonna turn the game off and go to bed glad, uh, glad you clarified the game at the end there. Eh. very delayed pause but you made it work yeah I think, you, I think you have right you have rusty bucket a mad monster mansion and click clock wood this. maybe you'll maybe you'll choke at rusty bucket bay seven times he's gonna row. choke at rusty bucket bay and then if you know what, if you choke at Rusty Bucket Bay seven times in a row, I'll st I'll get to Cloud Cuckoo Land and then uh, still still choke um, and not <laughs> not win the race. Uh, it's pretty much everyone's I'm, strategy, but you know, when it comes to Rusty Bucket Bay, I do notes first and then I focus on Jiggies. That seems to make a lot of sense, especially since you're playing on. Do you not have an Xbox, uh, Steven? I've never owned an Xbox in my life. Like, none of them. So you've never played the Xbox version of Banjo? No. Oh, wow, okay. That's why we're playing on PS3, also because I didn't want to buy an Xbox. If I didn't want to buy one If were either. backwards compatible, then it would be a different story. But also, Steven still wouldn't have an Xbox. You know, <laughs> I wonder how much an Xbox 360 is right now. Like, I, I still need to buy, like, a whole bunch of the of used PS3 and PS3 games and 360 I, 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 games. I, just, I see 360s at the local thrift store all the time for like maybe 50 bucks max. Yeah, they're not a ton. Like if you go online, you can find some that go for like uh, like the 100-ish range, depending on the, it's normally the new model, like the elite model or the slim, whatever it's called. Um, I don't want to spend 100 right now. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it's, but... like, it's not 100 I want to spend considering that most of the 360 games I would want to own are compatible with Xbox One. And if they're not, they're on Steam, and if not, they're on PS3. Yeah, not... but that's the thing, though, is that, like, I need to buy all of the, like, I want to take the advantage while PS3 and 360 games are, like, three to five bucks. Yeah. And just, like, buy a bunch of them, you yeah. know? No, that's, that's a smart move uh, now versus later, because they, some PS3 uh, games are already disgusting. Oh, yeah, yeah. Saints Row 2 is going up there. Basically, the earlier the game came out, the more pricier it's going to be. Yeah. But the problem is, is that I also am going to need to, I also really want to get like my 3DS and DS game collection kind of stacked up a good bit. And those games, though, I hate that the pandemic jumped those games in particular so much because oh, um, like I was banking on there being a good couple of years for me to be able to to buy to buy a bunch of DS games and 3DS games and nope yeah. that's not that's not how it is 3DS games are already too expensive I got lucky recently um there was a sale on some game store I saw Wario 64 tweeted it and I was like oh interesting and it was Persona Q 1 and 2 both on deep deep sale sealed so I was like oh well, those games are literally gold yeah I'll buy them 
Uh, I I've wanted to get Q2 for so badly. I've just never been able to find it for a good price. I'll sell it to you. 90 bucks. Friend discount. Mm, well, okay, damn. But that's 90, bu that's 90 bucks plus Canadian. <laughs> I'm like, okay, no, no that's maybe... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to find it for a hundred Canadian max. If that, I can find it for that, I'll pay that. Hey, I found it for seventy-five or Kevin yeah. It's not. It's it. not. Yeah, <laughs> it's not actually a ton. It's like the. the I, I think I got mine for. Shit, they actually. They, this, this was a Canadian site too. Uh, yeah. I, if I had known you were looking for it, I would have told you. Um, all jokes aside. But it was. Do like you know? Are the Etrian 30? Odyssey games expensive too, or just Persona? Because Persona. Probably not as expensive. Okay, because Etrian Odyssey is, oh, is it it's dark? basically the same game as Persona Q, but it's yeah. got, like, the most awesome jazz orchestral prog rock soundtracks ever, and you should listen to them. Specifically, Etrian Odyssey 4's soundtrack is great. Oh, Q2 the... was also the, the last uh, English-released 3DS game, so it had a super small yeah. release, so that's why it's so expensive. Yeah, though the he did link in the Discord. Chris just linked in the Discord for Ooh, you. Ooh, I see. Stephen. It's only 75. Uh, okay. So they they good. were they were half that like two weeks ago, which is what <laughs> which is why I leapt on that shit. Yeah, they might go down again, but if you want to be like just sure wait. So you bought it for like again, 40 bucks. So you I bought, I... It, I bought Q1 and Q2 together for 70 US dollars. That's like buying them new. If you can ever get an old used game for basically yeah. new and it's rare, then I feel like that's usually a good deal. Yeah, they, they were already going for twice that online at that point. Like, so in terms of if I wanted to be a, a, a stonks man, then I can do that. Uh, but I'm just going to hold on to them because why not? You might want to play them one day. I need I to get a new I, 3DS because my 3DS is my 3DS is falling apart. I need to get a new one because yeah. I don't know how long Nintendo is going to be able to refurbish those things, you know? Yeah, and I was thinking about one to get like an actual like uh, a 3DS XL because I've always just been using my brother's 3DS. So I've never actually gotten my own. So I'm like, if I want to get my own 3DS, like, I want to get that XL, like a big screen. Yeah. Also, it's a lot of those games I don't think will get ported because the technology is so different, you know? Uh, yeah. Like the two screens. And also like there is a novelty to the to the actual 3D. Man, Canary Mary's way harder on Xbox than it is on N64, and this is the easy Canary Mary. <laughs> oh, God. Donate to make him play until Cloud Cuckoo Land and do the hard Canary Mary. Oh, my God. Yeah, if, if we again, if we get $4,632.28, he will have to play all of Canary Mary and try to 100% this game. My God. Speaking oh my of God. donations, we have five dollars from Delinquo Savvy, who says the absolute unconditional love a dog gives is the reason I can never hate a dog, no matter how hyper it is. Yeah. Having I never said anything about hating a dog. Is no match when I get home and my dog being happy, I'm home just because I'm home. I don't hate dogs. I'm just not a fan of them. Yeah, like there, there, I there is dogs. A, I get, I get why they're too much for some people. <laughs> um, I think the best of both worlds is a fucking Yorkie because there is a cat. But they're a dog. Yes, or golden. Like they, well, go goldens are bigger. Like Yorkies are literally like ten pounds. Like they're small, and they sleep most of the day more so than other dogs. So they are just cats, but more loyal. <laughs> and then I say that as someone who loves cats. But again, you, know, you see. Cool. But here's the thing: if a cat likes you, they chose to like you, which makes me think that they actually like care. You know, like even if they're being a little dick. That's well, fair, but but a cat. It's rare for a cat to be excited when you get home. Uh, Maine Coons, though, are a species of a breed of cat, rather not a species, that uh, are excited when you get home because they're so goddamn social. My mm. cats are excited like they, when I get home. Oh, Your cats God. also try to sleep with you when they're in heat, though. Yo, let's go. My cat got neutered or spayed. <laughs> Why did I say that? So she doesn't do that anymore. Oh. Because I remember Shame. that's a, a conversation we had in Discord <laughs> once where you were like, stop trying to sleep with me. Um, like smoothies, your cat's looking kind of cute. I, can't, I, I don't know why I can't get my shaggy to voice crack anymore. She would I do that with story. everyone. Like one of my, friend, one, my, one of my friends would come over. She'd be like, meow, fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awkward. Right, because those are the only two words that they knew. So, <laughs> <laughs> Like, ah. Uh. <laughs> I can't do cats anymore, though. Like, I hate uh, to yeah, because they they stopped it. asking you to fuck them. No, 
gross. No, um, it's like, I can't keep up with them anymore. Like, even the basic shit, like, clean the litter box and all that, it just became too much of a, too much for me. Like, it's simple shit, but my ADHD is getting worse. Ever since I got COVID, like, my brain is just, my brain and my, like, my executive function is gone to shit. And it's just unbelievably hard for me to get anything done. Bro, Double you have executive functioning? I... Lucky. <laughs> Well, it was always, like, never good at the best of times, but, like, it's gotten, like, worse, so now it's, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, I, well, I gotta get a new neurologist anyway, because mine decided to suddenly close up shop, which means my medicine is gone. <clears throat> oh. That's... I, that I didn't... I didn't know they, they just leave. Yeah, I decided I mean, to yeah, practice. like, if they, they move or whatever, like, or yeah, they get hired at a new place, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine decided to go for, um... Mine decided to go out to West Philly, and I'm like, shit, because I'm all the way in South. Oh. I've only been to Philadelphia... Wait, I guess I've been there a couple times. I haven't been to the actual city very much. I've been to too many games three times. Right, which is, like, outside, so you have no reason to go to actual Philly. Um, yeah. So I went to... Oh, wait, no, I, I lied. I went one other time. I went looking at colleges when I was in high school, but... That again, that was like years ago. Yeah, years you don't get the experience. Like that was why um for too many games this year, we uh made sure to set a separate day aside at the end where it was like, Hey Chris, come to Philly, we'll do Philly things. And then it rains, so we didn't do a lot of them, but it rains. Yeah. You live in Philly too, Kevin? No, I live near Philly and I lived in Philly for a few months in college. The Okay. Well the first time I went to yeah, like my, my my parent whenever whenever I go, like they want me to just like stay an extra like day or whatever, and just yeah, hang out in actual Philly itself. But I've just never had the chance to because it's like oh, I need to like would have to get like yeah, whatever like separate room or whatever. I just never had a good time to. Mm. So like uh, I, that, I wanted to. There was one time like I wanted to like just spend like go a week just to go to Philly, hang out with like Ellie and Sabrina and Carol, and just check out the place. But then it was like oh. That was when shit, that was when shit, like, got closed, so I was like, yeah. oh, nope, can't do that yeah. anymore. Uh, Don't like what Savvy asks in chat, what's Philly things? Uh, Philly things include getting your ass beat by Gritty, um... That Gritty actually, was, it. like, the biggest sleeper hit for this city. The very first week he came out, everybody looked at it like, what the fuck is this I, thing? I, and then week two, he became our national treasure well, that is I, not to be besmirched. I love what I love the evolution of of Gritty because everyone in Philadelphia fucking hated him, and then the moment anyone else talked shit, Philly went Philly, and they said, "No, he's fucking our diseased mistake." <laughs> you can't talk shit about him. He's my he's my baby. You know, only I right. get to talk shit about him. He's such a good mascot. I love that he's good at axe throwing. Wait, he, what? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Excuse me? He, there, there's a clip of him, uh, of Gritty, just doing an axe throwing contest and fucking nailing it. I'm scared. Yeah, Gritty is fucking incredible. So he, uh, he started as a skin tag, but then became the most celebrated piece of anatomy. Damn right. Uh, Crimson Trooper and anyone else who doesn't know what Gritty is, Gritty is the mascot for the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, the the hockey team. He's just just look him up. He looks like if Grimace had orange hair and no purple, and wanted to kill you. He specifically oh, he has does. murder. He has he has murder eyes. Oops. Yo, Kazooie Jesus, let's go. Oh yeah, Kazooie Kazooie is Jesus. Um, how can you forget that Bible verse where Jesus uh, had a bear on his back <laughs> uh, while he yes. was walking on the water? So, uh, Psalm 45, where it just goes, <laughs> yeah. Jesus's sermons were actually like, ho 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 ho. ho, ho, ho. <laughs> God's word is an God's word is unintelligible to man, so naturally we have to. The best we can get is, ooh, 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 ooh. you know what? That 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 actually would make goddamn sense. Like the angels come down and then. um they're like, be not afraid, and you should be not afraid because they talk to you with Banjo Kazooie voices. My like... my favorite, uh, I, I mentioned this last year. There's a line in a in a specific Sonic fan fiction. Jesus, Jesus. Oh, uh, fan uh, fiction. Uh, th there's a line in a specific Sonic fan fiction. Uh, so Sonic High School is a is a well known Sonic fan fiction. It's pretty funny. 
Uh, we read it for a separate charity thing a few years back while playing Sonic games. And the guy came back years later to make a Sonic fan fiction based on the Sonic movie. Uh, and it didn't ever get anywhere. Like, he only did a few chapters and then left. But my favorite part is the last chapter of that so far is a weird flashback to Sonic and Moses. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, Sonic and Moses climbing the mountain to receive the commandments from God. And Moses dies, and so Sonic brings down the commandments. <laughs> and he then says, these are God's ten commandments, uh, and, and you must follow them. These are his only commandments, yada, yada, yada. You will not believe number seven. <laughs> What's number seven? It's um, you shall not. You uh, shall not. Damn it! Worship any false gods is the first one. Um, so, so in this version, uh, there are two number sixes. <laughs> one of which, oh. one of which, if I remember correctly, is thou shalt not commit adulty. Adulty. Adult. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I I am. Very curious about this. About Maybe Sonic the High School? dollar donation from Ian Bow. It includes help for Ted on a thing he already passed. Do we mind if Ted gets help for the Xbox 360 version? No. Sure. What did they say? Yeah. <clears throat> to have mercy on Ted, Canary Mary has a pause trick. If you pause consistently while keeping pace with Mary, you can zoom past her at the end and win reasonably easily. And no, there's some... Well, in the canary, in the cart race, there's no point for that. But what he's referring to is something you do in the Cloud Cuckoo Land race. Basically, Canary Mary's speed is tied to how fast you're mashing the A button. So what you do is, when you start, you do mash the button like normal, but then you pause the game and let the ah. A button reset every now and again. That way, Canary Mary loses through the pause screen the input you're having with the A buttons. And then you unpause, you mash A for a little bit, pause, mash A a little bit, pause, mash A a little bit, pause, each time resetting Canary Mary's speed. That's oh, how that so trick. that's why I, okay, so that, that's is this true of the, of the N64 version as well? Yes. Okay, so that's why I would ever, um, that's why I would win. Uh, you have to because, because, um, I, because I did, would do that sometimes but that's because i'm mashing so hard i needed to pause to take a break <laughs> from mashing that hard um, very rubber band like a bastard in that version and that's why you end up that's why people end up like that's where the pause thing comes from because they mapped her inadvertently to the mouse speed depending on how fast you're mashing it but then again if you pause it and it resets her speed for a bit then you can give then you can not only beat it like that you beat it and give your thumb a bit of a rest yeah so okay that's that makes a lot of sense that every time i've beaten her it's because i paused but not for that reason not because i was trying to do it well wow, that's funny uh um, catherine State. i am not winning i'm losing pretty damn bad because Steven's at something like 60 jiggies out of 100, and 66. I'm at less than 66, and I'm at like 29 out of 70. Uh, oh, so, Gary never passing or staying to her side until the last like the race rematch. I like crazy, yeah, that's actually way fucking harder. Just right, just you know, or you can just do the pause trick, well, overpower the fuck out of her, take your sweet revenge, and enjoy a little bit of a relaxing time on your thumbs. I will say, though, that the uh, Canary Mary remixes. Oh, Ice Eggs actually do more damage to old King Cole. Not that it matters, because this is the easiest boss fight in video game history. But, you know. Um... Oh. I don't know. Sonic Adventures game of bosses are pretty easy. I yeah. said fucking Thwomp, but yeah. Oh. Uh -oh. Wait, th what, what game is Thwomp a boss? Uh, the King Thwomp in Mario 64. Yeah. Level two. I mean, if you're a kid, you, could, you do, could conceivably get hit by him. Like I guess, here, yeah, you you could, but all like, you do is butt on him, and then you win. Like literally, oh, if you oh. stand on the very obvious platforms, Old King Cole cannot damage you. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. He's a womp, not a thwomp. You know what? That's fair. But I want him to hit me. <laughs> See, Nick gets it. Thank you, Nick. Oh. Okay, so so I looked up Sonic the Hedgehog, the movie, uh, Sonic High School story. I enjoy the fact Sonic the Hedgehog calls Moses Mokun. Mo yeah, Mokun. Mo yeah, have you never read this before? Not the sequel. Se no. I'm going to take a oh. break, by the way. You guys have... I'm going to go to the bathroom. <laughs>
Okay, um, I'll take a break as well. Then cool. um, we'll keep chat entertained. Okay, um, I'm gonna go reheat some pizza and eat the pizza because I'm hungry. Pizza. Okay. Other uh, than the yeah. cold food and not the hot. Yeah, Sonic High School is pretty cool. Uh, right. It's well, really, I, it's really bad, but it's one of those where it's so bad that it kind of works out. Right. It's a. Uh, I'm familiar with the original. I did not realize that there were uh, sequels. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, there's 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 Sonic High School where you fight uh, in World War Two era Germany against a dragon, uh, or as a dragon. I'm sorry, as a dragon. And, as a dragon. And I think Anne Frank is a hedgehog in that one. And uh, what? What? Or she finds out she's a hedgehog. Oh, because Sonic Anne goes back. <laughs> yeah, it's a thing. Oh my uh, god. And oh, so that's, no. that's one. And then there's the Sonic High School, Sonic the movie, where Sonic is sad because Amy died of mad cow disease. And oh. he gets a letter saying... Uh, <laughs> well, oh, so the he gets a letter saying that he uh, is being cast for a movie, for the Sonic movie, but first he's upset because his neighbor is Tracer, and Tracer has really cool parties, and she's everything he's not, uh, like, fast and... Uh, popular and uh quoting quoting the uh quoting the the, the script here quoting. a gay icon and oh, fast and, and fast was fast was the recurring theme here and so then he goes to the sonic movie uh studio like like where they're filming and he finds out that he's not gonna he's gonna they're gonna try and put him as sonic but then he can't do the one scene because it involves uh fornication with a an amy lookalike for the amy actress because amy's dead she has mad, mad cow disease or she had because she's dead I'm still, I'm Sonic, still doing gymnastics on fucking Anne Frank the Hedgehog. Sonic and... can't perform, so they bring in the weird uh, movie Sonic from the original CG version of Sonic, like that one, like bad oh. movie Sonic. And he's just this feral beast that does the work for Sonic. So, uh, that's a thing. I hope you guys have enjoyed our time today in the Charity versus Room. Uh... Yeah, and Frank's definitely in here. Uh, why? Son Sonic's related to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, yeah, it's a thing. Oh, jeez. I'm yeah, not sure how much of this uh, I could read aloud. <laughs> that, that, that is why I gave you the spark notes, because, man. Yeah. Oh. Right, she does say Anne Frank the Hedgehog, and then she took off her headband, and big hedgehog spikes came out the back of her head. Wow. I... Yeah, I don't want to yeah. know... Well, okay, I'm... Wow. Does yeah. Sonic stop World War II? Oh, he yeah, does. So yeah, Sonic stops World War II uh, by way of becoming a dragon and saving Anne Frank the Hedgehog. That's it. You get the biggest A ever. The project is over and you get an A for the whole class. No one else does. Come on. Oh, yeah. It, oh, yeah. It was a thing where he was supposed to write a history paper and instead he goes back in time and fixes history. <laughs> so the lost Sonic, uh, one of those Sonic stories. But, like Black there's... Knight. Actually, yeah, kind of. Wow. All right. Black Knight where Sonic just straight up kills a dude. But the dude's not real, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but he was totally willing to to slice King Arthur in half, right in half. Wow. Um, never. That's you just giving me brain cancer with that fucking and Frank the Hedgehog shit. Like it's gonna be one of those things that's gonna just pop <laughs> it's, in my it's head. Pure brain rot. No, right. it, uh, Johnny talked that, about this once before, where sometimes. When he's, he'll think of some random funny shit we did during SGB or Brain Scratch or something, and I'll start giggling at the most inopportune moments. That shit's going to hit me right in the fucking <laughs> face at some point during my work day tomorrow. And I'm going to have to explain to the customer that I just started cracking up while fixing their internet because of Anne Frank the Hedgehog. Yeah. David, um, I have a question. Yes. Isn't it fucked up? That at the mere whim of one random girl, Sonic uh -huh. was okay with killing the king because he was evil. But when the girl turns out to be evil, he's just like, it's okay, don't worry about it. Sonic was horny. All right. Well, I mean, 
Sonic the Hedgehog has been well established is is interested in in human women and only human women. So I could I could see it be a thing like, hey, but you know, you're cute. You I'm a hedgehog. To work out on the road. Yeah, like you know, you don't have to be super evil. We could work on things. Well, I mean, I guess. I'm just he, saying he didn't talk to King Arthur. He didn't try to convert no. him or make his life better or help him see anything the way he did with her. He was just like, oh, you can die. Slink. Uh, Chaos Alex uh, said, hearing all this makes me want to shake hands with Jesus. I'm back, by the uh, way. Oh, oh hi. Oh, hello. I think, you're, I think you're both back. Uh, I'll, I'll take that, Alex, and raise you. Uh, by the end of that, Sonic dies and then comes back a day later, and they make a joke about speedrunning Jesus. So, oh. who wants to count Sonic us down? High School? Sonic, uh, I, I have a question now that they're back. Yeah. Sabrina's looking to hop in, and I'm looking to hop out. Does anyone mind if we trade? Go for it. Hell Go okay. Bye, everybody. Have a good time. Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye. Um, Chris. I, I'll count you guys down if you're both ready. I'm ready. I am not. I don't, did I hear both of you? I don't know if I heard both of you. I don't remember. I don't think I heard Ted at all. Because Ted changed this. Oh, you're streaming. Never mind. Ted didn't change the scene. You're back. Never mind. Right. I thought Ted was the, the streamer one. <laughs> I guess he's not back. That that means we can talk more about... Um, Sonic High School. Sonic High School. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I, I'm not condoning Sonic High School. I need to state for the record. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. Well, there's a decent amount of stuff in there that is uh, very of its era, 2000s, mid 2000s right. fan fiction. It's uh, it's from 2012 uh, is when it. Yeah, yeah. So that. Yeah, you can imagine. You can imagine. Um, it it is it is strange. It is it is. Um, I still enjoy, <laughs> quote unquote, enjoy the scene between Rouge and Espio. I think there's some interesting language oh, to describe it. An yeah. Act. Yeah, there's, a, there's a whole chunk actually let's go there let's go there. <laughs> there's a whole chunk of sonic okay. high school dedicated to sbo wanting to uh fornicate with rouge yes. yes and so he wants to have sex with rouge who is knuckles's girlfriend uh so he uh, has tails make him a science hat so that they can <laughs> go invisible to have sex without anyone knowing instead what? of just closing the door so they have sex yeah. in her front lawn right uh and then she shows up the next day, nine months pregnant. And right. she gives birth right then and there to a baby uh, who they named Knuckles Jr., despite looking like Espio. <laughs> uh, subsequent <laughs> thought, subsequent thought, uh, uh. Espio and Knuckles get into a fight over this, and they get into a fight that turns into weird sexual tension kiss, I think. And then when they kiss, they do this thing that Tails describes as a body donation. Uh, <laughs> As as coined by Albert Einstein when he took his when he took his wife to a romance pasta dinner, and it's when you love somebody so much that you you can like you you merge into one body or swap bodies or your body becomes the body of someone else. So Knuckles then becomes a baby who looks like Knuckles, and Knuckles Jr. is a separate baby who can talk who looks like Espio. What the f Kevin? I'm gonna interrupt that's you. Real quick. Like, that's still like low tier to Anne Frank the Hedgehog. Yeah, no, that this is not like 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 Anne Frank the Hedgehog is still going to take the cake on that. Um, yeah, like I can't even like I can't even imagine Ken Pe even Ken Peters would look at something like that and go, yeah, I ain't touching that shit with a fifty foot rod. I, I don't have any evidence that this is not Ken Penders. Uh, the, the, this what if it was? Written, Holy shit, what if it was? This story is written by Dark Doom Firemaster. Uh that's that's the actual name. That sounds of like Ken Penders. Is, uh, it sounds like Ken Penders. Role playing name. Can, can I just say I'm like, I've been half listening to this whole entire stream this whole entire time. What the fuck? Yeah. Well, um, we should read more fan fiction. I think uh, Sonic the Hedgehog fan fiction specifically. There's always a good one. I I have uh, the the old charity event that I did every year um, before <laughs> I joined the the charity room crew. Uh, we essentially played Sonic games that we weren't fans of and then read Sonic fan fiction in the background. And it was a good time for how bad the fan fiction is. And I've thought for a couple of years now about suggesting one of these days a Sonic fan fiction table read uh, for one of these events. I'm not saying chat to encourage that. Please don't. But um, while uh, we're on the air here with something that might get cut from the VOD, uh, 
Right. Yeah. So just just a just a food for thought. Uh, we would have to with Sonic High School specifically. We would have to change some words because there are some there are some words. You know, there there are words. There's they they some... they do the Good. things. There's a sorry. Let me cut you off. There's a specific thing where I think there's a chapter where the writer says, "Eighth grade, here I come." So you can uh, you can imagine what a what a seventh to eighth grader is going to say when writing a fan fiction in the mid 2010s, early uh, 2010s. It, I just want to jump in really quickly to say that Grant Kirkhope responded to uh, uh, your tweet. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, yeah, to your tweet that said, do you want our two friends here to play banjo until the sun rises and then some all for charity? And he replies, absolutely. <laughs> all right. So we're going to hop off of the Sonic fan fiction stuff just in case he retweeted that. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we don't want people to come in specifically and hear us talking about Dark Doom Firemaster. So just in case. <laughs> right. You talk about other fan fiction. You yeah. Talk about, Sonic um, and the Search for Love. Sonic and the Search tell, for Love. Tell Grant to donate 4000 <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, fuck. Right, Sonic and the Search for Love, that, 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 that one's worse. That, that one's that's worse. The, right, wasn't that a, a something awful? That They favorite? were in Not Whole Village, no. and they... Yeah. Right, okay. No, we're going to stop. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. No, no we're not. <laughs> um, no. My, my favorite Sonic fan fiction is, of course, uh, Sonic Fights Robotnik. Oh, I've um, read that one. Oh, it's it's good. It was written. It's it's nineteen. It's from nineteen ninety eight. It was posted on Usenet. Uh, I have uh, it, it. It still exists. There's there's an archive on the internet, which may or may not have been put together by me, because uh, there's multiple stories. It's it's a full saga. It it, it involves um, it's it's sad AM based. So you got Sally and Bunny and Rotor and Antoine. Uh, you've got uh, Where's Ted? Uh, Ted is eating pizza real quick. Yeah, he's he's eating lunch, a slice or three. Um, a Green Day shows up in the story. Yo, <laughs> yo, well, every, you every Green, Green Day, Day. Yeah, and everyone loves to sing "Walking Contradiction." Um, but yeah, it's it's a fanfic that he wrote a bunch. Uh, the, the author's name is Sonic Fan. I wrote a bunch uh, between 98 and 2000 and then 10 years later came back and wrote Sonic Fights Robotnik 8. So hi Sabrina, welcome. Good. Um I've been listening to the stream in what the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh this is why there's a singularity that happens when David and I talk about Sonic fan fiction in a room together clearly. <laughs> All right. Oh man, you got to you got to love the old. I mean, I guess technically there was good Sonic fan fiction, um, you know, like like Dan well, there's, always, there's always there's always going to be some good fictions that outweigh the bad, but the bad ones make the most memories. <laughs> That's true. Uh, there was a there was a good one I read where Amy became a cop and arrested Sonic, and each chapter is just one day of her feeding him in jail and trying to convince him to marry her, and then at the end he's like, "Yeah, okay, let's do this." That was that was a good one, I think. Um. I mean, that's how love works. Are you just playing videos in the background, Steve? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Switch clips. Oh, well, there we go. You gotta keep, gotta keep people. Um... Oh, even said, "What if you lost all your progress?" <laughs> I'm back. Sorry, I have it's eaten a... pizza. Don't ever watch the vod. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, once Stephen is ready, we'll count you down. Uh, Greg oh, Kirkhope shit. retweeted us, by the way. So. Oh, that's awesome! Thank you. Uh, I think he, he either responded and/or retweeted us, or just retweeted us. Uh, don't start just yet. We're gonna count you down. Okay. Uh, when you're both ready. I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, go. Hmm. And oh, we're yeah. back. We have a ten dollar donation that just popped in from Damned Girl Seven, who says, "Hey guys, it's great to hear Matt again. I miss his hilarious SGB riffs and Wario impressions. Here's a cartoon question for you: What is better, BoJack Horseman or Big Mouth? Thanks and lots of love. Diabetes hits close to home for me. What Thank you so much. Of, um, what kind of question is that? Yeah, there. I mean, BoJack. Only watch be, BoJack. Oh. I haven't watched Big Mouth." Big Mouth, I feel, kind of hits that problem spot where it's like, 
it sort of does the cuties thing where it's like you're using your talk you're using explicit imagery to talk about the issue of why it's bad and the intent of it is to actually gross out the audience with what they know now afterwards compared to what you didn't know before you go into it but then you're still fucking doing it and it's like guys okay i get it stop and Big Mouth kind of like overdoes it a bit and it's just kind of gross about it. But it also, and this is like damning with faint praise, but Big Mouth also willingly tackles the issues the kids have growing up and going through puberty in a way not a lot of shows will try to do in a realistic way either. So it's like a hit and miss show for some people. Bojack I have no experience with, but Bojack just sounds too fucking depressing to sit through. <laughs> But I do not understand why people say BoJack is depressing. It is not that. It's hard depressing. to watch a man make bad choices over. No, it's a not. A horse, it's, I guess. No, it's not. No, it's no. Believe you me. No, it's not. In fact, it, believe it or not, Ted, here's some fun little Avatar trivia for you. The original pro the original premise of the show was titled Zuko keeps fucking up, but that's not. But um, <laughs> watching a character fuck up repeatedly is it such a bad thing? It's when they make the same fuck up over and over again that's the problem it doesn't well, that become also, boring uh, at that point uh, oh you already yeah, made this but... mistake why don't you stop well zuko's get... also a villain though for at least the beginning of the show so like that's a character arc he goes through versus like for bojack it's like he's a bad person and then he feels bad about it and it keeps on going through a cycle and it's like it's depressing because it's too real uh, for me, like, uh, I know a, people who do stuff like that. As a <laughs> bad know? person, uh, it hits close to home. I'm gonna <laughs> mute, I'm gonna mute my uh, mic for a few seconds, guys. I'll be back around in a few. Hell yeah. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll well, see you guys it, in a few. I just want to double check something. And also, uh, Grant Kirk, he didn't retweet. He just replied. Okay. Okay. Either way. <laughs> There's this one episode cool, of man. Rick and Morty where, like, after the episode's done, he's, like, contemplating, like, killing himself with some machine or something, but it doesn't work. And then he's crying in the end, and everyone's like, man, it was so sad. I'm like, no, it's not. Rick's being a big fucking baby because his planet girlfriend broke up with him. Like, stop. It doesn't matter. I, I don't know what that means. It, don't worry about it. That's, I've watched <laughs> half of an episode. No, of not Rick planet girlfriend. It was the uh, the the one where that, what's it called? The hive mind? Yeah, that was that episode. But still, okay. it's not that sad. That, that makes more sense. I don't maybe. find Bojack to be that sad because it's like, well, you're causing your own misfortunes, so I don't feel well, bad for you. No, it's, so here's the thing. It's not sad. It's depressing. There's, there's a difference in that. Yeah, like, I agree it with that. sucks the, it sucks the energy out of you because you're watching this person. And the thing is, is that there's enough good in Bojack for me that you want to see him act better. And then he doesn't. It's like that friend from high school, you know, that like you were really good friends back in the day. And then you like 10 not years later, not me. I stopped years talking later, to those people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, granted that. And I mean, Steven, that's the thing. I stopped talking to those people by not watching the show anymore because I in high I, school. I mean, we all did. <laughs> and if you saw if you. <laughs> I peaked in high school, and if you saw how I was in high school, you know that that's really, really sad. <laughs> Not me. I I see myself it's, it's, as a constant it's improvement. Whole, it's it's basically the whole the the, the whole cynical uh, approach to it of just just being like yeah, because you have the whole yeah like, like you you're showing kind of like you're not really meant to feel bad about them because yeah it's like yeah, they're 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 pulling all of the shit like on their own and it's like but it's more so just kind of like what they represent and just being like oh you see the, this kind of cynical perspective of like oh they're just going to keep fucking up and they're never actually going to learn and it's just like oh if you see that so much time like eventually it might get like a bit too tiring for certain people of being like oh yeah i i, I just end up like feeling you don't feel bad to them but you just feel bad about yourself and and, and yeah. Catherine uh, said in chat a really really salient point, which is that not everyone will experience that the single piece of media the same way as one another. That's true, so, but then there's no discussion. <laughs> no, no, it, yeah, but that's that's also true. Uh, <laughs> send uh, tweet. I I went to high school. I hope you did. Did you go that's to Sonic High School? Oh man, I wish. No. <laughs> and I've been told that I, I, I'm, I, I was lucky to have missed the conversation, and I don't want to <laughs> stop losing that like status of my life. Uh, well, here I'll ruin some part for you. There's a part of that uh, that extended universe of stories that features Anne Frank turning into a hedgehog. <laughs> so there you go. I am now dumber for having heard that <laughs> sentence. Yeah. 
I I mean, you know, if if if, if, if the multiverse is an infinite, you and me both, Ted. Yo, multiverses, <laughs> LeBron man, let's go. Right, Yo, like LeBron. LeBron man. <laughs> so main. I I main LeBron with the cell mod, and I listen to that song exclusively when I play. Is LeBron top tier? I don't care. I got a Glock in my Rari. The, the tiers don't matter in that game, I don't feel, at this point, because you can only really play it competitively in, like, two versus two, because there are no, like, there aren't really iframes. You can get hit as soon as you spawn. Uh, there's no landing lag on any move. There's no end lag on any move. You just kind of mash buttons till you win. But LeBron's oh. cool because he has a basketball that he, you throw out with your special, and if you hit them with the basketball, you can turn that into a combo. And every time you don't have a basketball with you, if you hit with any of your basic attacks, you get the basketball back. Huh. Also, yeah, if does... you throw your basketball to your teammate, and then they throw it and hit an enemy, it flies into the air and you can do a slam alley-oop attack. One, two. I want to apologize for having a late thought because those are always boring, but... um. That's why I find uh, Better Call Saul to be a better show than uh, Breaking Bad. I, I'll, I'll agree with you. I because, mean, they have to stick the landing is the thing. Because like uh, the uh, Breaking Bad, you're watching a bad guy continue to do bad things. And so eventually I don't care about him anymore. But I see Saul and he's trying to do good things by doing bad things. So yeah. it's a uh, yeah, yeah, no, better show. I agree with that. Especially like because Saul completely recontextualizes a lot of Breaking Bad. Uh, again, I think they have to stick the landing. Um, because there's two episodes left, one that just aired an hour ago that I haven't oh. watched yet, um, obviously. I and think he's playing Banjo-Kazooie in it. I hope so. <laughs> Saul, I, 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 like, I, I, what I, I, I've I, never I, watched either. Is Saul a bad person in Breaking, Breaking Bad? He, so it seems uh... like he's the comedic relief kind of character that, like, isn't necessarily bad, but he's helping bad people do bad things. Yeah. And, he's a and criminal he, lawyer. Yeah, he, he yeah, he's a, like, a very, like, skeevy lawyer. Um, okay. And in Better Call Saul, you kind of the whole show has is built has built to the point of him becoming Saul because that's not his name. Uh, you, when you start Better Call Saul, you find out his name's Jimmy McGill, and you see like why he kind of always tries to cut corners, or you see that his flaw is that he cuts corners, mm -hmm. and so you slowly but surely see what happened to him that made him the Saul that we know. And it's in, I'm not going to say anything plot wise, but it's incredible because the whole time of the show for several years, I'm not going to say how many because that's a spoiler itself. Uh, you are watching that show thinking, I want to see him become Saul. And then as soon as it happens, you're like, please, God, no, take it back. Because you're like, it's just heartbreaking. Yeah. Are yeah, we going to say I, something? I, I, or, I, I, go ahead. Stephanie. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Whichever. I was going <laughs> No, because I was going to. I was gonna ask, um, because you brought up multiverses, is it true that Velma's attacks are calling the police? Yes, Velma is in fact a fed. Uh, she... <laughs> <laughs> she... So, 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 if you've played Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, Phoenix Wright has a thing where he collects, uh, like, pieces of evidence on the stage, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you get all of them, you have a special, like, super kind of move. Velma has five that show up on the stage, and if she collects all five, she can call the cops on you. <laughs> Is Phoenix Why? Wright top tier? I don't think. I think he's lower. Oh, but it's he's fucking funny. So who cares? Yeah. What, what, uh, what, what I want to say about uh, yeah, because I I I I uh, missed. I, I think I got up to season three on Better Call Saul, and I just missed when season four was airing. And I did that thing where I'm like, I'm gonna catch up, and then I never did. So yeah. I'm like, damn it. It's so, like I really need to. It Becca, starts slower. Yeah, it's, it definitely starts slower. Becca had a hard time getting into it because of a certain character. But once that changed, uh, she she fell in love with it just like I did. Yeah, I think it's... my own. I think my only personal. Uh, it's it's not like it's not just a bad thing, but I think my personal criticism about from what I've seen is that I feel like the uh, the the Saul stuff, oh, well, the, the Jimmy McGill stuff, and then all of the uh, like the uh, the Later the Gus Salamanca. Uh, oh, okay. uh, Gus, right. like all that side, just kind of felt like very like like it's it, it's just but for the most part it's its own separate thing. It's just it's not as interesting as the Jimmy stuff. So whenever it cuts to that, I'm like, eh, I'm not really like it's it's whatever. It just it's, it feels more. It feels it gets more, better, more. Stefan. It does. It's sort of like how um, like when you first see uh, when you first see not the Salamanca, but when you first see Gus in Breaking Bad, you don't really care that much. Uh, and then later, by the end, you're like, oh, this motherfucker is Oops. he's that guy. You know, uh, that's kind of how it is for like you haven't even you haven't met Lalo yet, so 
Like, you don't even know. Yeah. So is there I, I, a... I did I did kind of spoil my because I, I knew what like yeah like last week's episode because I knew that I knew that one was the the uh the, well I mean the, the people know that the, the breaking bad episode, so I'm like I'm curious, I just want to see what it is. So it's like I would I like looked up like a kind of synopsis of what happened. So I'm like, oh yeah. So like, oh that they finally kind of they finally got up to like the uh the present, so to speak. So yeah, they're oh, they're, they're doing some interesting stuff this season that I, I will not talk about. Uh, follow PUBG Mobile Esports on Ted's Yo. screen. Is Wait, there what? a different? Oh no, there's an ad right now. But I'm, <laughs> I'm playing the. I'm at the Dick Rocks. Oh no, it's a, it's like a. The, you can we can still see the game. Yeah, it's just it, like it a, zooms the, the screen bottom. out. Right, it is it is a a banner on the bottom that it's just like wants to. It's like an ad in like a sports cast. It like the screen move right. closed in. Yeah, it's like, picture in picture yeah, almost. Sponsor. Yeah, um, but Man, yeah, I, um, I've only Saul. seen good. The first two seasons i i was uh super into it where i you know listen to the podcast as well and then things happened and uh i i was uh unable let, let's say uh to watch the third season and i just have not caught up since yeah it's too I was I was one of the ones that actually like watched the first couple episodes when they aired and then I was like I'm not really into this so I just stopped and Me then too. word of mouth kind of started really pushing late it's sort of like Breaking Bad no one watched Breaking Bad till season 5 anyway so <laughs> yeah. look at the fucking ratings it's true yeah, um, that was that was they when get it was five on 5 seasons if nobody was watching it it was just enough people to continue going and it was winning Emmys so they didn't care yeah, it was, and it was, it was a like, very was cheap fun. budget show as well yeah it was also low budget despite like not looking mm -hmm. like it a lot of the time uh it, 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 it looks low Netflix. budget to me. <laughs> so, so, I mean, that nowadays it does, but like they they masked it well enough to, to like mm. the uh, the general viewer. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, right. When I think when when Breaking Bad first started, I I watched I think the first two episodes because I was like, oh yeah, um, Brian Cranston, he's cool, and and then stopped until. I think season five started and I was like, oh, I better catch up. And I did never watched any of these shows. Um, but I do remember a meme from breaking about breaking bad from when the show was new. And it was, it goes, um, you have, you have stage four cancer, uh, treatments begin next week. And it's just the subtitle is, uh, breaking bad. If it was in Europe and then, <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, that, that's very much, that's true. Um, now, here's here's an interesting thing, because uh, even though, so Stephen and I are both saying that we think that Saul is actually better than Breaking Bad, which is saying a lot, because Breaking Bad is fucking stellar. Um, th there's an interesting shift that comes then, because you can, like, start debating, like, do you watch Better Call Saul first? And, and my answer would be no, because yeah. you need to watch Breaking Bad, then watch Saul, and then you're going to want to watch Breaking Bad again. So, it's it's very interesting seeing that. Uh, it's exactly what Becca wants to do. <laughs> yeah, especially because Saul has the has all those flash forwards occasionally. So it's like that's not gonna work if you watch it first. Yeah, like 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 Saul has to exist. Saul can't exist without Breaking Bad. But the fact that it somehow turned out potentially either either on the same level or better, like it's 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 indisputably on the same level. Um. So the fact that it came even close to that is incredible because it was a, supposed to be a funny haha -ha prequel show and then they it just turned into what it is and then also and then you also have el camino and el camino is great too yeah el, yeah el camino doesn't stand on its own legs but it's good for the people who have watched breaking bad yeah what's el camino what it needs to be it's supposed to, it's supposed to be the epilogue it's not supposed to be like oh just a breaking bad movie on its own I and know. here's a cool thing uh just when, just when you count it as people when you count it as the last episode of Breaking Bad, uh, it and Saul have the exact same amount of episodes by the time they end. Oh. Uh, it's poetry I think, I think it's 63 for uh, Better Call Saul, 62 plus El Camino for Breaking Bad, because El Camino's code name was 63. Fun fact. Interest, interesting. Um, also, Santiago in chat says, I can't believe Klonoa is working with Gus. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Is there a sequel series with Planoa? I hope Breaking so. Bear? I hope so. Uh, we do have a $20 donation from Rick who says, and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> you see, now I'm just imagining it like the Steven Universe theme song where it's just like, and Steven! And Morty! <laughs> uh. Uh. 
Hey, oh, yeah. And, and now, and now Grant, and now Grant Kirkup retweeted. Oh Aww. shit! That's so nice. Of him. Oh, nice. Oh. But Thanks, Grant. Not that you're watching, but thank you. Well, maybe he is watching. Well, maybe hey, you are. If you are, oh, he's, hi. He's, if he first off, he's up at like freaking three in the morning. No, he's uh, in. He's in L.A. He's in L.A. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. I didn't know yeah, that. He, yeah, he's in. It, um, he's West Coast. Oh yeah. As, as far as I know, unless he. Unless he moves oh, back. he's on. He's on. Um, subpar. Um, subpar coast. Okay. Uh, how do you poop eggs backwards in this version? <laughs> Yo, um, someone quote that. How do you poop eggs backwards? I'm still on it, Frank. I think it's the opposite it's stick. It is. No, I tried it. I like. It's, I, I like I, I like Nick. I think Nick adding Golden Floor. Did you do that? Donate, and he just responds with Rick and Morty. I thought it was one of my buddies because he does the he does that too. The um, Rick and Morty rap. What's our donation total at right now? We are currently at ten thousand four hundred two dollars and seventy two cents. So you should have just lied and said it was fifteen k. <laughs> Surprise, <laughs> bitch! Don't look. Surprise. Trust us. So it's for, you know. Trust me. Still though, getting to ten thousand in the first weekend is really, really like yeah. way more than I yeah. thought we would ever do. Yeah, we uh we were kind of expecting given how the, the, the state of the world is for a lot of people financially this year, uh, that it was gonna be like you know, lower than usual. And the fact that you're just blowing out of the water any of our previous like first four days is just insane. Yeah, so I'll be interested to see how the data looks like because we're going to have the break. But, um, yeah, you know, hopefully the fact that we're not competing with Evo anymore will make up for that. Um, you know, so let's. Oh, my God. I can't believe I didn't fall. Um, anyway, um, yeah, it, it's going to be interesting seeing how the second weekend goes. And I know a lot of people have said that they, they get paid next week. So uh, I'm that, one of those people. <laughs> yeah. I get paid on Friday. So um, maybe I do too. I, I so, forget when I get paid. I never pay attention to my bank account. It's probably a bad idea. Oh yeah. But um, yeah, so it's one of those where it's like, hey, you know, if, if we're able to make the event uh, more more entertaining for you guys across a longer span of time, then then we're happy to do that. Um, especially if it means you're not screening your wallet as much, you know. I also think it helps. It helps give even the streamers like a couple of days to be like, especially because like, oh, I'm gonna be like, okay, we're we all have to set up and like be prepared for the whole weekend, and that gives us like three days to just kind of rest, yeah. and not have to worry about any of that, and then we can go right back into the grind. Yeah. And you don't have to take off of work. Uh, the some of the content boys, if they have a regular stream schedule, they can stream. I was supposed to do work this week, but I'm actually going out of town like in the next uh, probably hour or so. I'm gonna leave. So exactly. yeah, I. I tried to take off work, but then my work was like, haha, actually, um, uh, even though you've sent in your days off a frickin' four months ago, we're not gonna let you take those days off. Um, I'm which so is why it always pays to get a union job. I got mine, and I'm grateful as shit for that because my company would have murdered me otherwise. There is no <laughs> union for my job, sadly, so, um. Ouch. I'm so mad at my job because when I got COVID, their rule is like, oh, so um, you won't be penalized for being absent for the week that you have COVID, but to make sure you're getting paid, we're taking all your sick hours and vacation time to cover for that. Wow, that sucks. My yeah. job has separate hours for if you get COVID versus normal sick time. Um, mine says, they mine really says... used to. <laughs> Mine says 10 days, and if you get it, don't even just give, bring in a doctor's note and stay the fuck home. Yeah, because it costs the company more money if everybody gets COVID versus letting the sick person stay home, you know? Yeah. Right. You know, like, like, I work from home, so it, like, it's not like I'm going in with like, infecting people, but like, it was like, I, I couldn't, I couldn't work and deal with those people over the phone, like, I couldn't do it. It's like, no, I'm just going to rest for, like, the week. And, um, thank God I did, because that, I, I recovered well, so I'm, I'm doing well now. That's good. But, uh, but, um, yeah, like, when they told me that they took, like, my vacation hours and stuff, I was like, damn it, like, I don't know but what they, I'm going to do. They took your <laughs> vacation hours? Yeah, yeah. they that... took my vacation and my sick hours. So, That's... they left me with three hours of sick time off for the rest of the year. That's mm. oh my god, that's Theft. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, and I I don't have any vacation days left. Like 
I still have my vacation, my mandatory week vacation that I have that I'm taking in October now because I had to delay some things. But, um, like, that's like the last week. Like, thankfully, the, the vacation time I scheduled already did not get affected, but, like, any extra time I had is, is all gone. Brina, do you want me to go into your office and beat up your HR? <laughs> we work from home. <laughs> There's no one there anymore. <laughs> Uh -oh. oh, it's okay. I can then break into their house. Um, <laughs> I'm already committing one crime. Why not add a couple extra? <laughs> Just add them up, right? Oh, and then you can jaywalk after too. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm a terrible person. I will press the walk button on the like the crosswalk signs, and if before the the like the light goes on, if there's a clear way to go, I'll walk anyway. I'm like, I'm a bad boy, ladies. Wink, wink, nudge, um, nudge. Uh, Wait, hold on. Why are you shooting mucus again? I got you to zero, you piece of garbage. I'm, I'm watching I'm watching the stream, and, like, I looked over at Steven, and he's sliding around, spelling. But, but when I looked up, I saw him hit J, and then O, and I, I laughed inside. <laughs> Wait, did I do Are you doing cheat codes, Steven? No, he's in the um the Ouija board. Yeah. Joe Mama. Joe Mama. Oh, you're already in Mad Monster Mansion. Oh, I see. Oh, no. That oh, means he's okay. gotta have like something like 70 jiggies. Uh, I think so. Some somebody called my name. <laughs> <laughs> Joe 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 Joe. Why didn't he get the spin-off? My name is Joe Swanson. <laughs> There was a, there was a did bit where they watched did... the Cleveland show. Not many. Uh, it, it took too long to find its footing, and by the time it did, yeah. they were ready to close up shop with it. Well, it I... was funny because like they knew that by the end of the first season, they knew they were going to get canceled inevitably, so they just stopped giving a fuck because they knew that Fox wasn't even watching anymore. Like they, <laughs> they were, so they just did whatever at that point. It's. I feel like these spinoff shows. Well, it's weird because we were just call talking about Better Call Saul, which apparently is doing really well. But I guess specifically for comedies, like there was the Friends spinoff for Joey that bombed. And then there's the Cleveland show, which bombs. And oh, isn't the Patrick cheese. Star uh, spinoff for SpongeBob really bad, too? I, I think that's an issue more of capitalizing poorly. But if you look at like um, there were like three or four shows in a row that spun off from one another as far as comedies go uh, in the in the in the Cheers cinematic universe. I think. Yeah, like, uh, that. That's the reason why they keep going because of Frasier. Yeah, right. Frasier lasted longer than Cheers by a season. Yeah, uh, and there's Golden all... Girls had like three spinoffs. Wait, the... Golden Girls is in the Cheers universe? No, 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 yeah. no, separate, oh, se no, separate, separate, separate. No, there's a uh, right. Well, Golden Girls, because technically Empty Nest is a spinoff, uh, and then Nurses spun off of uh, Empty Nest, but I don't think anyone watched that. And there was also the Golden Palace, which is sort of the eighth season of the Golden Girls, just without B. Arthur. Uh, but there's also, you know, in the 70s, you know, a lot of shows spun off from All in the Family, you know, like yeah. uh, the Jeffersons and then Good Times spun off of that. Uh, you had, oh, um, even of course, if you wanna, uh, Sam and Son? No, no. Even if no. you want to spin past um, comedies, like, uh, is, it, is it NCIS or Law and Order that spun off of Jack? Um, Law NCIS. and Order. Yeah, okay. Law and Order has a million different um, spinoffs. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, but the fact and, that one of them came from Jag first was also interesting. Yeah, and also I think it was um, Homicide: Life on the Street was yeah. also like in the same universe. Even yeah, because it's... that's where um, what's his name came from? Um, Munch. Munch, right? Right. They carried that show wasn't a spinoff, but they carried that character over into SVU. Yeah, and he, he's a character that links a whole bunch of shows to the Law and Order universe, including the X Files. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, the X Files are in the Law and Order it universe. Is. Yes, even which mentions I... in chat the um, the Brady Bunch, which had a bunch of spinoffs, and also had that one much later movie where uh, one of the Bradys becomes vice president. Hmm. Which one? Uh, dad. The dad Remember? became vice yeah. president. Yeah, I think it was the second one. Wait, which show? I'm I. Blanks. Brady Bunch. Oh, the Brady... Um... Didn't we talk about... We fucking talked about this last year. We talked about the Brady you, Bunch. You and I talked about this. What the fuck, Dave? <laughs> we did. Right, the Brady Bunch, then it the was, Brady Bride. It was the Brady Bunch goes to the White House. 
Oh, right. Well, the the Bradys, the the night the one season drama that had one of the Bradys running for I think senator. But yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking about yes, the yeah, third the Brady movie. bunch in the White House. It was a 2002 yeah, I remember, I remember American comedy film. I remember yeah. th- th- this this was during oh, Dunk the Night before, right before the Watto stuff. Oh no. It's all full circle now. <laughs> Everything come back to Watto. Huh? See, no, the reason why I remember is because I all like there's you the other thing like when you're listening to something and then you like when you're listening to something and you're like out somewhere and you start to listen to something similar to that, you remember that spot. I remember, oh, I was driving in the car when that was happening. So you're you guys talking about that. I remember, oh, I was in the car when that happened and that was like, oh yeah, that was during Donkey Kong and then it was like, oh, you just everything just starts clicking in your mind. And it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Uh, also known as a core memory. A core, oh yeah, a core memory <laughs> unlocked. All right, Maud was also a spinoff of All in the Family, which was on for a while. And what it was... wasn't uh, wasn't a Family Matters uh, spinoff of the like, Perfect Strangers. Is that it? I believe yes. something I something yeah. like ninety percent of all TV because of all of the. Oh no, I didn't want to hear the rules. It's like almost every TV show all is in the same universe. Yeah. It's all in the snowball from uh, the snow globe from that one sitcom. Uh, right. Well, it's the, it was a drama, St. Elsewhere, at the yeah. end. Right. Because, well, St. Elsewhere was about to be canceled. The The last episode was the hospital getting destroyed. Somehow it got renewed. And they went, I guess we're going to keep going. And... Just to just to briefly close out the Brady Bunch thing. Oh, yeah. uh, he becomes vice president because his vice president, the, the vice presidential candidate, gets uh, removed for being corrupt the president says i've never dealt with this specific company involving i think the vice president or something so if i am involved with them and if if i'm ever proven wrong i will resign uh and the brady's happen to be at the white house hanging out that day so they on a whim (laughs) pick mike brady as the running mate and they win and then just before the president is going to be sworn in evidence reveals that he had made dealings with that oil company and he's forced to resign, which makes Mike Brady the new president. Oh, what? what? I mean, and, and then he picks his wife. It, it was what? House of Cards, like ten years early. Oh man, House of Cards, but like a joking, but like yeah, a comedy. My aunt, I, my aunt was big into the Brady Bunch. Um, she's like almost sixty. Apparently, it was like pretty edgy for the time, which is weird to believe because. Like, nowadays, Brady Bunch is, like, what people would say for, like, almost, like, leave it to Beaver, kind of. But the fact right. that it was a step family was considered, like, very, um, like, edgy and non-conformist, you know, because yeah. that wasn't... I, I have a hard time believing that it wasn't common, like, before, like, the 60s, but, like, it certainly wasn't, like, talked about because, oh, good Christian people don't get divorced they stay in their terrible marriages until the end hmm. of time i don't think they got divorced though i think they weren't they both like widow widowers like i don't i don't I believe so I, but even even sure. in those situations it was kind of it was kind of weird right uh, it, it was only in um the movie i think where they were like oh yeah no the, there was divorce because isn't there a little joke about like uh, i dream of genie being the wife or something i I don't remember. Clearly, I should have watched all of the Brady Bunch in between these oh, two. No. Uh... Yeah, man, that's your fault. Gold, Golden Floor says the Brady Bunch was the Breaking Bad of the 70s, which Bluevon <laughs> responds with, Marsha, we need to cook. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, uh, with that, I think I'm going to take my leave because I got to drive like two states away. So, oh, okay. why do you have uh, to drive two states? Uh, I'm, uh, my buddy's visiting from where he lives, and I'm, we're going to go visit where he lives now. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, it, it became a midweek thing because we were like, hey, I have a week where I'm not doing the charity room. What if I didn't do work? And so that's how that started. Okay. You have um, a good rest, dude. Thanks. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the stream. Uh, make sure that somebody donates uh, or all of you combined donate $4,600 so they can keep going uh, all night. Or right. Else. And then maybe when you get to where you're going... Uh, you can rejoin. I'll be going. Yeah, I'll rejoin yeah. from I'll rejoin from another state. I'll be like, hey, I'm here now. Um, right. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks everyone who donated. I'll see you guys again. Uh, I'll be back on Friday. So uh, bye. Love bye, you. Bye. See you guys. Well. Can't believe he doesn't have a a streaming setup in the car.
I was like ten oh, percent <laughs> like thinking that you were gonna be like, I can't believe he doesn't have an air fryer. I don't know why. <laughs> I, I don't know what his kitchen situation is. I've never seen it. Um, I've never... Wh why would I have ever snuck into his house, gone into his kitchen, gone through the pantry, you know, stolen a few cans of beans, snuck back out? Okay, but them, David, no, David the but let me put it yeah. to you this way. Why wouldn't you have done that? No. <laughs> um, well, because it's a lot of effort. Requires a lot of moving, a lot of walking. Oh man, walking. You know what I discovered recently? Um, okay, so walking? I, Damn it. yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> no, um, cause like, you know, I got I got a new phone, um, and I was like, oh neat, okay, uh, going through stuff, uh, and, and it, it's an iPhone. I had an iPhone before, and I I was uh, I opened up the health app because I also got. And I watch, or I mean, an Apple, whatever, you know, a watch. Because I was like, oh, this tracks steps and stuff. I realized that my phone had actually been keeping track of, of, of my movement since 2016. Oh, my God. Oh, I know. And I was like, oh, God. So that, did then you I get into Pokemon Go? Uh, maybe no, like when that came no, out? No, my my the job I had at the time uh, was a lot of walking. Uh, I, I was cleaning. And so I had to go to a lot of places and then walk through many offices. And so it would be like, oh, wow, 10,000 steps a day or 18 or even up to 18,000, like just That's cleaning. Lot, yeah. Uh, and so scrolling through, it was like, oh, wow, because uh, in March 2020, man, I sure just started sitting. Not sure why, uh, but uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, I never gone back up to those numbers, uh, so I was just like, "Wow, I used to move. I used to walk," um, because uh, I guess the reason I'm paying attention is because I'm trying to actually like, uh, try to work out, sort of move, you know, be try to be a little healthier, a little activer. Your uh, audio is all weird, David. No, so I did it. I think that's Matt doing that because I'm looking at his thing. Oh, Matt. The crunchy is that. Whatever. Yeah. yeah what, Matt, what are you doing? Matt. Like... Uh, Matt. I don't know. That keeps happening. Maybe I'm gonna mute him. <laughs> I think he might be sleeping. Oh. <laughs> what, me? Oh, oh, there he is. Yeah. Now I'm just like looking up. Uh. Ciao. Mm -hmm. just watch out, because you, your mic, your mic was making a, a crunching. A noise. shaking sound. So, yeah. Sorry yeah. about that. Mm. But yeah. yeah. Oh. I'm trying to be more active now. Like I, like literally before I came back here, I walked for like an hour. And I'm like, okay. I've been I'm trying like, to walk more as well. Like I used to do it a lot, and I kind of stopped, which was bad. Um, mm -hmm. but I've been trying to do more now. I'm actually lucky. I get to walk to work. I'm close enough that I can do that. Ooh. So one, I save a lot of money on gas, um, <laughs> which is nice. Um. But also, I get exercise, which is also nice. Um, That's really nice. I'm regularly active. But I'm still not averaging day. more than like seven or eight thousand steps a day. I should be doing better. Um, yeah, you I should. Know. I know for I'm... me, I'm like. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. You first. I don't know. I was just gonna say because um, since I work like at a desk at my own at my own house, I'm not like going out too much, and I'm like, okay, I need to be more active and. Um, I've been walking more, I've been doing a lot of like at home stuff, like workouts and everything, and it's it's been going well. I'm actually pretty proud of myself that I've been consistent for this long now. <laughs> Cause every time I That's start awesome. I stop. <laughs> it's commitment's hard. Yeah. Like doing something and unless if you can make something a routine, continuing to do something is mm -hmm. is really hard. And even then, if you don't, if even if you do make it a, UT, a routine, if you just like take a break, for whatever reason, getting back into that habit can be really, really difficult. It, man, I if there's one thing I wish that I learned earlier, it was like commitment and like, yeah, that's what all the girls said to me. Um, sorry, I'm I'm busy roasting myself. Uh, uh, I just I wish that I had learned to persevere through something instead of stopping because it got too hard. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Anyway, no. can we? Uh, can I give up on the race? This is too hard. I can't win. <laughs> no. I get it. That was a good okay, joke, Ted. That... No, it wasn't. Don't lie to me. You're in Terry Dactyland. That's pretty good for three. For I mean, okay. I have just gotten over 50% of what I've needed to do in the game. And Steven, how many jiggies do you have? I will check as soon as I'm done being flushed by the toilet. Gross. <laughs> That's not happening in the game. That's happening in real life. Let's see. I'm at 75. <laughs> yeah, Steven's a full 25% ahead, <laughs> ahead of me. Hmm. <laughs> You said you did make it to Terry Dacula. <laughs> which is pretty good. Listen, I can just complain just that Steven <laughs> cheated because he, um, I don't know, um... He's a the, rat bastard! I'm playing the N64 version, which is slower, right? Yeah. On the mm. Switch. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, but you see, even though Steven has been an extreme gentleman, uh, redid the stream layout so I could do the Xbox version and has given me every single handicap and uh, concession known to mankind in order to make this race even the tiniest bit competitive. Um, I'm still going to say he's a cheater because um, I'm a bad sport. That's fair. I can get behind that. I probably cheated somewhere. somewhere. Just because you said so. Uh huh. Uh, Somewhere during these four hours, you just cheated. Okay, and that's my monster mansion done. What I should have done is, um, I should have tried to do. There's a glitch on the N64 version where, um, if you have a completed save file and you, um, start a cutscene, the cutscene in Glitter Gulch Mine, oh, the where moment. the, um, where the UFO starts to um like go through that one cave and then come out on the other side if you start that reset the game um it like loads that a cutscene supposed to be there when you come back into that world um and then you go into the um into like the boss rush mode and you um start the final boss there the game will then warp you to the final boss because it thinks that that's the next cutscene that's supposed to play. Huh. Like, uh, uh, like the Link to the Past glitch kind of thing? I'm not super familiar with Link to the Past glitches, but it could be something like that. Um, There's one where basically you press a button and somewhere in like the first dungeon where once you press a button or a combination or so at a specific wall, the game immediately takes you to the, where you get the Triforce in the end of the game. Yeah, it might be somewhat something like that. It has to do with, like, the game knows that there's supposed to be a cutscene at that point, but it doesn't know which cutscene yeah. it's supposed to be, so you trick the game into thinking it's the the final cutscene. Yeah, like um, it's, it's stored the... I think it's, like, uh, the it's stored, like, the loading memory that it's, like, okay, like, there's supposed to be something loading here to like for, like, the next cutscene. The Link to the Past thing, it's more so everything's kind of on the same map like all the dungeons are on the same map so you can just clip into like the wall and like just kind of sc scroll all the way up to like where you get the triforce at that point For, if i remember correctly i could be completely wrong i could be just like saying i know like, that other like, zelda but, games yeah. make it so that all the cutscenes are on the same map i think zelda one and zelda oh, no, it's not a cutscene though it's like you just glitch through like the wall and you just walk I might have said cutscene instead of dungeon because I'm bad at talking. Um, I'm also bad at talking, so it's okay. Oh, same. <laughs> same hat. Hey. <laughs> okay, Steven, I need your, your rebuttal for this. You say Banjo-Kazooie is a better game than Banjo-Tooie. However, in Banjo-Tooie, you can be a dinosaur. Mm, well, I'm a pumpkin right now, so I don't know about that. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Foiled again. That yeah, pumpkin could easily kill a dinosaur, so I don't know. I mean, a T-Rex can't digest a pumpkin because it's a carnivore, so that makes sense. Not with that attitude, it won't. If it tries hard enough. Second cheetah 
What does Cheeto do in Banjo Kazooie 1? I never got far enough to like. He ups your arsenal. He just doubles whatever stock of items you have, which is honestly kind of helpful in Kazooie, considering how much more each of the wings get used. Yes. Yeah, oh, so, so we all double the eggs and double the wings. Okay. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Same as Tui. Like, uh, yeah. Well, he, he can he unlocks other stuff in Tui. Like if you get enough pages, you can like get infinite fall damage um, and eventually like infinite health um, and some other stuff. I think. But the most, the best ones are definitely the infinite, um, the double wings and double um, no, eggs. Because definitely the best one is the jukebox being repaired. Hey oh. man, if you repair the jukebox and go and listen to the music, Jolly like Jolly's got drip, man. All right, yeah. like he dances <laughs> when uh, he dances when you play the music, and he's got some drip. Oh yeah, I've seen him dance. <laughs> I owned both of these games in my childhood, so I used to play them a lot. I remember Banjo Tooie was the first game I ever beat all, um, all the way uh, as a kid. Like, even before Pokemon and whatnot, um, I beat Banjo Tooie. And I did it at like 6 30 in the morning uh, in the middle of the summer. Um, so I woke up both of my parents, and they were extremely annoyed at me that I did that. They were like, Thank you, honey, let me go back to bed. Um, <laughs> that's great honey now go to sleep <laughs> yeah ba bas basically so like i had woke. Well, yeah um uh, we, we got ourselves uh a new donation Ooh, uh, nice. 11 dollars 11 dollars and four cents from damned girl seven great response on big mouth matt to show that love it or hate it i love people's reactions to it i have mixed emotions on it myself it's gross but i like the themes about trans abortion and anxiety Thanks again. Here's another question for all. What do you think is better, Solar Opposites or American Dad? American right. Dad, hands down. Only because I haven't seen Solar Opposites yet. I can't Solar Opposites is the show made by the Rick and Morty team, right? Yeah, by I think Justin Harmon. By, no, by, by Justin Rowland specifically, yeah. Well, it's, it's the same company who makes Rick and Morty, yeah. Okay, because it has the same, it has a similar art style. Yeah, same company. Um, is, what I, is what I noticed. Yeah, American Dad is just more consistently funnier. Yes. Uh, overall. Like I said, like I said this last time, I think the only the, the best thing about Solar Opposites is the subplot that like has nothing to do with any of the other characters. I've not watched either show. I've seen the American Dad speed run. <laughs> I love that one. Run category. <laughs> my favorite um my favorite joke from Solar Opposites is when they come back from a commercial break and they say they say something to the to the extent of uh, for those of you who have the the pricier version of Hulu, you didn't you didn't have a commercial break at all. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ruin it's, the it's joke, but that's essentially the joke where they say, "And now we're back to our story." But for those of you who have the expensive version of Hulu, you didn't you didn't have to wait at all, or something like that. I forget. Yeah, like, you don't really see a lot of like comedy, like uh, uh, streaming service comedies do that. Like pretty much. Just yeah. There's a joke from Jimmy Neutron that does something That's similar. It was uh, where screaming. it's just like, wow, Jimmy, you you just screamed for four and a half minutes, which is like the length of commercials on Nickelodeon. That's funny. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, seen, I've seen those jokes. Like, like, there's lots of like uh, commercial jokes all the time. I just meant like streaming service jo like Like jokes about like uh, jokes about ad breaks on streaming service shows. Like you never really see a lot of those. Mm hmm. Like be like, like baby, if I oh, the, like this is where the commercial break would be if we. If wanted. I had one. <laughs> oh wait, wrong, wrong, wrong meme. Sorry. The cave, the cavemen. Is Fairly Odd Parents still on TV? No, like, well, there, there, there's the live action show on Paramount Plus and also on Nickelodeon. But yeah. Right. Wait, they're it. still making new episodes of the live action show. Yeah, I think. Well, no, well, no, they released like ten episodes that they aired all on Paramount Plus, and then like that's the first season. We don't know if there's gonna be more, but I, from what I've seen, they're it's pretty bad. Yeah, but I think the actual cartoon is canceled. Or... Yeah, no, that, that ended a while ago. Yeah. Right. Okay, because it, I thought it was like SpongeBob, where it would keep on going until we all died. Like, yeah, no. I mean, I mean like, technically the live action show is a sequel, so it basically continued. So, 
and I think yeah, yeah. It basically is a continue. Like it's still back. It's it's like it's technically like the next because it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And now they just reached like the worst step they could go. The most un the uh, the most unrealistic thing about the live action show is that Timmy Turner somehow got into Yale. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's like one Yale character trait. On, I'm like, like, what? <laughs> his one consistent character trait is he's a stupid motherfucker. <laughs> but somehow got to Yale. <laughs> he must have wished it, right? Uh... <laughs> That's the only way I can think of. Not even in his wildest dreams. Like the the only the only cool thing about the series is that uh, Colossal's Rocky, who played Crocker in the show, plays live action Crocker. Like that that's cool. That's clever. Oh, that's okay, nice. That's nice. Yeah, remember, everything everything remember, else is just kind of a mess. I remember a similar gag done in the Uncharted movie. Actually, at one point they come up across a tw at one point like halfway through yeah. the movie, they wash up on the beach. And no, and Nathan Drake's voice actor Nolan North is it makes a cameo appearance on the beach, like, "Hey, you guys, gotta be careful out there," or something like that. Oh, I missed it. So, like, I watched, I quote unquote watched that recently, and by by quote unquote, I mean like it was in the background. I would just, I just did other things. <laughs> we meant uh, to watch it. <laughs> yeah, sadly, uh, Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris isn't here to talk about it, but like a big meme. That like, especially on the FTCR Discord, they're just going nuts about the fact because there's a whole sequence where Mark Wahlberg fights in a Papa John's. <laughs> in the so, in the uh, Uncharted the movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then just so that's just Papa. been a whole gag in the FTCR Discord. Is that it's it's the Papa John's. It's the Mark Marky Mark fights in a Papa John's movie. You see, that's just really funny to me because I I just love when advertising in movies is like really blatant like that. The biggest example I can think of is Man of Steel, where um, they fight in a Sears, um, and then there's a point where they're talking to somebody, and he's, like, visibly drinking a big gulp from 7-Eleven, and they, like, stay on that shot way too long, so you can definitely see that it's a big gulp from 7-Eleven. Please buy our products. And... A, r a really silly one is because uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 has like the 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 moment where where the like the 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 Dairy Queen like the obvious Dairy Queen gets destroyed, mm -hmm. and then and then in What If they bring the Dairy Queen back, and Wait, it's what? like what, <laughs> like like for like a gag where it's like because in like one of like the What If episode where uh, Peter Quill like what didn't become Star Lord and it shows like where Peter Quill and he's working at that Dairy Queen. And it's such a weird, like, thing to call back to. I still need to watch, um, What If. I I have not watched a single one of the Marvel shows. Um, what If is fun, and What If's also an easy one because it's, they're all, like, individual stories. So it's like, you don't have to worry about, oh, you need to watch, like, this whole series in order. It's like, it's it's nine, like, 20-minute episodes. So it's a much easier, and every episode is a different story. So it's Yeah, I could do that in, like, an episode. afternoon. Oh, and since someone mentioned uh, the Olive Garden in the Sonic movies. Right, that's a good one. Oh, the the last live-action Power Rangers, the uh, Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme, yes. <laughs> pivotal plot point, apparently. Wait, that's a pivotal plot point in Power Rangers, that they go to Krispy Kreme? Apparently, like, yeah, I didn't watch it, but I was told, like, oh, yeah, Rita Repulsa has to do a thing, and she constantly is like, oh, here I am at the Krispy Kreme. I am doing things in the Krispy Kreme. I will defeat like it. Apparently, it is a plot point, not just you see it. Yeah, the, the, I, I forget. I forget exactly what it is. But I think there's like there's something in the Krispy Kreme. <laughs> I thought that Rita Repulsa yeah, yeah, was dead. Her gold monster is under the Krispy Kreme. Ah, yes. Right, the gold monster who's not really Goldar, is it? Ah, uh, mm. I didn't watch it. I could, I just couldn't look because you know Power Rangers very specific. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought that oh. Rita Repulsa was dead, though, like in the Power Rangers lore. Oh, well, in the the last movie is like a reboot in alternate universe. So, oh, are you talking about the the American live action movie that like was awful? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, in in Power Ranger lore, Rita Repulsa, like, if I remember, it, it, at the end of In Space, there's that Zordon wave, and she doesn't die; she just Wait turns good, right? So, Wait, he did just do a wave and turn her good the entire time, and they didn't. Well, the wave do that? was. He didn't. It, the wave is him, uh, like, oh, I'm about to die. It's him sacrificing himself. Spoilers, Shit. like Zordon dies. 
and so it's his last sort of gift to the universe he's like i i can't stop the thing that's happening to me so then the the in space red ranger breaks the tube open and this wave comes out and it uh disintegrates uh most of the villains uh that you've seen thus far except for rita zed and what's her face the one from turbo divatox that's her name i know who you're talking about the name slips me or... yeah yeah divatox and and the three of them just turn good so zed gets skin which probably alleviates a lot of the anger he's had over the millennia um no, because zed makes a return in a later series and he is hardcore badass in that series i forget which one of, i forget the same series it was though where he comes back in oh. where basically he has a three roll strip from him so he ends up being like this but not this really like focused killer for the for the guys he's working for oh wait who was zed. I, I oh zed yeah uh right because i i haven't watched a lot of the new stuff because i know there's like in one of the series they Damn they introduced like zed and rita's kid for like an episode or two or something and then there's like Oh, right. Somebody mentioned that Rita is the good witch in Power Rangers Mystic Force, which I, I think I had, uh, right. Justin Mon said that. And I feel like I heard that and had, had forgotten. Um, so, Dino Fury. Is that in Dino? Oh, see, see, I, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, new Ranger stuff where I'm just like, I haven't, I have not read this. I don't know what's going on anymore. Power Rangers Dino Fury, the Here Necromancer. Oh, yes. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Right. It's it's weird because, like, he turned good, but then I guess something happened in between. So. Who knows? Uh, since, since I haven't watched Dino Fury, I cannot comment on what happened. But, Rangers yeah. is a bit before my time. Uh, by the time I was old enough to watch it, it was like 2000 and 1999, 2000. And by that point, it was kind of not like, I mean, it was still going. Power Rangers had new seasons up through the 2010s. Um, yeah, but like it just wasn't really what I wanted to watch. I mean, you could anyway watch it right I mean, now. Uh, I mean, I could, but then I'd have even less of a chance of winning this race. So, you know, there's like, damn it, there's like pros and cons to the situation. Right. So you have, uh, right, in 99, uh, that, that was uh, Lost Galaxy started. So. Was that a good like... one or not a good one? Um, it's all right. Uh, I, I think I sort of, I sort of drifted off because... Uh, okay, so growing up, I was super into Mighty Morphin. I was also into Zeo. Turbo, I kind of drifted away. Ah. It, in space, I caught a couple episodes at the time. And then I was like, oh, they actually ended the story that they've been telling this whole time. Uh, Lost Galaxy, then, is, is like sort of the first of each season is its own thing. You know, taking the cues from the, the Super Sentai, like where each season is a different cast. Uh, a different set of rangers. So Lost Galaxy is like the first one where it is just straight up a new set of rangers as opposed to, hey, some rangers have left and others have come and their costumes might have changed, costumes might have changed, but it's still like the same thing. Um, then after that was Lightspeed Rescue, which introduced the first American ranger, the Titanium Ranger, who was not in the Japanese footage, which is neat until you realize the show avoids using that ranger a lot. <laughs> because there's specifically no footage of him. Uh, but, like, my favorite one is probably, like, uh, uh, was was Time Force. Uh, that was that was the next one in 2001. That's probably my favorite. Not, like, because at that point, I'm a teenager, so I, I'm not like, oh, I'm a kid, anything is, is okay. Uh, I was I was a teen, and, and this... I don't know. I was playing Sonic Adventure 2 and watching Power Rangers Time Force, so that's that's what I was doing in 2001. <sighs> I forgot that bounces yes. you back. You've been bounced! I've been bounced, David. Yes. Ninja Storm scene. I have little Ninja Storm 
figures, like tiny ones that were set, set, sat on a shelf. Um, and I guess Wild Force in between, that, that had Forever Red, which I enjoyed. And it was also neat because, hey, it was written by uh, a fan who used to post on Usenet. And uh, in the process, uh, when they were writing Forever Red, there's a line or two of dialogue that incorporates a fanfic that they wrote before they started actually working on the franchise. Which oh, I think is awesome. Yes, that is that is the dream of, of every fan who becomes pro, right? Like, let's just canonize my fan fiction, my head canon. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Just yeah. Like Dave Filoni method. Well, right. Yes, the, the, the Power Rangers. Power Rangers are cool. And, oh hell yeah! And, yeah. 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 And. The... Hmm? Oh, go on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was just gonna say, like, um, the one time I watched it was when I was in Dominican Republic with my family, and I was like, for some reason, I like it in Spanish, but not in English. I'm like, okay, this is boring. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh. I mean, I guess that makes sense, you know, like, maybe, um, like, the actors were more enthused in the Spanish dub, you know? Maybe, yeah. Although, yeah. a Spanish dub of an American version of a Japanese show is just weird. <laughs> to think about because, there, because um that was like the only thing i really like, like there was like two things i watched it was power rangers and spongebob and i watched i watched that whenever i was uh, visiting my family and um <laughs> and just for some reason i just could not watch power rangers in english when i, when I went back home i don't know why <laughs> <laughs> i tried to but for some reason just would not click to me <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make that fan in time, so I'm just going to get notes first and do Jiggy second. I'll redo the fan, I don't care. I'm talking to chat. <laughs> Are you in in uh, Rusty Bucket Bay? Yes, sir. Oh, God. Why did I agree to this? Because you overestimated your ability and you thought Tui was much smaller than you think. No, I'm gonna blame Steven. It's his fault. Okay. I, I think it's because you you were hoping that racing one and two, that the universe would would come together and gift you the the true third banjo game. <laughs> one plus two does equal three if my math checks out. So right. you know. like waiting for the stream like the two videos to shrink and move off to the side and then suddenly boom here it is the world premiere you know we can get we can get g g off can deny uh you know that guy g off g off uh dorito man you know i know who you're talking about too <laughs> yes uh it's jeff jeff, jeff keely right? jeff yeah, jeff jeff or g off keely i think is the i like g off keely kira knightley <laughs> kira knightley's gonna announce banjo three oh right going now <laughs> yeah we should worked. get the and then we'll we'll have a fancy Charity Room World Premiere logo. Whoosh, you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I'm excited. I thought you were I, supposed to reveal that until you, you guys hit fifteen thousand. Oh right, <laughs> guys. <laughs> you know, I'm that just thinking. The, that was a surprise. They haven't made a banjo game, even though they've owned banjo for close to twenty years at this point. Um. Oh my god, Rare's owned Banjo for 20 years. Oh, that's depressing. Um, they do they have? hate oh Rare? I mean, they bought Rare, like what, 2002? Oh my yes. god. Hi. Yeah, the so... Um, I'm just imagining they finally announced the Banjo game. The internet goes wild, but then nobody buys it because it's a 3D platformer on Xbox 360 and it doesn't match the marketplace at all. No, nobody buys it because they're too busy staving off heat death from climate collapse. Well, I mean, also, that probably I, I, also I, I, has I, something I, I, to do with time, it. I think Microsoft has learned, I mean, like, nowadays, it feels like that Microsoft doesn't really care exactly about game sales, like, especially on Xbox. It's more so about, uh, street, it's more so about a uh, Game Pass and PC. Yeah, subscriptions. Like, that's, that's what they're putting everything into, so that's why I think... I I I, th I I think it wouldn't be a like a sales problem now nowadays like they wouldn't care about that it's more so just oh we just don't care about platformers you know and it's also, just... yeah and also yes like Catherine says I want Viva Pinata first 
Like, so, no, you've had them. It's been only 15 years since I've even pinata game. We've been waiting way longer for Banjo. <laughs> Get in line. Well, Nuts and Bolts and Trouble in Paradise came out like almost the exact same like month. Double the rare. Yeah, but when did the ban when did the Viva Pinata TV show stop airing? Oh, 2009, God. I think. Exactly. Gotcha. Get in your lane. <laughs> One year after. Well, I mean, technically, well, no, no. Uh, Banjo was in uh, Sonic and All Stars Race and Transform, and that was in like 2010. So... Yeah, but so was Danica Patrick. They'll let anybody into that. No, she was in Transformed. Uh, Banjo was in the first. Uh... So was Wreck It Ralph. They'll let anybody into that. Anyway, the point is. Um... Like, you know what, that's actually, so one thing I want to bring up is that Microsoft has actually, in history, like, been fairly, like, open to trying to get genres that they're not known for onto their, onto their system. Like, one of the biggest examples is JRPGs. Um, Microsoft notoriously, did notoriously poorly in Japan in the 360 generation. But they, like, it can't be said for lack of trying, you know, because they, like, got game after game to try to be exclusive or at least early on Xbox 360 for JRPGs, mm -hmm. and it just, none of it worked. <laughs> uh, like, I know that they, they've also been, like, kind of been, like, buddy-buddy with, like, Nintendo recently as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if they if they were to do... Like a proper Banjo three, like I wouldn't be surprised if they would let Nintendo have it on this, like on their platform as well. I'd say platform because I doubt it would be anytime soon. So that's why I'm like I'm not saying Switch. <laughs> um. I, you know, I'm just I'm thinking about that. Would they do that? Like they have with um, there's an, another game that they just oh Cuphead. Had, yeah, Cuphead, they've been having that go around, um, I think, was it Tunic? No, what is it? What, there's a game that, like, that was on Xbox that is being ported over to other places, but I can't remember the name. I'm gonna search it, because that was bothering me. <laughs> Banjo 3 on Switch. Is it Ori? Let me see. Oh yeah, Ori is also on is also on other platforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm gonna search this. I feel like there's another one. Yeah, it's, su yeah, it's Super Lucky Tales. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, but Lucky Tale doesn't have the same, like... I don't want to say brand power, because honestly, Banjo isn't that strong of a brand in the traditional brand sense, but, like, I don't know. But it's still a game that was, like, exclusively Xbox that is coming to Switch. That is also fair. Um, how many Jiggies do I have left? It was, oh, it was an Oculus game first, so, oops. Then I lied, I'm sorry. God, only five Gs, I'm terrible at video games um huh. uh you know what screw it i'm oh, desperate man. enough to go to grunty's industries why not let's go are you busting out a game genie are you plugging it in well sadly i can't there's no game genie slot on my on this stupid new hardware wow <laughs> Yeah, the Are game you... genie like died out when everybody realized it was just a glorified hex editor. Ah, uh, but it was the best hex editor because uh, it it was the late eighties, early nineties, and nobody knew better. Time to break out the action replay, boys. Yes. Uh, that sounded yeah. like that sounded shark dirtier shark. than it should have. So you know that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't intending on that. <laughs> oh. Man, Grunty's Industries is like this level is pain in the ass. It is, but it's frustrating because in in many ways it's the most interestingly designed level in the game. 
but it's it like is really cool. Nah, for me, that, for me, that was Hellfire Peaks. Like that area. Yeah, but like Grunkies Industries has the most interesting ideas. Like for example, mm -hmm. they lock the front door, which is like okay, that makes sense. Grunty runs the place. No bears allowed. Um, so you have to go in through the train. Like that's clever. Um, and they made an effort to make it feel like a real place. So like instead of like the typical factory level where there's like saw blades and um, death robots everywhere, it's like there's a packing floor, there's a uh, production floor, there's a waste management floor, there's a storage floor. Um, like they make an effort to try to make it feel like a real building, um, yeah. which is really cool. It's just um, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think, like, Pterodactyland and Grunty's Industries are definitely the two levels where I'm just like, ah, please, I don't I don't want to continue. <laughs> like, yeah. I can do Pterodactyland. It just takes a while for me to, like, keep my bearing straight, but Grunty Industries is one I never look forward to on revisits. Man, none of the levels in Kazooie make me feel that way. No, bu uh, Bubble Gloop Swamp and uh, Clanker's Cavern, I, I don't like either of those levels at all. Clanker's Cavern um, ain't that bad. I, I don't like it. Like, there's just a lot of parts that I just don't think are very fun. Uh, for example, um, like trying to get Clanker from out of the water, for example. Like, I find that whole thing to be fiddly and not super intuitive. Um, and this is an issue with Kazooie in general, but the game doesn't have memory. So if you ever have to go back into a level for whatever reason, you have to redo everything again. So I, like, I, I, yeah, everyone agrees on that. No, yeah. no, 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 you don't have to, you don't have to get Clanker onto the water multiple times. You don't have to shit in the pot multiple times. You can't, you can't shit in the pot multiple times in that. No, if you, yeah. if you die or if you go back to the level, you have to get Clanker out of the water again. No, you don't. I never had to do that. Yeah, you do. I'm pretty damn sure Chat, do. chat, back me up here, chat. The last time I played Banjo Kazooie, I had save states, so I don't remember. <laughs> you played a baby game with save states? The Nintendo, it was built in the into the Nintendo Switch, man. It, it wasn't cheating. <laughs> Matt's laying down near away from his microphone, but yeah, it looks like the chat's back at me on this one, Ted. It's no, they're wrong. I'm right. No, you're not. I'm right. No, I'm right because I I'm right because I say I'm right, and then eventually, history will validate me. So ah, the dad. Dad. If you say you're right long enough, eventually people will just believe you, or they'll get so tired of arguing with you that they'll just give up and let it be the uh, believed as the truth. Zero saying in the N64 versions, at least everything resets upon leaving or dying. Well, who said that? What's that? The Ryan Malice defense? Fuck. I'm gonna stay purposefully quiet about uh, <laughs> in regards to that <laughs> comment. That's a problem. Oh, that fuck. <laughs> Listen, facts and logic are your friends, unless if they disprove my current opinion, in which case, fuck them. Oh. How how hard is that to 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 it's understand? Most, logic is one of the most bastardized things nerds have ever screwed up with. I swear to God. Man, the lightning in this game. I mean, granted, it's like old as hell, but for the N64, it's so cool. It's very good. Yeah. Banjo 1, though, I, I do want to say that Banjo 1 is also a really good looking game for the time. Mm -hmm. Like, Absolutely. it's not necessarily as technically impressive as Tui, but it definitely has a much brighter color palette. And um, even I will agree, more memorable level themes. They may be a little bit more. They're generic. Like, they're a little bit more generic, but they're certainly a little. Because of that, they're certainly more memorable. And they it's not like they're all like stock there's bits to them that make them that make them memorable like for treasure trove cove it's not just the beach level 
it's the beach level where the shark will freaking kill you and so on and so forth. For me, that's Click Clock Wood with its four uh, season gimmick. The Mad Monster Mansion just being an overall great level. Gobi's Valley with the, with, the, with the pyramid puzzles. Honestly, the only level I don't like redoing whenever I replay Banjo-Kazooie is Rusty Bucket Bay, and that's because of that fucking engine room. That's the only thing I hate about Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, that's Tui, why... On hand, few, Tui, on the other hand, has a few places, a few jiggies that I really hate redoing anything involving Canary Mary, despite knowing the trick. And some of the more goofier-ass puzzles, but that's, again, few far in between. That's why you gotta do that engine room first. Um, so we just got, um, we just broke 11k. Yo! Oh, yo! yo. Bam, 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 bam. Let's and what... see. Oh, uh, here, let yeah. me see. There's two donations that came in. Uh, $5 from Blue Dino. Don't have much to say, but props to you guys for contri contributing to such a great cost. Also, I don't believe the game counts it, but does Smoothies need to do bottles puzzles for true 100%? Oh, there's a bottle. Ooh. It's... What do you get for bottles puzzles? There are, I think you get like additional cheat codes to put in it, to slam into the uh, floor at uh, the sandcastle. Those are just for cheats though. Yeah, but there's still also puzzles needing to be done for 100%. I don't think that's true. I mean, you have been getting, you have been going to Cheeto. Yeah, you I, Cheeto. Yeah, as an extra. And guess what? Bottles also gives you extras. So. Sure. But I'm... <laughs> extra's not a part of 100%. Extra is extra. Yeah, that'd be like 102% or something. Yeah. And then, the, and then the other donation is $610 from Anonymous. What? Jinjo! Jinjo! Wow, I think we got like the suspiciously wealthy party to give us that one. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Not a Did you say the suspiciously wealthy <laughs> party? <laughs> Yeah, like, uh, Johnny noticed it. Johnny pointed out this phenomenon once before. It's like, whenever he hosts, like, one of those Sonic, when we did, like, the Sonic charity streams, there was always this one dude who would donate, like, well over, like, 600 or or 1000 or $1,500 or something like that, and he wouldn't refund them. Like, he was legit with those donations, but it's like, wow, this guy is really shelling out the money for the Sonic stuff. I think he's a furry. He's suspiciously wealthy about it. We're not going to look to get towards the mouth for charity, but there's... Not a lot of people showing out that much money for Sonic. Uh, Son Sonic. Uh, Matt sounds like he's in the other room right now. A little bit. A little yeah, bit. Matt, yeah. you sound very distant. I'm right in front of my microphone. <laughs> no, are you, you use Are you, you sure you're using the right microphone? Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm using the uh, arc. Wait, hang on. Let me see <laughs> yeah, the microphone's also scratching about a lot too. How about that? Yeah, there we go. There, there you, you are. Go. <laughs> Fuck! I think it's not picking up my um. It's not picking on my Wave 3, it's picking on my Arctis. Alright, whatever. Alright. Well, that could, that could explain many things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. I just gotta fucking deal with this thing. I'll have to deal with this thing a bit later. I'm not worried about it at the moment. So, uh, right, so you're playing Banjo 1 That's and right, 2. David. Wow! But, why, why aren't you playing Super Punch-Out? On the Super Nintendo. Hmm. Oh, Good with question. its secret multiplayer mode that nobody knew about? Right! But uh, I didn't realize someone found what today? <laughs> Is it today or yesterday? Um, today. Uh, they found it out today. They found it today. Uh, there's a there's a secret a secret cheat a secret cheat code where you can do two player super punch out. Oh. Uh, Who knew? First time I'm hearing about that. We yeah. got we got ourselves another uh, two hundred dollar donation. Yo! Oh, oh nice! Oh. Yeah. Okay. This time, this time from Daniel Rizotsko. Had work today, so unfortunately I missed watching my favorite Brain Scratch member Ted Xand Bacon Weezen getting cooked for a good cause in The Sims. <laughs> oh well, some other time. Matt, it's nice having you on these marathons. Best of luck in the race, Ted, and keep up the good work, everyone. Thank you. Who died Thank first in The Sims? Uh, Arrow. Arrow. I I missed. Fuck. Well, I just got my headset. Uh, what what was that race about? I missed it completely. Oh, oh it was just lighting us on fire because it's funny. I, oh I shit! Really? With the Grim Reaper. Oh got nice. The Grim Reaper on his I, fucking yeah, tablet. Sabrina got. Yeah, Sabrina <laughs> friends with the Grim Reaper. 
Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like Elliot, they just went on fire, and then I started. To... <laughs> so I started to talk to the <laughs> maker. <laughs> You guys ever get into... Alright, here's a weird tangent of a topic. You guys ever get into scented candles? Into scented candles? Yeah, like... I like I just, them. I li I've literally just started, like, lighting them up again this past weekend, and I'm fucking loving it at night when I'm, like, watching something on, on the laptop. Like, yes, I have combined the past and the present together. I know that scented candle reviews have been a uh, scarily accurate... A predictor for COVID outbreaks because people will one star scented candle reviews and say, Hey man, this shit, you can't smell it. Um, but that's because they, they have COVID um, oh, and can't smell as opposed to anything regarding the actual like candle itself. I know there was like that whole COVID 15 where you're like, Oh, I gained 15 pounds because of COVID, but like, I think that legitimately it might have happened to me because my taste is so significantly worse that now I just crave things that have a shit ton of flavor, which are usually bad for you. Yeah. From my case, like, when I had it, like, my taste buds went away completely, so as a result of it, I got real lazy with my cooking at one point, to the point where it was like, I'm just doing peanut butter and jelly and soup just to nourish myself rather than actually enjoy anything I could cook. I feel like I got really lucky because I I got it uh, about like seven or eight months ago and um, I didn't really deal with many symptoms, so. Oh, I had the fucking COVID carnival. Basically, day one was aches and pains all over the body as well as nausea. Day two was the shits and cramps in my legs. Day three was when I lost a sense of taste. It got better for me by day six. I also got COVID toe. Which was honestly, I think, the worst symptom, where my toe looked like I, uh, my toe got like a giant blister on it. No, am I, <laughs> dude? It was disgusting, and I had to yeah, get a pop. Yeah, I I literally could not walk on that foot while it was there, so I was like, "Fuck it, pop." Mm. It was gross. Yeah, it really, Shh. it was really awful. He's sleeping. No, I'm Baby not. He is sleeping. <laughs> Like, oh shit, that me. joke doesn't work. You got my footage is several seconds behind. Damn it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thankfully sorry, for me, um like right, I did not lose it. my I did not lose my sense of smell or taste. Um thankfully I, I was on a uh, on Paxlovid, thankfully, so that really helped me <laughs> with my symptoms and I I recovered pretty quick. I think like I just had like a lingering cough for like a few weeks, but like it kinda just went away and I, and I didn't even notice when it went away. <laughs> But like I, rem I remember I went back to work and since I'm talking on the phone and I would say like very long things I'll like I'll be talking for like a, a good like 20 seconds like in the beginning of the call and I remember I would say all these things and then I had to catch my breath afterwards and like okay yeah um, I <laughs> definitely my lungs need to <laughs> get better again <laughs> I don't usually play this game this slow it's just that I'm trying to win the race, so I don't want to fuck up. Bruh, I think you're gonna totally I'm literally at 40 jiggies. You're fine. You're you're good. I'm um, not taking any chances. I still have eight notes to get. Oh, just hmm. eight. Where are they? Oh, I know where they are. They're up your ass. Oh. <laughs> the notes were the notes were the friends you made along the way. Uh, Blow it out your ass. All the notes look the same. Shouldn't they all be different? Musical cheats theory. So, whatever. I don't know what I'm doing anymore. Are you okay, David? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm doing good. I'm having a good time. You sound like somebody who's not actually not having a good time and really <laughs> needs one heartfelt call from a friend before he eats a gun. Oh. Jesus. I see. Starkiller926 saying hi. Hi. Hi, David. 
Hi, oh. David. Hello. Hello. Hi, Kaiba. Hi. It's me, John David. <laughs> now I'm about, to, I'm about to do a flip. Watch oh. this. I love doing flips. Do one now. Flip. Do a flip. Do a flip. I can't oh. believe you have to use Kazooie as a plunger, and she doesn't complain about it. I think she's just like done complaining at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Kazooie's oh, uh... well, movement. Well, that's just for a quilt, uh, a, a Cheeto page. This was a waste of time. Uh. Cause it was a bad bitch. She'll do anything. She don't care. <laughs> See, playing this game, it, racing this game's weird for me because I only ever try to hundred percent this game. So I, I got the same problem with Final Fantasy IX. Like, I'm never gonna get Excalibur two because I really enjoy playing Final Fantasy IX. So my die dumbass no, just no, keeps no, like no, 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 side no. tracks. Go up. Go up. That, 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 that was me with Spyro, is that is like I'm so used to 100%ing it, so being like, oh, I can just skip a couple things, or once it got to the end, and be like, oh, I can just rush through it and not worry about collecting everything in the final world. You say that, but you beat Catherine anyway. Although it, it was pretty close. Like, maybe like yeah. about a couple minutes, where she was a couple minutes behind me. Okay, phew, that's all notes and Rusty Bucket Bay. Oh, now you can now you can play. Oh no! Now, now I really, really now I really stand no chance. Oh god! This means I can relax. I know for me, uh, like for when I was playing Xenoblade uh, Chronicles Definitive Edition, I was doing all of the quests. <laughs> and um, now that I'm playing Xenoblade Three, I'm trying to do all the quests. And now I'm like. I'm over, I'm over 50 hours into the game. I'm only in chapter 5. <laughs> I'm close to 60 hours in that game, and I'm, still, I'm only in chapter 5. I remember Kevin said it was shorter than the other games, though. Is it only 3? Yeah. I don't. I have no clue. I, I, I don't know how long it is. Kevin? Yeah, Kevin. Well, Kevin also apparently 100% of the first game in like 70 hours or something like that. Which yeah. sounds like not possible so you know it's um possible um he see i remember i was there he was saying that um because i remember him saying that one isn't as long as people say it was but i don't remember him saying that about three because i don't think he beat three yet i just don't think so maybe i'm misremembering i don't know yeah because i think he was talking about one because i was also in the same call oh okay but um the one you can no no you can oh, beat pretty well they like, can like 70 hours doesn't sound off that's what i've been doing with this one long ass chain quest since you all started banjo this just one what <laughs> it's only three <laughs> linky i'm i'm scared <laughs> don't tell me this is it in chapter five <laughs> Do I need to prepare myself? <laughs> Is Banjo so boring that we're gonna talk about a different game? <laughs> We've been talking about uh, a we different game the whole goddamn playthrough. Yes, yeah, like seriously, dude. Like this is like the box standard for any like BSC or SGB playthrough. Right. There's always five to seven. I mean, it all ties together, right? You know, like when we were so so Banjo Kazooie uh, is in uh, Super Smash Bros dot ultimate along with many other games including uh mario bayonetta uh ryu from streets so it all it all it's all one interconnected gaming uh, gaming jubilee you mean it even has claude stiff from final fantasy 7 <laughs> that's right Final Fantasy number seven, which of course is the seventh most Final Fantasy. Why, in that game, you can walk and swing a big sword. And it was a popular, it was a, also a popular hit, hit online for Bill Clinton. Uh, what you, oh, I am the Final Fantasy seven. You know, <laughs> there's a baseball bat in Final Fantasy 7, which canonically means that baseball exists as a sport in the world of Final Fantasy 7. Yep, the nail uh, bat. 
Yeah, uh, but they, they never bring it up, which means, like, this know, is an important continuity matter that has not been settled. You know what else they brought up that they never... You know what else is also in Final Fantasy VII that they never bring up? Scotland and Korea. Scotland. Oh, do they bring up Korean barbecue at some point? And, nope, they just... You know, yes, they bring up Korean barbecue when you're dining out in the... um. At the uh, diner in Sector 5, where Walmart it is, you can eat the Korean barbecue food there in a land with no Korea. And in the f extended universe, uh, Reeve, or Ketchy, begins a Scottish or Welsh accent in a land with no Scotland. Uh, well, do they specifically say it's a Scottish accent, or is it just sound like it? Oh, the dude's talking a wee. The dude is talking a harder Scottish accent if I ever heard one in my life. Yeah, but it could just be like the an accent, accent, an accent that exists in the world that sounds like our Scottish accent. Yeah. Like they right. don't there's, say the word Scottish. There's nobody else in the game with that accent. It's all his, all Scottish. Or right. Right. Well, it's, you know, it's like Star Wars, where you know so many yeah. members of the Empire yeah, are have Asian accent. accents for some reason. Right, like all sorts of accents running around. Um, some of them, uh, more more okay than others. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, man, it's fine. I swear. Uh, no, it's not. But okay. It. it but in Star Wars, <laughs> it's just. Just gotta look past all the all the bad stuff, and then you're fine. Mm -hmm. How much of the bad stuff are we talking here? Are we talking look past the bad stuff, ignore the small bumps in the road, and enjoy the whole picture bad, or starring Urza Miller bad? <laughs> oh, heck. Is Urza Miller in, in a Star Wars thing? No. No, just Urza no. Miller's just going... I don't know what they're doing right He's... now, but they're just... Urza Miller is like he's just using it as an example of just oh bad person going crazy rather than like probably probably what David's saying is being like oh a flawed project, right? Uh, no, yeah, I'm saying, talking about no, bad I, people doing. No, right. I mean, Urza Miller is like you really are. You really can't look away for what the fuck this is happening right now. No way. When I'm mm -hmm. when that example, because Urza Miller is like a criminal game of Mad Libs. You have. No idea what the fuck's gonna happen as soon as you see him trending on Twitter. Oh my god, <laughs> the the split up pads say guh and Bree on them. You just saw that? Well, yeah, because I usually play this game on N64 with its blurry ass N64 that, textures. You can see that on the N64 too. Not if you're, no, I wasn't paying attention in there. It's harder <laughs> to see. You can't see if sure. you're not paying attention. So Ted's that, got I mean. There. Yeah, but it's also a lot harder to see. I did know that the Mumbo ones said Ikumbokum, even on N64, but I never looked at the um, at the Banjo and Kazooie ones. I forget, is there also a penis in this level? Well, I it's Pterodactyl Land. Yeah, I know in Pterodactyl Land, but it's in, it's in a couple levels. There's penises in a couple levels. There, um, uh, I only know that one. Uh, there might be more penises. You know, there's always more penises if you if you try hard enough. But um... uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. OK, yeah, sorry. I, I wasn't even thinking about that one. But yeah, that is also an in you in you window in you window. More like in your endo. Uh, I'm clever. <laughs> Stefan, you can't just ask that. But maybe <laughs> <laughs> unless. Oh no, Lisa's dead, and she'll never return, unless... Dad, I'm still alive. Oh, thank God, you're alive, unless... Oh, I forgot that you, you have to get a battery for this room, too, yeah. So, oh. yeah, so in this room, you have to knock down a mumbo pad to put Mumbo's pad in here and you also have to get a battery to open the door so that you can go to Mumbo so that you can turn this magnet off so that you can turn into a washing machine in a time limit and press the button. This unlocks the door to the boss which you have to beat which will turn off the fan which lets you get a random jiggy in the basement. Oh. That's fuck, fuck, pretty good. Oh, fuck, pretty fuck, good. fuck. Oh man, I died. 
Oh no. Oh no. But at least you, all your, you, but you have things. You gotta get them all again. No, I don't. No, he got all the. He yeah, got all the, the notes yeah, already. At least. Yeah, but so, I did. You know. I was. I was so close to having a deathless run. Of of Rusty Bucket Bay. Of the whole that game. That would have been pretty. Of the whole game. Yeah, of the whole game. Once. Oh damn. Oh okay. That's the first death. Well, I right, feel like right, Rusty Bucket Bay is pretty right. much the. Pr that's really the only like hard like place that it's like it's really easy to die in. The rest of the game you can go without dying pretty easily. Yeah. Which is the main reason why I hate Rusty Bucket Bay. Yeah. Wait, hold on. I don't need to be here anymore. I Justin, just, one. Like, I already showed you guys Sexy Gruntilda when I saved. Oh, so sexy. I don't so, need to be here anymore. That, that, that grunty... Uh, Catherine, it, yeah, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a death. It was if you pause and leave the game, that, ca that they show you the game over. So the only way you can save in this game is if you save and quit. Um, and the save and quit forces you to watch a cutscene, and in the cutscene it says game over, even though it is not a game over. Not a game. And That's then you... like a remnant of old arcade days where yes. like even if you beat right. the game, it would say game over, which I guess makes sense because you beat the game. So it is technically over. But like we also kind of associate that with losing. So I don't know. Yes. Right. So I, I've, I've always I've always loved like the design of like of the whole Isle of Hags and how it's like, oh, you're following the Hag one. Like the tracks all over. Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts really about this game too. What are you doing? Also, the music is underrated. Um, I know that Banjo Kazooie has the more memorable soundtrack, but um, uh, I I love Banjo Tooie's music so much. Um, yes, Hailfire Peaks. Hmm. Yeah, I literally just unlocked the two uh, moves that are in Hailfire Peaks and was like, wait, I don't have to be here any longer. And so I left. Did Dr. Seuss start the unless meme? I guess, technically. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jack, Mr. Patches is indeed a bop, as the kids say. There goes that conversation. <laughs> That's okay. Did Just he start this? Yes. It. Okay. <laughs> Fuck! Oh, the camera fucked up as soon as it went past uh, past the fan blade. Oh no. <sighs> okay, those the jiggies on the wall behind Jiggy Wiggy kind of look like penises. Penis. Huh. I mean, I mean, Jiggy Wiggy kind of sounds like. The name of a penis? No, it doesn't. Uh, I don't know. I just, I've just have have had the song "Getting Jiggy with It" stuck in Getting my head. No, 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 no. Which I'm sure is such an obvious thing to state, but it just, yeah. God, someone in chat writes "Jizzy Wizzy." <laughs> Jizzy Wizzy. Jizzy Wizzy had a bear. Wait, no. Wait, okay, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a Jizzy Wizzy was a bear. Jizzy Wizzy had no hair. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop this immediately. <laughs> oh, oh, oh look! Oh wait, look! I found something in my hand. It's a new donation. Whoa! Thank it's God. Ten dollars uh, from Chef Kilo. He says, "Hey guys, I'm at work right now, so I don't have the stream open, but still wanted to donate and leave a question for when I watch the playback. This run got me thinking." Is there a game where you always go for 100%? For me, it's usually Me Mega Man X or Toy Story 2. Have fun, y'all. Uh, uh, this one. <laughs> every Zelda I play, Banjo. Uh... All three Spyros for me. Mm, yeah, Spyro. When um, it comes to a platformer, I try to go... it's so hard to not 100%. Right. I mean, on Country 2, I'm always 100%ing that every run. Oh wow, that's dedication. Super Mario Galaxy. Yes, yes. Yeah, Mario Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah. Like, if we count one uh, 120 stars as 100 percenting, because I'm not like playing the game twice in a row to do, oh, do. Luigi and Mario. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I, love, I do that all the time. Luigi. Wait, do you actually do this all the time, or are you dicking with me? Okay, so how many different um, files can you have? Is it like four or five? Six, uh, I think. I think I filled them all with Luigi. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I've awesome. beaten the game. 
I think I've beaten the game that many times, but just never in a row. Like, I would always take a few months off and then go back and go do oh, the game so did I. again. Yeah. I didn't do it all in one sitting. No, 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 but no. what I mean is, like, I'd play the game as Mario, be done, go back to it later, do that same file as Luigi, be done, go back, start a new file as Mario, be done. Yeah, so do I. Rather. Okay, so then... But I did right. it six times. Steven, Sick. do you want a banjo... Do you want a... Um, Fuck. Um, do you want a Mario Galaxy race <laughs> again? Oh, <laughs> fucking God. Oh, no. after dark here, ladies Yo. and gentlemen. <laughs> I'll join in on the Galaxy race. <laughs> Another Galaxy... <laughs> Another Galaxy 100% race. Yeah, I'll play hey, one, you play there? two. We'll see who 100%s it first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, are, are we... Is 100% counting the green stars? Because if you count the green... The, like, if you don't count the green stars, then I think you could, like, make a thing of that you could beat Galaxy 2 100% before 1 100%. Oh, I think easily. Not. Easily, you can 100% 2 before 1. Oh, uh, Ka you Catherine can... and I heard that, too. <laughs> hey, yep. Ted, do you want to yeah. fuck... <laughs> yeah, there's romance. Romance is, is is starting here. Um is it a bad romance? Ooh. No, oh. listen, no. Oh. All right. Listen, stop. Okay. I heard enough Lady Gaga in high school to never want to hear her ever again. She's a very talented singer, very talented lady, but I yeah. I respectfully never want to hear her voice for the rest of my life. Well, I guess you're never going to watch Joker 2. Uh, yeah, not gonna, not planning on it. I have not watched Joker 1 either. Um, because extremely, like, cold take, I don't like the Joker as a villain. I, I don't think he's that good or interesting of a villain. Uh, oh. I like him. But, you mean, wait, you mean, like, all Jokers ever? Yeah, I'm not a not a huge fan personally. Do, like, like I, oh, I'm fuck, not talking like. Okay. Oh, I'm so mad. So like, you 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 mean like Mark Hamill Joker? No, not well. I also don't really like Batman. All you that mean much either. like? Ah. Uh. <laughs> David can't David take it. David's like, no, this well, can't be. <laughs> well, clear, but but Batman is it's one of the. The best, the best superheroes ever created. Like, like it, it's Superman and then Batman. One and two. That's what. You, that's the order. Uh, nah, it's like Captain America and then like I don't know, maybe like Spider Man. Spider Man. Yeah. Uh, uh, look, but, but Superman was the first. And the well, he kind of wasn't actually. Like, uh, uh, he... Yeah, Shazam was the first. No, There's also the the thought that like Hercules is the original superhero. Right. You you can you can get into argument like oh, what exactly constitutes a superhero because there are plenty of super beings in stories prior to Superman. But I mean, it, if, you're, if you're talking about in the context of like, well, definitely like comic. Well, I mean, I guess you can get even weird. Like I think because technically, like what what's his name, Doctor Occult. Who was also created by Siegel and Schuster started before Superman, right? Am I am I remembering that correctly? That and sounds like, about right. But like, do you count him as a superhero? Which I mean, he technically could. He, sh uh, yeah, like yes, he was 1935, while Superman's 1938. Uh, you get into some funny stuff. Look, look, I I, I know, I know, but. Superman's cool. Uh, oh, no, I like Superman. I think Superman is actually... It's weird to call him an underrated character because he's freaking Superman. But right. um, I feel like a lot of the time people don't treat Superman with respect, I guess is the thing. Like, oh, he's not cool because he's a goody two-shoes. And it's like, that's not... Superman is a much harder character to write than a character like Batman. Yes. Which is why yeah. there are much fewer good Superman movies than there are good sure. Batman movies. Uh, so, yeah. I, yeah. 
and it's also it's why writing Batman. Superman like he's Batman didn't work in Man of Steel. But you know that's a that's a different argument altogether. And it, yeah, Man, Man of Steel has some interesting choices that I don't. You Man know. Ted, you can do it. God, do it. Fan PTSD here. Ted, though, the area you're in is like right now, it basically ends up being copied almost exactly in Conquer. Like, Wait, just really? The design. Yeah. What, like you going up that kind of spirally thing? Yeah, you go up that spiral. And even like the, around, the surrounding area beside the spiral is like it's almost in a very similar like design. Huh. Just you have like, a, like an, an outside circle that you got to walk around. It's like, it's the. It, 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 it's it's in it's in the dung beetle area where you gotta roll the crap up the up the hill. The spiral, yeah. Yeah. I think they can do it twice. Now that you're saying that, because there's the windmill with the you have to brute uh push the barrel up. <laughs> yeah, that too. So they do it twice. Ah, man! <laughs> Sorry. Ted, you have a chance. No, I don't. <laughs> don't give me. Don't do this. Don't give me hope. Don't do this. Don't you can do it. Hope. I fucking saved myself and then fell a second time. You can do it. Look I at this it. fat, this fat piece of shit who can't even walk back because he eats one hamburger. What, me? I mean, I... <laughs> I had two hamburgers earlier today. Where's the... Oh, here's the little piece. Okay. Would you get like that There's McDonald's meal where you get two burgers or something? No, oh, it, was, it was it was homemade uh, burgers. Two burgers. They end up being better these days than the fucking McDonald's things. A burger Boy, with the side of a burger. Oh, oh man! Oh, Nick said, "Stephen, give me the controller quick." Yeah, Nick likes to backseat game me. He likes to do it on streams too. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Did anybody in chat see where the the freaking asshole kid is? The one who you have to beat up and do child violence to. Which game is this one? Uh, in Banjo Tui, the three Boggies, three kids. Oh, um, it's they, randomized each they're, file, they're, so I don't know. Really. There's each, each file has a different place for them usually. Like yeah, file, they can, they're always in the same place in file one, but they're in a different place in file two, different place in file three. I think they're randomized each time. I need to take a break. Oh. No, 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 they're not randomized each place. They're, they're each assigned a different slot depending upon what file you're playing. Like, if you play in a file one, they're always going to be in A, B, and C. If you play in file three, they're going to be in different places, but they'll always be in those three places in file C. Ted, if you want to keep playing, you can. I'm going to take just a little break because I can't focus. I don't need your pity, but I'm going to take it. Okay, you're going to break as well? Uh, No, I'm going to keep playing. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, because I I don't feel like I need one, and I want I I love this game, so I'm gonna keep playing it. All right. Um, uh, playing 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 banjo. Playing playing playing. Where the is he? Where is band that little piece Joe, of shit? More like band Joe. Yeah, because Kevin's gone. So Joe, Joe, who's its face from Family Joe Guy? Joe Mama. Yeah, he is. Joe Swanson? Is that it? No? Yeah. yeah. Joe, Joe Swanson. That sounds like a brand of hamburgers. From the guy. Yes. Joe Swanson Burgers. Cook it on a grill. Cook it on a pan. Sizzle it up. Give it to your gram. Uh, I don't... Movies paused because he needs to take a break, but uh, Ted's just going to keep going. That's why. That's what he's doing. Uh, and I stand no chance at this point. I did do the do the wrong warp. Do the wrong warp. I, I think they patched it out of uh, Xbox. Did they? Because um, you have to reset the console for it to work. Um, mm -hmm. What's the what, what warp? The wrong warp where um, the UFO from like Glitter Gulch. Uh, you start that up and you reset the console, and then you. Go into like the cutscene view in the. Um, Where in is the menu. this little piece of shit? And it, and it kind of tricks the game into thinking that you're at the final boss. Oh, I didn't realize. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, it's 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 a lot. It's how the any percent speedrun works for Banjo Tooie. Um, 
Where? Like, really, I'm not. I don't. I don't know like the specific like tech details of explaining it, but that's essentially how it works. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, oh, is he in the Dodgem game? Oh, hold on. Uh, that's like the Ted. only game left I've, I haven't checked. Yeah. Ted, if if we if we ever do uh, an in person event, we one of the things we have to do is a four player Banjo Tui multiplayer. Oh, Yo, oh. there he is. Okay. Okay, hold on. Let's, how should we uh, do child violence? Uh, I feel like exploding him with a grenade is the funniest way for him to for him to to face violence. Do the grenade. There we go. <laughs> hold on, I'll see you in a moment. Why do you keep missing? Because <laughs> I'm bad at video games, Sabrina. There you go. <laughs> Don't worry, so am I. Sabrina, what events do you have left in the marathon? Um, I'm doing a hat in time with Caro, two players, one controller. Um, I'm controlling the the left side where where the control stick is, and Carol's handling the right side where all the buttons are. <laughs> I'd rather have the control stick, honestly, because then I'd feel like I have control or heard it or like as opposed to the buttons where I feel like having to press the jump button without the control stick would feel weird. Mm -hmm. I think I also changed the hats as well. <laughs> I think I have the, I think I controlled like the hat ability if I remember correctly. Yeah, I do. Cause I remember when we practiced, um, we were doing one of like the platform, <laughs> the platforming levels, like the secret mission. And um, I was trying to like destroy a box with like the what is the hat the the witch hat one that I can't remember the name of. Uh, Look at all this child violence condoned in this game. Oh, you, you know, it, it's they're it's the mole. It's fine because <laughs> let's Ruined. yeah ah. Uh, I think we've all had enough excitement today. That's true. Uh, I've had enough excitement for one day. I just want to sit back. Sip a mimosa. Man, does anyone have any mimosas that I can sell? No, I, I have some Jaeger. Ooh. I can't drink tonight. I'm not in the mood. Uh, I have. Uh, actually, I don't know if I have vodka. My I'll be gone. There's there's beer, but it's technically not mine. Although I I it was said I could have some, but I didn't, and that was a while ago. So who knows what that means anymore? Ah, alcohol is like far away. You have to drive to a store and purchase it. Mm. So much effort. <laughs> just purchase. Just purchase. I, I know one place where I can get my alcohol delivered. Ooh. Because, like, uh, Pennsylvania delivery. is really, uh, really strict with their alcohol laws, but there's one place where I can get it delivered. Hmm. But wait, if wait. you're in New York, you can just get it delivered on DoorDash. <laughs> wait, where 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 are you? Where is it? Uh, I'm in Pennsylvania. Right? I'm, I'm... Oh, I'm sorry. I, there's a uh, pretty strict there. Yeah. I've been, I've been in there and gone, where's the booze? And they said, sorry. Yeah, like, it's really weird coming from, like, like, moving from New York to Philadelphia. Because mm. in New York, like, I can go to a CVS and buy alcohol. <laughs> but then over here, it's like, oh, I gotta actually, actually find a liquor store. <laughs> right. I forget. So, it's, is that a place where, like, beer is in one store and then liquor's in another? Like you can't have both in one, or is that uh, a different state? I I honestly it might be a different. I think because I think I've seen beer in liquor stores before. Okay, but can yeah. you have like food in a liquor store, like chips and stuff? Uh, not that I remember. It's been a while since I've been to <laughs> been okay. to one. I've, I've been <laughs> because of COVID. I've been kind of getting them delivered to me. <laughs> right, right. No, that, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Because in Michigan, I, I was very used to like, oh, hey, 
liquor stores are generally going to be open until two, just like the bar. And you, you go to a liquor store, it's a party store. So it's like, yeah, there's beer and there's liquor, but there's also chips and snacks and random stuff. Like it's, it's everything. Yeah. Uh, very convenient. And then in other places, it's like, no, you're not allowed to even have like beef jerky sitting next to this beer or else you'll get fined. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like uh, uh, New Orleans where you, you can just, I guess, drink forever all the time. Uh, I, I, I went there once, uh, you know, went to the, the, the what street, you know, the, the famous street where they do the the one street. Mardi Gras. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, the street with the Mardi Gras. <laughs> Uh, and it's just beads. like, oh, yeah, with the beads and you throw the beads and you're like, whoa, what just happened? I wasn't there during that. I was just there. But still, like at any point in time, it was, oh, yeah, you, you, you know, you can you can buy uh, a drink in one in one bar and then you can walk it to another bar and they don't care. Bourbon Street. Yes, that is what it is. Thank you. Oh, it's thing. literally called Bourbon Street. It is right. I was <laughs> tip of my tongue. I was like, huh, OK. Yeah, so like, very open, very free. Like, we're we talking about New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like New Orleans is yeah. a urban street. Yes, so it because that was uh, that was wild, you know, just just being able to buy a drink someplace and then walk to another, still have that same drink, then get a different drink. Uh, they had a lot of frozen margaritas. I I had a lot of, I drank a lot when I was there, probably a bit too much. And then and then had crystals, and that was a bad idea because uh, I got very sick eating eating crystals. Uh, well, they're made of rock, so you know we're not. <laughs> yes. Uh... Um, I know. I have a travel tip for people who go to New Orleans. You can see the entire thing in one day, so don't don't dedicate like a shit ton of time to go see the city. You can see the whole thing in one, maybe two days. It's very small. Yeah, but they got the beignets. <laughs> well, yeah, right. You so you gotta spend like, like five days. Just, yeah. Five days eating beignets. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, five days of beignets. Get it going. <laughs> uh, I forget how many days I was there. I went for a wedding, so I was like, I had to go, and then because they also had the the bachelor slash bachelorette party the day before or like yeah i think it was the day before the wedding might have been two days before i don't remember uh so a lot of walking around still drinking um very 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 there was there was very large drinks there was there was one drink that was as tall as a small person so it was shorter than a tall person um i don't think it was designed for one person to drink and that's why it had many straws uh, but there was a lot of wandering. At some point, you forget what you're doing there. The... <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we get it. You drank booze once. <laughs> I've been I've been live for since three p.m. So. Oh yeah! Wow, that's that's right. I've been uh, right here. Everybody, with give Steven a hug and also donations. That's I'll right. give the hug, but I'll give the donation on Friday. Right. <laughs> yeah, Friday. I've been saving. I normally donate once or twice by now, but I'm saving all my money because I have a feeling I'm going to lose like 200 or more Pikmin during the Pikmin Marathon. Love you, uh, Nick. You are doing Pikmin. <laughs> oh, man. Right. If somebody somebody donates uh, right now, I'll give, I'll give Steven a kiss. <laughs> wow. Yep. Wow. Wow. Does she wanna, oh. wanna hear that? Tee. <laughs> oh heck. You're gonna make Nick jealous. I might. I, I think I already am. You told me to get in line, so. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
hack. Um, uh, David. Yes. Tell me more about your New Orleans adventure. Oh, you know, the, the last time that I went was for fire. Fuck me. The last time I went for <laughs> a wedding was for a wedding as well. Oh, really? Oh. For my sister's oh, wedding. Oh, your sister. Uh, I, um, yes, I went. It was for a wedding. It was uh, a friend. Well, it, it was a friend of, of the of the girlfriend at the time. Uh, 2014. Uh, we because uh they they had met i guess in new orleans and they were like we love this city we love this town we love this place we want to get married here so we we drove from detroit to new orleans which is a pretty long drive um i i was uh not yeah, allowed to drive is... yeah that's <laughs> everyone else across the country it, yeah it is um right they uh so so we made it uh we immediately uh got food um it was some very fancy thick hamburger mm. uh we stayed at a hotel that was right next to bourbon street so we step out like walk a block boom there it is and we we walked up and down a lot there um let's see we Did you go we, in the leather store uh, the, the the leather store mm -hmm. what just a big store with a bunch of leather stuff everything's oh. leather i think it's on bourbon uh, street uh it might have been i i remember there being uh, a lot of random strip clubs i do remember um i i had met up with uh in addition to going to a wedding i met up with a friend of mine there uh who uh oh, oh no uh, yeah, I met up with a friend of mine there who who lives. He's he's from the internet, but he's not here as far as I know. Uh, and we we hung out a bit. Uh, we also went drinking. He took me to a weird Japanese bar. Like he was like, we really need to go here. It's going to be great. And and it was very it, it was fun. It was quiet. It was probably the quietest bar I went to while in in New Orleans. Um, very Japanese. Like, I say that like they want it to be like, oh yes, we are a, a Japanese-themed bar. Please drink. Anime exists. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's fine. Um, That's not why you yeah, go to so, New Orleans. No, I went to many other bars, though. Um, mm. But he, he was very, he was like, oh, you need to, hey, hey, there's, he was telling me about something, what was it called? The Pink Line? Where I guess Bourbon Street is, is very, um, uh, heterosexually driven up to a point and then it's it's not anymore and and uh i we did um i did i did go to a couple gay bars uh because the people i went it was me my girlfriend and then her best friend and his boyfriend and they definitely wanted to go to the gay bars um and i definitely saw some penises while I was there in the gay bar because it's like, oh, it's a gay bar. Oh, but they're also dancing on on the bar, but it's not a strip club. They're just dancing on the bar. And then uh, somebody, one, one of one of the friends was like, here, David, here's a dollar. Go tip that man. And I went, what? And, and I did. I walked over. And I said, here's a dollar. And he, and he looked at me and you then showed that me. <laughs> yeah. And then he here's showed me showed me his penis and i went huh that that is what that is and that that, that yeah. is indeed a penis. That, that was it that was indeed a penis so i saw that that was uh yeah you know <laughs> um i went to regular bars drank drank it was uh oh but then but then the next after so the wedding was actually in an old pharmacy like a like a 1910s pharmacy we are or even earlier because there was like a bottle of coca-cola that had cocaine in it and it's like look at that isn't that neat i'm like whoa wow can't can't sell that now and and yeah and then they also when they got married they did a little like um i don't think i've ever even a little seen perfect. cocaine like in real life oh <laughs> Right, so there was also like a little parade thing. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, there's a little like I guess it's 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 something like if you get married in New Orleans, sometimes you can have a parade for yourself. So it's like you march out and there's a couple like uh, uh, marching band people uh, and with the horns and they're and they're doing very exciting. I'm sure like you you have to pay for that. It just it doesn't just happen. Uh, <laughs> and so so I, I did I did. What the uh, fuck? I'm missing in... one. Whoever's in chat, uh, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Chimbus, oh, okay. Chimbus okay. noticed that I'm missing one. You're what? missing what? A jiggy from Rusty Bucket Bay. I don't know which one it is. Uh oh. Did you get the one underneath the uh, ship? Yep. The one inside the propeller? Yep. I just got that one. Gingers? Gingers, mm. gingers. Did I get all the gingers? I didn't get the gingers. Okay, that one's easy. Who said gingers? Sabrina? Yeah, it was me. Thank you. Oh, sorry, David. What were you talking about? Uh. Oh, right. Uh. Oh yes. Uh. Com Comic fan wrote right. It's called Second Line. That's what. That's what it is. That's what. That's what the little parade thing is. Where it's like, oh, there's the bride and the groom, and all the guests. And then some of the some of the old old marching band type people, and that and did that. That was fun. Got drunk again. Man, right. A lot of, oh, but then but then we had a normal day where we just walked around the city, and it is very, like you said, very quick to do. And the last thing we did before before we left was get beignets because I was like, I really want these, and we never actually went towards them until the end. Oh. What is Stop. a beignet exactly? It's a little, little, little powdered donut-y thing, but I mean they're not like don't they're not like circle donuts. They're the little big good like. Are they like filled with like chocolate or something? No. Uh, uh, they, no. So a donut is a uh, a square piece of some type of donut-y type bread, but it's square and it puffs up really big and they coat it in covered sh uh, uh, powdered sugar and it's one of the best yeah. things you'll ever eat, especially if you go to Cafe Du Monde. They've been there for. Uh, decades and it's a great cafe you should go there at least once if you go to uh new orleans yes that, that is where we went that is the place cafe du monde oh, yeah. it's right there in the french quarter I remember where's yeah, so we the were... last egg i don't know Ow. Well, that's enough time spent in this world. I'm never going to find it. Okay. That's a good thing about not needing to do 100% is I can just... I don't know where something is. I can say screw it and move somewhere else. Collect a different cheeky. Yeah. yeah. Why'd I do that? I've got like 46 now. So just you wait, S -S Steven. I'm... You know um, what? Like, I mean, the the last level I have to do takes like an hour, and then after that, there's still like an hour. Well, yeah, sadly to say, I sadly to say, I can't wait around for that because I got work tomorrow. You guys have a safe night, all right? All right. Good night, mm -hmm. Matt. Good night. Peace out, guys. Later. As soon as I can stream, I'm gonna stay Is Clock Wood really that long? I mean, you got to play the level four times. I mean, true. That's, uh... Yeah, Click Clock Wood's definitely the longest one. Wow. Have you played Banjo-Kazooie, David? Uh... Not really. Oh, do you not like it? Oh, no, I, I, it's not that I don't like it. I just haven't really sat down to play it. Oh, you're missing out. Uh... It's uh, I guess it's on a, it's on a list of games that I should play, um, and then never get around to it. So. I'm glad that you're honest with yourself enough to say, I'm gonna put it on this list of things that I know I should play, but I'm not gonna bother because <laughs> I know that I've got other things I'd rather be doing. Uh, oh, you know, there there are definitely games where I'm like, I I should play this, I need to play this, and then I n I never have. Um, 
you know, like like earlier it, during during the feud when there was the question about oh yeah, Metal Metal Gear Solid characters, I was like oh no because that's that's a series that's like oh on the list of things that I should play. Let me get around to it, and haven't. So I don't, you know, I don't know much about about the Metal Gear and and the bosses and all the snakes. There's multiple snakes, yeah. and. And, and then there's the one Kojima didn't make, where where Senator gets big and punches you in the face, you know. Yeah, but like Final Fantasy is definitely one of those series for me. Um, I'm just starting. Like, I am playing through Final Fantasy IX, and I have been enjoying myself. But I I, I finally got to <laughs> sit down and actually start playing a Final Fantasy game. <laughs> I actually don't like Nine all that much, which I know is like a sacrilegious opinion for some people. But like, and maybe it's because I played the original version and not the remake. But uh, loading times for battles literally take like thirty seconds. So um, every time you get into a battle, I like opened my phone and started looking at my phone, and I realized. I have other things I could be doing with my life. Um, yeah, like, I think, if I remember, because it has been a little bit since I've touched 9 because of Xenoblade. But, um, oops. But, um, yeah, like, yeah. I remember the startup for the battle will take a little bit longer. Yeah, that I can't play two RPGs at once. It's not possible. Yeah, like, I was, like, I already knew, like, okay... I know I'm not going to be finishing nine before Xenoblade comes out, so I'll continue as far as I can, and then when it comes out, um, I'll just put that on hold. <laughs> um, and then I feel bad because I just got <laughs> I just got a Mori as well, and I'm like I can't wait to play this in a few months <laughs> when I'm done with Xenoblade. <laughs> but then there's also Final Fantasy Nine that I have to get back to. <laughs> So yeah, um, I feel bad for both Amori and Final Fantasy IX in my backlog right now. <laughs> oh, you're doing the. I'm Lord. doing your call. I'm on. I'm in uh, Hailfire Peaks. So I'm playing the kickball mini game. That would be what's a beat soon play three before Soul Hackers 2. That was a naive dream. How oh, when far do, apart were they? When does I forget when Soul Hackers 2 comes out. It's it's not like super close, but it's also not far it's before the end of the year for sure. Um The end of this month. Um Oh, the end of April? The end of August? Oh, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's a shame because the game Do you does work. Look cool. <laughs> yeah, like I've also like I'm trying to read too. I've got all these games I haven't played. Um, I don't know if I'm in the mood for an RPG right now, honestly. To be perfectly honest, uh, and if I am, I think I kind I kind of want to replay an RPG I've already played. Like I kind of want to play Dragon Quest Four again. I kind of want to play. Um, Paper Mario again. Um, I, I actually started my replay of Paper Mario when I got my um, the N64 controller for the Switch. Um, I what is it that, up. by the way? The N64 it's, controller. It's pretty good. Um, I enjoy it. Um, it feels like an N64 controller. <laughs> um, is the control stick just as stiff? Um, actually, let me get it. Because it's actually been a while. Ugh. Damn, I went the wrong way. I mean, not really. Like, it does have, like, some resistance. Is the, like, top as hard? Or is it, like, got the softer stuff that they started using with the GameCube controller? Um... It's been a while since I've held the original N64 controller, so please excuse me. For, like, not remembering. I mean, like... It feels smooth. 
So I think it might be just like the GameCube controller, but I'm sorry if I sound far, but like. <laughs> In the kickball um, AI is way more aggressive in this version than I remember the original being. Yeah, in, in my and Temple, they're pretty aggressive. No, I just did an own goal. Oh, I, I yeah, there's no no chance. Okay. Come with the hole in one. Oh, yeah, like someone got they was like complaining to me on on Twitter because um. I got two N64 controllers, one for me and one for Elliot. And uh, they were saying, like, you're the reason why, like, I can't get an N64 controller because the people are buying more than one. It's not fair. Like, it, and I'm like, it's it, the second one's not for me. <laughs> you bought two. You didn't buy 20. Um... Yeah, like, it's like, uh, the second one's not for me. And then I also helped- I also helped Spider get one, too! I was so tempted to, like, reply to that guy with that third controller! <laughs> it's like, hey, look! <laughs> like, did you get yours yet? <laughs> How much is Thousand Year Door going for now? It's expensive, last time I checked, still. Yeah. Um Mr. David, are you there? Oh, he must have stepped out. Sabrina, can you look up Thousand Year Door? Yeah, I can search that up. Went the right way, didn't Last it? Last time I was I looked, it was Shit. like a hundred dollars at least. Um, no! Sorry. It's one of the many GameCube games that desperately needs a um a port? a port or re-release or something um because oh, shit. it's too freaking expensive yeah they're um, like in the 90s in the 90s yeah oh what yeah, the? why is why really... is someone selling it for 390 what's in here um so crack it's cocaine sealed. Oh, okay it's sealed that's how much is uh for... how much is disc only Probably still a lot, honestly. The manual, like, doesn't, uh, like... I feel like the collector aspect of Someone's GameCube games these days is more... is not as high, and it's more people just want to play the game. And so the game themselves is still expensive. It's someone selling a disc only for 75 Yeah. All right, only 20 more to 21 more to go. Let's do it. Shout out to Chuga Commerce LP back then for making me get the game same. Literally, um, I think at the end of his Let's Play, he even says like, oh, like, you can get it used for $12 at GameStop. And I actually did get it used at GameStop for like 12 for $15. So Wait. thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurts me. Um, I had a similar feeling right before um, Dragon Quest, right after Dragon Quest XI came out. Um, I had bought all the DS Dragon Quest games for like uh, 15 bucks each. Uh, they're now like 70 to 80 dollars each, um, if not more. I think Dragon Quest VI is like 100 bucks on DS because it got the shortest print run. Um, and it just hurts me because it's, it's all artificial nonsense. Uh, Bit Nerd Games is rating with a party of 37. Yo! Ooh. Hey! Thank Derek. you, Derek. Thank we you. We love you. Ted, why are we here today? Uh, because I hate myself. Uh, we're here today <laughs> because um, we're raising money for the Diabetes Research Institute. They do lots of great work um, finding cures and treatments for cancer. And uh, we... Are, are dead. Yeah, we're trying to. We're doing this banjo race <laughs> you as sound one so of dead. our challenges. <laughs> I am a little dead. It's almost one in the morning. Um, no, it's a, no, it's, it's twelve. That's almost one in the morning. No, it's it's an hour until one in the morning. <laughs> that's yeah. Minutes. That's almost one in the morning. It's not almost <laughs> one in the morning. <laughs> yeah, it is compared to like ten or six. You know. 
Uh, you know, get, uh, who, who, who's winning? Uh, technically, Steven. Not technically, definitely, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, I had no chance from the start because I'm playing Banjo Tui any percent, and uh, Steven is doing Banjo Kazooie 100 percent. Um, but uh, turns out Banjo Tui is a longer game than Banjo Kazooie, and Steven's just about. Are you in Click Lock Wood, or are you just about to start Click Lock Wood? Wait, Ted, did you say cancer? Just about to start. Not diabetes. Um, I'm pretty sure he said diabetes. I thought I, he said diabetes too. I don't remember him saying. Listen, I, it wouldn't be the first time I've said the wrong. I've said the wrong thing. Uh, so. Ted's also very tired. Yeah. Yeah. We, we do have a, a five dollar donation from uh, Cookie Monster again. Me love cookies. Do you? Yes, I do love yes. cookies, Cookie Monster. Thank you for your donation. A reminder that uh, once once uh, they're done, when they're done the stream, will be the closing off the daily raffle, which is that cute banjo and kazooie plushie, just for five. I want dollars. one. Yes, we'll also... I actually own it and I love it. It's. We'll also be closing off the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy bid war for whichever game Ryan and Caddy will be playing first thing uh, once we restart uh, the stream on Friday. Uh, Crash 3 still has its ginormous lead, so unless I want to put in like another uh, $1,000, uh, that's go doable. That. If everybody in the chat vote uh, donates $10 right now, you can swap, swap which game. Also, if we raise fifteen thousand dollars before Steven gets to uh before Steven gets to uh, <laughs> the, uh the grunt game, then they'll keep going until uh, Ted one hundred percent and that means Steven will have to one hundred percent the whole game again. Or if I beat him, I'll give him mercy and let him stop. I guess, because we extend the the idea was we extend the race, right? Yeah, I would do yeah. the same for you, Ted. <laughs> Okay, so I think you. I missed this when I when I was going on my walk. What's what's the thing? So we made a joke about um, how Steven could pro. I made a, a crack about how Steven could probably one hundred percent the game twice by the time it would the one hundred percent Kazooie twice in the time it would take me to hundred percent Tui once, and then we were made a joke like, "Oh, we should do that." Um, so yeah, so apparently now we're we're going with it because um we routinely make bad decisions on the stream. Um we did also get another donation, uh six dollars and three cents from Damned Girl Seven. I couldn't resist another question. I've asked this before, but not with any of you. What are your favorite Pokemon and uh and experiments from the Lilo and Stitch series? And uh if Sabrina, if you've seen The Simpsons, what's your favorite episode? I've never watched The Simpsons, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, but my favorite Pokemon definitely has to be Eevee, because I'm a basic bitch. <laughs> Nothing wrong with and, that. Yeah, some people just say, like, oh, of course it's Eevee. It's like, I'm like yeah, I like Eevee. <laughs> Leave me alone. Um, um, favorite experiment from Lilo and Stitch. I haven't watched the TV show in so long. The only other one I wrote, the only other experiments I remember are the one that ate the peanut butter sandwiches and the one that was Stitch but pink and Angel. like a girl. <laughs> it was like, it was like, okay, we've got Stitch who's an actual like character design. And then we're going to make girl Stitch who is Stitch but has boobs. You know, like <laughs> yo, Stitch with boobies, hell yeah! Yeah, I, do think, Angel. I think it's funny how, uh, like, how much uh, they've they've uh, merchandised Angel, especially because she is bare. She's only in like two episodes of the series because, like, oh, it's girl Stitch. Of course, that's marketable. Yeah. But I, I just think it's funny. And like, uh, you're thinking of Experiment Six Two Five, also known as Ruben, by the end of the series. Also known as Rob Paul, it's Rob Paulson just doing Rob Paulson. Yeah. <laughs> Is that just like his normal speaking voice? I mean, pretty much, yeah. It's it's his yeah, it's his Yakko voice. It's his uh uh my uh, uh Donatello voice. It's just it's it's the same voice that he always uses, but it's always fun hearing it. Okay. Yeah, I I always love. I was obsessed with. I mean, Lilo and Stitch just in general. I was completely obsessed with uh when I was younger. 
and that was like yeah so i, I watched the tv show still all the are. time and I was, same yeah same you yeah, still are the, Stefan. Uh, yeah i know i still am uh but yeah, because because since I really love Pokemon, finding out that oh, there's basically like a whole other series that has its own set of Pokemon, and like Stitch was already like my favorite character, pretty much my favorite character, uh, like before, like when when I first saw Lee Lone Stitch, so I was like, there's more Stitches, yes. So I just became obsessed with like seeing all of the different experiments and being like, oh, look at these cool, this cool design, look at this like other Stitch design and this other Stitch design, like it was really fun. Yeah. Uh, Steven, I don't think I know what your favorite Pokemon is. Hunter. Um, it's Hunter. Hunter? Okay. Hunter's in my top five, uh, Pokemon. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, my... I, don't, I don't know what my favorite, like, absolute favorite Pokemon is, but I have, like, it's, like, Mew, uh, Gengar, uh, Rowlet, uh, it's, like, those are, like, the, like, the, the three that always come to mind, but there's, like, a bunch more. Like, Raichu. I love Raichu. Oh, my fucking God. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, no, that, that's perfect. That, 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 yeah, those are like my favorites I can think of off the top of my head. Yeah, um, my favorite's Typhlosion, but for other favorites, um, I'm a big fan of Butterfree. Um, Haunter is another one. Dawn fan. Um, um, there's a lot of really good Pokemon uh, designs. How the hell do you do? There we go. Wonderwing. Like the one time it's necessary when you're doing 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah there we go. Alright. Um But yeah, we were talking about Pokemon a good bit earlier. Um I I hope Scarlet and Violet is good. The I feel like I don't want to be a Debbie Downer about it because I do firmly believe that like I shouldn't yuck anyone's yum and clearly there are people who are very excited. Uh but like, and I know that, like, complaining about the graphics feels a little shallow, but at the same time, it's just, I don't know, I I wish they would do better, but, you know, I can't do much about that. I came all the way to the area where you put all the pieces in for... Wait a minute. Yeah, I came all the way to where you put the pieces in for Click Clock Wood spoke to Brintilda and left but didn't oh that's right there's a switch that's why it... oh I guess I'm gonna come back here a third time <sighs> so fun fact um this uh Hailfire Peaks was a level that was mostly completed for Banjo Kazooie but they cut for time and space reasons so I feel like that might be a reason why a lot of people like it so much is because it has a design philosophy that feels a little bit more similar to the original game. Yeah, it would make sense since Gobi references it in the first game. I think there there was another level that they had designed for Banjo-Kazooie 1 that they then put into DK64, I think. That oh, Derek hated this stage. Wow, what a what a poser! I have to say, it is absolutely surreal seeing the frame rate being stable um, <laughs> in Hailfire Peaks. It feels wrong. Uh, okay, so. I also, for the answer for the Lilo and Stitch experiments, because I had to search up and like look at these again because it's been so long, uh, it's a tie between uh, Baby Fire, which is the one that <laughs> just makes everyone into babies, because I remember that episode being funny. <laughs> Because <laughs> Lilo's like, because Lilo's like all like, uh, like I wish I was the older one because she has to take care of all the baby people. Like just like the baby versions of like the adults. I'm like Jesus Christ. This That's is my nightmare. Funny. And then Clip, um, which is the one that cuts people's hair. I so, love this oh, go ahead. No, you go, Steve. It's, it's seven. I, I love the design of the bat. Uh, the the bat one. Uh, there, there, there's a there's a bat one which is basically like just Stitch's face on like a bat, and I thought that was really cute. 
Yeah. Baby fire is also just a cute experiment to look at, too. It's, it's adorable. So one thing that I realized years and years and years after watching Lilo and Stitch, uh, what's the name of the bratty girl with the glasses? Myrtle. Myrtle. Um, she's supposed to be like, like part of why she's annoying is she's like a white girl who very clearly isn't Hawaiian. So like, and I know that there's like a lot of like in Hawaii, there's like a lot of, you know, like the United States kind of stole their 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 islands and like you know that's kind of bad so like i never really realized that she was like oh probably like like rich her mom's like a rich tourist and whatnot so yeah i actually did not notice although i i think you pointed that out I, I, at least yeah because i you know she uh because i'm trying to remember yeah because they, they they do show more of her in the series and it's like her mother isn't really i mean well the whole the joke is that her mother's like actually like just just super nice and just really like kind of cheerful and helpful and it's like oh she's she oh is, right like, i forgot about that she's, yeah she's a brat mm -hmm. there's implication that she has daddy issues because her dad's just not there oh uh, yeah you want to know who's actually like the best dad in cartoons that um, needs more pre- No, I was right next to the warp point and I didn't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and is it Goofy? Um, no, people Goofy's appreciate Goofy. Um, Drew Pickles. Uh, Drew Pickles treats his daughter like a queen and nobody gives him the respect he deserves. I, um, like, he, I would say he he's the reason why Angelic is such a brat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but he loved, but he treats her so, but like, and I don't know, like. He doesn't set enough boundaries with her. She's two! Do you know a two year old who's <laughs> not a brat? Uh, I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be like three because, I mean, like, because uh, the whole yeah, thing Chucky's is that Angelica. Two. Yeah, 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 because yeah, Ange Angelica can, like, they can understand because she can, like, actually speak like like full language so the adults can understand her but like all the babies they only speak baby language so nobody can understand okay well then she's three that's she's still a child sure all right. derek derek says bluey's dad is best dad sure ted but uh like <laughs> when it comes to a person's uh personality like that mostly comes from how you're raised and how you're treated by your parents I've I've only seen a little I've only seen like a little bit of Bluey like at, at, with my uh, with my cousin because my uh, co I was at my cousin's place and it's so, like they had like for their like their like children they they had like that playing so it was in the background and I was like oh yeah it's just it's just general uh, like yeah like little kids series but I have heard seen some people online be like oh yeah it is actually like pretty it's not like like a usual where you're like oh yeah it's just like fodder children's fodder it's like oh it's it's good children's show so I'm like oh okay that that's good to hear. My nephew only watches Mickey Mo Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, so um, that's like the only children's television I've watched since like two thousand and uh, like six, when my brother was at the age to watch that kind of stuff. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is not particularly good kids show, but you know what? He likes it, so we'll. I'm not gonna judge. Well, he is also Derek, two, so... Derek said there's some episodes that legit made him cry. Oh, Yeah, it's way beyond... Yeah, so... I'm, I, I'm, I, I, cause I think it's on... I think it is on Disney+, Plus. so I'm like, I might be like, you know what, screw it, I wanna... I just wanna peep at it and see, what, see what's there. I feel like it is obvious, I feel like it's much more... It, it, from the sound of it, it does seem like it's a... It's a kid's show that, like, parents can, like, connect with in some way. It's the wire of children's shows. Oh, what? Oh. So people... Oh, God! Why do people oh. like this stage? Oh, so my God. Banjo, coming, stop. Uh, oh, Banjo, funny. no. Because uh, uh, one of my uh, one of my baby cousins, uh, like, they, they love Transformers. So, it, so it's like a thing. Like, they, they, they have a bunch of, like, Transformers toys, and they, like, showed me all that stuff. 
So like we, I, I like put on some like Transformers thing because I think it was like one of like the kids. Uh, it was like one of the Transformers. Uh, like like what like the the, the really kids uh, Transformers stuff there. And I was like, oh, like l l l let me let me show them some clips of like '80s Transformers. And they're like, no, don't do that. And I'm like, but why? They're like, no, it's bad. I'm like okay. '80s Transformers is a. I'm sorry, it's not a good show. Um, but technically, but, but it's like, I mean, like, just showing a kid who likes Transformers, it'd be like, hey, like, show you this, like, because he likes the toys, so why not, like, show him a little bit of, like, classic Transformers, but, like, no, but I guess it's because, like, oh, it's because it's too violent for him, uh, right now. No, it's because classic Transformers is a bad show, and you shouldn't watch it. I'm sorry. But you know what? You keep dying, so that's fine. I do keep dying. I'm bad at video games. Yeah, Listen, I, mean, I, just, I have I have feelings about Ronald Reagan and the uh, idea that we can just make TV something TV worse on purpose just so children will buy will buy consumerism. But, you know, that's a, a Brewhaven. I was actually showing like him like clips of the beginning of Transformers, the movie. And that was the one they're like, no, don't show him that. They're like, they're like, maybe in a year or two okay. right now. No. <laughs> That's how you summon Trav, just talk about Transformers. Does Wonder Wing work against the hands? Yeah, it does, but I'm also Banjo by myself. Um, so you can't, so, use the, yeah, you can't use the Wonder Wing? Yeah. There was a... Ow, stop. There's a move I had to get with just Banjo there, so I had to do that. Why did I become the bee? I don't need to be the Why bee did yet. I become the bee, Jesus? I should become the bee after I'm oh, done. Oh, actually, I'll start getting ginger. I'll start getting jiggies more quickly, since I've been getting most of the gingos along the way. So as I find gingos, I'll probably get more. Um, uh, Jiggies. Ted Sweep. Listen, if I somehow undeservedly win this race, I'm. No, stop! Oh, God. No! <laughs> Banjo, that's like the sixth time I've done that. Banjo, stop. <laughs> Banjo, please. Okay, um. Uh. I don't have any brain left. You had one to start with, at least. Be grateful. Oh, and uh, D uh, Derek's saying that Dragon Quest Treasures box art is great. Oh, dude, it's oh, so yeah. cool. That... I love the... I love the way, especially Toriyama's modern art looks, is just really cool. Um... <laughs> Toriyama, when, when he's making Dragon Ball, I sleep. Dra Toriyama when he's making Dragon Quest real shit. It is kind of like that. Um, I've always had the um, the thought that Toriyama you can tell when Toriyama's having more fun doing something and he's kind of just allowed to do whatever the hell he wants when he's making Dragon Quest uh, monsters, because they're just like, we need some monsters, and it's just like, okay, and so he'll draw like a zucchini with a spear, um, or other or other nonsense. So, as opposed to like trying to do like Dragon Ball or whatever, where he's almost certainly got like a, like he has to come up with a story and plan that stuff out, which if you know anything about Toriyama, is not something he's very good at doing or enjoys doing very much at all. Um, this is a man who routinely forgets which characters are in his book, the stories at any given time, and will Stop. straight up forget that certain plot lines are happening <laughs> um, at points. Uh, oh which God, I think Stop. is, I think it's, 
which I think is why he likes uh, doing uh, the, the now the two Dragon Ball Super movies because it's like, oh, he can like come up with ideas and create these designs and like, like be like, how about this happens, this happens, but he doesn't have to be the only one who comes up with a story as people helping him. And you also don't have to make a story as long as a manga or, or, um, or anime like requires, you know, like you don't have to be on another planet for a whole bunch of of seasons and come up with nonsense you know you can like just make a normal story like you can make a story as long or short as you need to in a in a movie so and, and all and also like jack mentioned he called the movie dragon ball super superhero because he caught, forgot the series was called dragon ball super <laughs> yeah bring that up too oh so he just called it dragon ball superhero and no. Yeah, and then Dragon they're like, Ball oh, it's Dragon Ball Superhero. Super, superhero. And I think it's because I think the people thought it was because since the, the story has two superhero characters in it, so they're like, oh, super superhero. It's like it's like a pun. It's like a like a pun name, like in reference to the two superheroes. And then he's like, uh, actually, no. And they're like, oh, oh, well, if you're you Toriyama. See, we just do whatever you want, even if you don't make it make any sense. You see, at the very least, he like admits this nonsense though like yeah like he a lot of um creators would be like uh yes i meant to do that i meant to do my work today like it reminds me a little bit of um the the naruto uh writer uh apparently Shimoto. from yeah apparently from what i'm told um not that great at writing women so when when it was said uh, that he was going to be taking over uh, a Boruto a lot of people were actually really scared about Sarada's character because Sarada's character has been written really well and now who's Sarada? Uh, Sasuke and uh, Sakura's kid did they okay never mind I mean granted this is the, the show where Naruto names his kid Boruto so you know like I guess I should no, I think it's it's also it's also from my experience that the anime of Baruto is so much better than the manga, so that's why it's also like just a thing of. I keep hearing the opposite, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, no, everything everything I see, like in everything I've seen and heard from like people, has been like, yeah, like the, the if if there a lot of people hate hate it in general, but if like if there is anything good in it, it's all in the anime and uh, yeah. the manga is just bad. So especially I have I've tried read a little bit of the manga and just the art is really bad. Like I'm enjoying the Boruto anime. Like I've I binged through like the entirety of Naruto like filler movies all in like less than a year <laughs> and um i started watching boruto but um i just have not had the time to do it because of work um but i have been enjoying the anime i do need to get back into it i'm at the part i'm in the filler where they travel back in time and... that, 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 that's that's literally the last part of boruto that i watched and then i stopped really? they have time travel in boruto and it's a filler arc what yeah <laughs> Um, it's like, um... Okay, sure. Yeah. You know what? It was, it was for the anniversary, so there's, like, a thing where it's, like, yeah, like, Boruto and Sasuke end up, like, going back in time while doing some training thing, and that's, like, oh, they gotta go help something during, like, the time period during, like, when Naruto was still young. Yeah, like, when he was, like, uh, going to be training with Jiraiya in a bit. Yeah, like, it was, right like... right after Sasuke left. Yeah, before the time skip stuff. I was like, I was like, uh, in a group like chatting about. We were just chatting about like stuff about manga in general, and it got to like the topic of like certain like manga endings, and I was just reminded of being like, man, like the Naruto, the manga ending, pissed me off so much because it was such an anti-climax, of like, oh, you have the final Naruto and Sasuke fight, and then two chapters, the series is over, and I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? And then it's like, go to the anime, and the anime had not only has, like, a decently chunk of episodes after that actually dealing with Aftermath, and then has the whole Naruto the Last movie. And it's like, yeah, this is the ending I was looking for, but... It's like, just... I, it's like the one thing that I'm like... Like, the one thing that I'm nervous about uh, the My Hero Academia ending is that it's gonna do, like, that thing of, the fighting is over, 
two chapters and the series is done. It's like, no, I need aftermath stuff. I need like recovery yeah. and this Me too. figuring out like, yeah, like, I don't like it when a story just like, oh, fight and fight. And then it's it. Like Demon Slayer, did that, but like Demon Slayer was, uh, it was a much more low key series. So I'm like, oh, it was more forgivable of being like, oh yeah, there wasn't really much aftermath you had to deal with. Yeah, you could have one chapter of just, okay, let's rest, let's go back home, and then have your epilogue chapter. Like, I want, like, like, Elliot Sullivan getting me the Demon Slayer manga, because uh, he meant to give me, like, the whole collection as, like, a Christmas gift, but then, uh, it was, like, sold out everywhere, so he's just been slowly buying the different manga, <laughs> manga books. Um, I need to start reading it, but I've been enjoying Demon Slayer as an anime so far, <laughs> but I can't wait to actually read it and get ahead of the anime. Yeah, uh, yeah, Olivia got the, the complete, that complete 23 volume set, so she lent it to me, so that's how I read it, and yeah, yeah. I really enjoyed it. Also, uh, and it is this, what's what's a nice uh, thing about Demon Slayer is that it is far shorter than pretty much every other manga. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's only it's only two hundred chapters, uh, so it's like it's a very quick like, especially yeah, in comparison to most other series, it's a pretty quick read. Mm -hmm. I do have all of the uh, all the Promised Neverland uh, mangas, which I still need to just take time to read because after after what was the garbage fire of the season, season two. two um i got all the manga and i'm going to be reading them <laughs> like yeah, i literally like, went on right stuff and just bought everything <laughs> the manga ending is good but not great is how i would put it um mm -hmm. like it's got issues like it's not but at least entire... be able to read the arcs that were skipped from the anime <laughs> yeah i don't know they skipped like well, it's every too. it's literally the the whole rest of the series uh, squeezed into 11 episodes yeah yeah there, there's no there's not enough because promise neverland really doesn't have any filler in it like the closest you could say is filler is like what goldie pond maybe but even then like a lot of important characters get introduced in goldie pond so like and it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's only quote unquote filler in the terms of oh, there's a big action sequence that you don't necessarily need, but there's like lots of like little yeah, characters and plot elements that happen in it. So it's like yeah, yeah it's still technically not filler, and it's like action is still good. Yeah, have. Goldie Pond's one of the better um, arcs too. Like it's probably my favorite arc outside of like the the, yeah, the, the first the, one. The which... one. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Man, Promise Neverland, I think suffers from the fact that its first season is so good that the rest of the series can't like it's not trying to be that which i appreciate because like it, it couldn't be that like like that's not what it's trying to do which is okay but it's like the first season's so good and it does such a good job at what it does that it makes, even though the other se the seasons, the other stuff, the other arcs are good for their, in their own way, they're like not, they're not trying to be that same thing, you know? Yeah, like but, basically, the, like, but yeah, promise to everyone, all, uh, the issue that it was always going to have is that the main setup of your story gets resolved in that first season. So it's like, there's still lots of story to go for, but now it's like, oh, it's not that same, it's not that same cat and mouse setup. It's like, oh, yeah. now you have to, you have to do something else, so... You're kind of stuck in a thing of like, oh, how do you do uh, everything else? I mean, I do think that they went like, it's just like you explore the kind of world that it's got to be like for this to like happen. Like what makes a world like that? And that's interesting because they make it pretty like realistic. I guess not like realistic because there's like demons, <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like the bureaucracy of it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, ultimately like there are evil people among them, but like ultimately like they just want, they just need to eat, which is like, you know, like 
Yeah, it, it, it's basically one of the. Well, it's basically one of those just like just the the the, the way the storytelling. Like it's everything else. Like pretty much everything else after that is still really good. It's just obviously like that first. It's just it's such a contained story. Like you technically could watch season one all on its own and never watch the rest of it, and you'll still be like that. that that's still a satisfying like story. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. But like like um, I think like uh, like because I'm I did like a thing of being like oh anime that I could show my parents to and like Promise Neverland is one of those. You'd be like yeah I could show like they, they could definitely get into Promise Neverland. Like the, 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 there's no an there's no hashtag anime bullshit in it. I mean there's and, some and anime BS but not in the typical kind of way. Like I feel like they like Norman. For example, like I well, feel I, like I, I, I'm, think, I'm thinking like like because they're children, no fan service or anything like that. There's no like over the nothing's really over the top. It's just it's just a played straight series. That I guess that's a good that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Like they're like what fourteen by the end of the series, so like they're I'm not gonna, old enough. I'm, yeah, actually, yeah, they're probably like that. Because they're like twelve at the the beginning, right? Yeah, uh, I think so. And 12. And yeah. So, also, uh, oh, oh, to respond to Cosmakai, you can watch season one because season one is still ex like that. That's straight up is excellent. That's using a great watch, and then read the manga after that. Like that, that's pretty much the best way to experience the series. Because yeah, because season one is a is a perfect adaptation. I mean, it's also a perfectly good read as well. So like, um, like if you just want to read the manga the whole way through, you can do that. I prefer reading manga to watching anime. Um, that's just me. I I prefer the pace of manga and how it um can I melts. I, I, I think it's like, I I like that, but then it's also like I think voice acting and music and also like especially with action sequences, like animation can greatly like improve like moments and stuff. Like getting to hear getting to hear them like played out. You see, that's that's interesting because oh yeah, also murder. Um, we just murdered. Oh yes, we're gonna kill the ice cube. Yes. <laughs> um, Tell George his dinner's in the. <laughs> so like, it's one of those things where um a lot of time like the voice you have in your head for a character when you're reading it doesn't match the um doesn't match the the voice acting in the game or in the anime, I guess, you know, like, um, or you just have an, I guess it's less so for manga and comics. Cause there already is a visual element to it, but I don't know. There's something about like just reading that I like it's faster. Like you can read a, a chapter a lot faster than you can watch in, in anime. So yeah. But then also, like, I think like a good anime can make you want to go like and read because you want to see more of the story. Like watching Spy Family made me be like, "Holy shit, this is amazing! I need to see more of this." I, yeah, but you see, I was like, "Spy Family is amazing" because I read the manga first and I was like, "Hey guys, you should you should read it. It's amazing." And everyone's like, "Nah, I sleep." And then they see it on the television and they're like, <laughs> "Oh my gosh, your forger's got the boobies. I need to watch this." <laughs> and I'm like, you could have seen her boobies way sooner if you read the manga, but nope. But also, but also there is a but the there is lots of, also is <laughs> yeah, but there is there is also like lots of like added thing like in anime like yeah because you have like the added thing of like the the voice performances and uh, like the 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 extremely fluid animation that they have and like the the ex the way the expressions are animated. It's like it adds to the comedy and the action. And it's like so there is like a good like there is a good reason behind like oh also no matter if you see it like first or second there's a good reason to check it out it's like oh it's just a really good uh interpretation yeah but okay stefan but how about this uh if you read a if you read a book you're smart and if you watch tv you're dumb uh uh if i may interject a little bit um as much as i would like to read manga i actually have a really hard time staying in like full attention with reading, <laughs> with with reading manga, because sometimes I would just like it's just really hard for me to s stay in like a that one moment of like okay, I'm I'm reading now, but then I'll get distracted. So that's why I like to watch anime. So <laughs> that's that's the whole reason why I pr why I prefer anime. I do want to read more manga because I really wish that I could just sit down and just read, but 
my attention span is just sometimes like all over the place for me to just not read manga. <laughs> For me, my attention span is equally shit for both reading and watching stuff. So it's like, it's pretty much just whatever I'm in the mood for at the time. Yeah. Like, I can do either or. It just depends on what I have available and what I want to do. And, like, sometimes, like, uh, I don't know why, like, sometimes I'll, like, read, um, and just see, it could be, could be, like, a normal book. It doesn't even have to be just, like, a, just manga. Like, I'll, like, read a page and then I just forgot what I just read. They on like I don't like I don't know what what the fuck. Yeah, I just sometimes read. that. I See, guess that's it. a that's not a that's not a bug. That's a feature, because like if you're <laughs> reading a book, you can like just go back a couple of lines. But if you're watching a like TV or an anime, you have to like rewind and go back a few seconds. And sometimes you're not sure how much you need to rewind. But my focus and, you know, is like this... a lot more better than reading manga, though. You see that I find that a lot the opposite like i find it a lot easier personally to focus on uh like i find it a lot easier because watching tv is so much more passive than reading you know you have to you have you can turn your brain off so to speak and like i'm not trying again like i said that if you read you're smart and if you uh watch tv you're dumb obviously i'm joking uh yeah, I know. Except for you, Stefan. Um... Wait a minute. <laughs> it, it, it also depends on, like, what exactly, like, I'm reading or watching. Like I said, like, Slice of Life series are so much easier for me to get into because I can just basically just, like, lay back and just kind of, like, quickly, like, jump in, read a couple things, read or watch a couple things, hop out, come back in. It's like, it's fine. But if it's, like, a story-driven or an action-driven series, I need, I need to, like, be focused and have all my attention on it. So it's like, oh, I need to make sure I'm in the right mood so I can, like, actually pay. That's why, that's why I say something like One Piece I don't think I'd be able to do because, not only because it's so long, but it's like, I want to give it my full attention. So I don't want to binge it. I don't want to binge it a lot because if I do, then that means, uh, like, I'm going to, like, basically just rush through it and I'm going to miss a lot of things. So it's like it is one of those just like just the nature of my my mind and my brain of just being like, oh, I need to like the, the what, what's more easier for me to digest at any given moment. The only slice of life series I saw was Toradora, unless Mad Men counts. <laughs> I think it does. Is, is uh, Toradora well, the one where it's the girl who has the brother and she's like a. No, she it, stays it, at home, and no, then no, no, no. no. It, it's, the, it's the small Sundere girl, and like the guy. There's like the guy with like the, the slanted eyes. Like they both help each other uh, with, with like their crushes they have. But uh oh, it turns out they end up falling for themselves. Okay, um, it's pretty good though. Cause oh, I'm thinking of Hori Mia. All right, yeah, that oh, was a monk. Hori, Hori Mia, that, that's a fun one. Yeah, it was okay. It was kind of. Um, wait, I don't know. Wait, are... the brother is Umaru Chan, though. Like, that like, stays home? Oh, yeah, he, 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 Himoro Chan is the one with, like, yeah, like, like the, the gremlin girl. Uh, yeah. Himoro Chan is garbage, but it's like, it's like really tasty garbage, you know? Like, it's the kind of terrible moe bad for you anime but that you eat any that you eat way too much anyway like potato chips you know it's just like you shouldn't be eating these like this over and over again but you do anyway for for for, for me the the the, ta the the tasty garbage that i like is something like a rent a girlfriend because like that's that's just bad shit but i love that bad shit you see rent a girlfriend i tried to read that like that's Tra that's too trash. That's it's a super, level beyond trashy. trashy. That's like that's like almost hentai levels a lot of the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's like also, it's like that's also like an actual version of the "I'm not Sundere, I just hate you" um, thing with the main girl, where it's just like she actually just like does not like the main protagonist. But then eventually she does, or does she? Dun dun. And then it just keeps going like that for three hundred chapters. <laughs> like that. That's like I haven't read. Like I pretty much only watch the anime. But like I, from what I've heard, is that the anime, the manga is pretty much just nonstop 
them going back and forth. It's, it's pretty much just nonstop, uh, yeah, them going back and forth over just, oh, will they, won't they, with no definitive answer in sight. Yeah, but the guy, yeah, and, the boy is also like a, a gigantic dickweed, though. Like well, every, every, pretty much everybody other than the main girl and one other girl is like absolutely terrible. Like it's like usually there's like, oh, like only one terrible person in these series and the rest are just kind of really goofy. But like everybody in that series is bad. Like, yeah, the main guy is a dick. Uh, his ex-girlfriend, <laughs> his ex-girlfriend's terrible. There's another girlfriend who's just like really bad. Uh, you have like the, the the rest of his family that's also terrible. It's just like everybody's bad in that yeah. series. Like the main girlfriend in that series is like she's mean to him, but like she has a reason to. She's like yeah, yeah and I'm she's also like... she like she just wants to be left alone otherwise, which is like, and she's like does way more for him than he absolutely deserves ever. So like yeah. Um, <laughs> which, I, which I, in, in some ways I do think it is like because you you have like the whole trope about like oh the anime boy that like constantly gets like attacked and like hurt by like all of like the girls around him and I feel like the trick that a lot of series forget to do is that you need to make like that character like an you need to make him not just an idiot but also like a dick so that like when he gets pummeled by that it's like it's actually funny because he deserves it mm. like, yeah like Johnny Bravo yeah, like like the, the the example I always go to is uh is the the main guy in Ursa Yatsura, which is which is the originator of like all of these tropes because uh Otsuro is just a massive like dickwad who's constantly perving on girls all the time and it's like every time he like faces a comeuppance like pretty much all the time he like starts it. So it's like yeah, like he, it, it, him him getting pummeled and him constantly getting like hurt by Lum and everyone like is always actually funny because he like he deserves it. Same with uh, Kazuma in uh, Konosuba because he's just an absolute asshole. So every time he faces some kind of like bad shit happening to him, it's funny because he deserved it. You might be wondering, Ted, why are you letting yourself die? over and over again. Well, funny thing about that, a lot of the times it's faster to let yourself die and transport yourself back to a mumbo skull or a warp pad or something than it is to like try to walk back. Oh, look, it's the guy from Saber Wolf. <laughs> Who? The, the 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 guy in the uh like the the the, the guy you saved uh from the from the ice. Oh yeah, I know. I'm just like I'm making a joke about now. Nobody, nobody knows what Saber, Saber Wolf is. Yeah. Like one anime that like I started and I'm like I can't I can't watch this 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 is just I can't it's too much which is um Masamune Kun's Revenge, which is yeah. oh I can't it's the the whole thing is the main protagonist the guy that you is like. He he was he was fat as a kid and he was bullied or something like that. Yeah. And um he lost weight and his plan is to date the girl that bullied him just to break up with her. And oh, like, but then they're gonna fall in love. I don't know. I didn't finish it. I don't want to finish it because but all yeah, the I'll, characters are annoying. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'll, I'll tell you because I, I I watched a little bit of it and I was just curious just because of, I just because I was like oh I just want to like look up and see like how the ending turns up and mm -hmm. the the end because the ending basically turns out that oh the girl that like insulted him as a kid as a kid turns out it wasn't her it was somebody else pretending to be her. What? So they both realized that it was like a big misunderstanding and they're like oh shit now what do we do? What? So Wait, but then dumb. what? But then wouldn't she have thought, "Oh, I was never mean to you the whole time"? Well, because the, the the whole premise is that is that the the, the, the fat kid is friends with the, the, this rich girl, and then like one day the rich like the quote unquote the rich girl insults in like basically insults her by calling him like a, 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 think like think like a pig, and so like he he's like so like angry and rejected that he like has this multi year revenge plan where he changes his name. Oh my uh, God. Uh, Changes his name, becomes uh, like completely like fit and like looks nothing like him. And his idea, his plan is to seduce seduce her uh, to make her fall in love with him, and then like humiliate her and reject Shit. her. Like wow. everyone, basically, that's his revenge. Why is everyone in anime a sociopath? 
And then so the, the whole thing is that it ends up being complicated because he's trying to do that. She she like because of the whole thing of like him like leaving her, she she thinks that he left her like on her own since it turns out it was her like maid that was like pretending to be her like her that insulted maid? him. So it was this whole thing of though she became like she like hates all men and just insults men all the time. So it's this whole thing of like, oh, there's that. There's a bunch of other girls that come up that like, oh, like that end up falling for the main character for other reasons that complicate things. Yeah. It's just like this web of mess. And then it turns out, oh, there was a misunderstanding the entire time. And they're like, shit. So we just complicated everything like for no reason. That is so dumb. I do, I, from what I've heard is I know a lot of people don't like really hate like that ending, mostly because they wanted it to be, oh, the guy gets back at the bitch girl. So when it turned out it wasn't that, they're like, what the fuck? So it's like people don't like the ending, but they seem to not like the ending for dumb reasons. Because anime fans. It's woke. It wasn't, it's not even woke, it's just stupid. I mean, like, because it's woke. Anime, anime fans, like, it's like so many times anime fans will say an ending is bad, but 90% of the time it's just because the main character got together with the girl that I didn't want them to get together with. Like, like, Devil, like, I cannot look at Devil's a part timer comments without seeing at least one person talk about how bad the ending is, when in actuality, all it is is that they just don't like who the main character got together with. And it's like, it's not that bad, it's fine. They want their, they want their OTPs. And it's not yeah. even a romance series, that's why it makes it even stupider. Oh. Stephen, yeah, it's like cart- yeah. What's a, what's an anime that I would love? Hmm, let me see. I, 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 I'm, let me pull up my list because I've seen a lot, and like there are there are a bunch that I've seen that I think you would. I do think I think Spy Family you you would really like. Really? Spy Family is great. Um, mm -hmm. that's, there's anyone. I think I think anyone could watch that. Basically, the premise is that it's a spy, and he needs to be in a secret family to um to spy on someone. Um, so. He gets uh, a fake family, but the wife is an assassin and the kid is a um, telepath. And the only one who knows that the others have secret identities is the uh, telepath. And they're all just really stupid. Um, so it's like a lot of really funny slapstick comedy and the art's really great. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sounds yeah well, like okay, I should, I should rephrase. Lloyd isn't dumb. But he's also like, he's the he straight tunnel, man. He has tunnel the, vision. He has tunnel yeah. vision. Yeah. I also he's, also I also appreciate anything where um, like a sitcom type situation uh, where they allow the um, the women to be quirky because typically mm -hmm. like it's always the mom who's the no fun straight person of the family. So I always appreciate when they let the women like be silly and have some fun with the with the premise you know mm -hmm. yeah like jack mentioned ranking of kings that's another really good one oh yeah yeah yeah. people were saying yeah this the, is the stream was buffering for a second but it's fine now oh is it good now yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was just on my end but everyone was saying it was buffering, but now I everyone was me. so that was just for a moment there yeah, uh, Hentai Spider says, Lloyd overthinks things. Yor has no common sense. And then Anya is just an idiot. She's also, again, she's also she four like years three. old. <laughs> she's five, but it's also just, it's just funny. Just how dumb she is. Well, she's supposed, she's four and she's supposed to be six to go into the school, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, she's not smart even for a four-year-old, but still, like, um... Steven, are you still in Click Clockwood? I'm in fall, yeah. Okay, so uh, you're telling me, oh, me there's a chance. I found a couple donations. Uh, let me see. Uh, $5 from Chef Kilo. Speaking about game prices going up, I remember I bought Dokapon Kingdom for Wii when it was 20 bucks. Then three months later, my friend wanted to buy a copy since he enjoyed the game and saw it jump up to $100. Also saw something similar happening to Project X Zone One and Two, going from ten bucks to a hundred bucks now. 
Uh, then we have uh, seven dollars and five cents from Damned Girl Seven. Sorry, one more question for the night. Speaking of kids' shows that are popular with adults, what do you guys think of Phineas and Ferb and Gravity Falls? Thanks and lots of love. I hear great things about those shows all the time. They are, um, like, I was too old to watch them when they were on TV, so I don't know much about them. Yeah, they're they're both they're both wonderful. I love I love them both. Phineas and Ferb looks. I mean, the clips that I've seen that people love, I don't get it. <laughs> it seems like it just might be outside of my age range. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I think I think that's fair. Yeah, because Phineas and Ferb, it's a very specific type of humor with a first very specific di uh, demographic. Yeah. I think Gravity Falls would be mu is much more up your uh, alley. I I watched it. Um, for me, like. <sighs> I don't know. It's I like the writing. I think Gravity Falls scripts are really good. It's the direction that gets me. A lot of um a lot of voice direction like in modern TV or at least in modern cartoons kind of bugs me. It feels like they're just going through the lines and they do like one maybe two takes and they call it a day and they keep going. And it's like, "Oh, but you could have delivered that so much better." I feel like Gravity Falls is one of those shows where the deliveries aren't that great, but the script and the jokes and the writing are as good, but it's the deliveries that bug me. I can but, see that. I, no, I can see that. Yeah. For me, like, Phineas and Ferb was on, I think, it's one of, I think it's one of the last few cartoons I've watched on Disney Channel, because I was still, I would still watch Disney at that time. I enjoyed it early on, but then later on I would just I just kind of fell off because at that point I just kind of stopped watching Disney Channel. Um, Gravity Falls, I actually do want to try it again. I watched it when it was on Disney, but it was also at that time where I wasn't really watching Disney as consistent as I was, so I would just miss a lot of things. But I'm I've heard how great it is, and I'm like, you know what? I I need to try it again. And thankfully, because of streaming services, I can just watch it without worrying about skipping any episodes. And Gravity Falls also, since it's only 40 episodes, it's a very easy thing to yeah. go through. Yeah, the 40 episodes is nothing. I, I, literally, nothing, nothing bothers me anymore. Naruto. After Naruto. After the 700 Naruto. Yeah, plus the oh. movies. Yeah, and uh, we got $20 from the Weedy Even. Ratchet and Clank's final boss gave me gas, so here's some more cash money. Also, for a recommendation, the best show from this year is Summertime Rendering. I recommend giving it a watch whenever Disney puts it up stateside, because they somehow got the license for it and are sitting on gold. Yeah, I've heard lots of great things about that series, but it's like, yeah, it's you have to find other means to watch it because Disney uh, got the licensing for it and they're they're just being like, uh, oh, we're going to release it later. Disney be like, we have so much money that we don't need to make more money, even though we like money and we could be making so much more of it right now. Like, man, I wish I was Disney and I could like have so much money that I literally do not need to make more. And people have been joking that it's because it, the, that they're saying that on your channel it still says Super Monkey Ball. I listen, stop watching on my channel. Yeah. All right. Like, why That's are you watching on my channel? Yeah. Watch. I, I, literally, the title of the stream says watch on the charity room. I don't know what else I can say to you people. And yeah, yeah he, he was fighting. Yeah. F fuck Drek because he was playing playing Ratchet one. That final boss is bad. Super Monkey Ball and Kazooie. This is weird. For some reason, I got an email from, out of all things, from Burger King saying, Thank you for ordering from Burger King. I'm like, um, I didn't. Is it also, actually from Burger King? Yeah, it is. It says, What's it's the like, email? It, uh, promos dash coming at your way. Uh, dot bk.com is bk.com the right person website yeah yeah i would just be careful about clicking any links on something like oh that. yeah i'm not i'm not clicking it like <laughs> like there's like there's nothing on the receipt like <laughs> like it's all blank put that as spam burger king eat fresh that's not true at all. 
put your credit card into this <laughs> Sabrina, I know a way that will keep you from ever being frauded ever again. All right. Do you want to hear it? Uh, sure. What's up? Okay. So to start off with, I'm going to need the, the wacky 16 numbers on the front of your uh, debit card. Okay, I got it. Okay, it's one, okay. two, three, Why four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, zero. <laughs> okay, thanks. So now I need the uh, the crazy three numbers on the back of the card. Oh, uh, it's a uh, four twenty. Okay, and then it, I need the expiration date. Uh, it's uh, it's twelve thirty. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Sabrina. You'll never be frauded ever again. I promise. Ah, sweet. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, I feel bad for the, by by the one person that has four twenty as their number because you know they want to tell people but they can't. <laughs> Yo, it's Jack's birthday. <laughs> it's Jack's birthday, Yo, even in Jack's stinky birthday. East, even in stinky Central Time Zone. Yes, yeah, it's, it's one. In, it's the one in the morning. <laughs> oh man. It's, it's been your birthday, Jack. If you'd be in the correct time zone, it would have been your birthday for a whole extra hour. But you know, you're you're wasting away in the worst time zone. So could have been you could you you you, you, you could you could have been a 25 and one hour older. But no, you're only 25. And three. Jack's years. only 25. <laughs> yeah, apparently, I didn't That's know I was older than Jack. That's my age. Babies, you're all babies. Oh my god! Twenty-five, even that. Like, thing is, I I, I keep on th thinking that tw I keep on thinking I'm so young, but then I see other people that are like seventeen, and I'm like, that that's like that's like seven years older than me. I'm like, shit. I'm I'm twenty six, so I'm only a year older than Jack, but still, you guys like, are I thought babies. <laughs> you're all such babies. Baby, Ooh, Gaga, bitch. Baby, <laughs> I do, I do uh, fifty-seven. <laughs> you say you're 57. I'm 57. That's what I, yeah. Yeah, see, everybody watching right now is somewhere between 22 and 25. Oh. Chill. Oh. You, you, you babies. But see, I was thinking, see, I was thinking like there'd be more like 17, but then I'm like, oh no, those guys probably would have to be asleep by now. Yeah, it's past so their like, bedtime. Yeah, older 20 people, it's like, yeah, this is our time. Well, school's out right now, right? True, yeah, well, I still, mean, Mo I feel like maybe some of the colleges are back, but it's got to be very few of them. Willem Dafoe, I'm 67. <laughs> the Willem Dafoe. <laughs> I love that Willem Dafoe watches us. It's crazy. Isn't... Bro. Such a huge uh, support. I mean, he has millions of dollars, but he only gives a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he can't, he has to be careful with his charity spending. Because, like, that's where all the tax write-offs go. All right, I'm at 57, Steven. I've got 13 left. I'm coming for you. Holy shit. I'm going to be actually really happy if this comes close. Yeah, because he's on, how many more cl on Click Clock Woods do you have left? Right now I'm focusing on notes, but let's take a look. After this bird falls asleep. Okay. Um, well, the foe says, I don't want you 100% the game twice, Steven. That's why he's not donating more. <laughs> um, ah, he shows mercy. Ah. So those are my stats stuff, and that's what I, that's what else I have to get. Oh, so you got three more left. Uh, three more jiggies? <laughs> yeah, I think like, well, technically four, because three in this, and then the one in um, in, Grunty. Mom, in uh, oh, Grunty's uh, castle. And then that means he can start the final, uh, the final area. Oh, um. Loving the bro. <laughs> oh, I see another, I see another donation. Five dollars and six cents from Damn Girl 7. Okay, one more donation. I had some extra time. What is a better superhero comedy? Uh, Venture, uh, the, uh between, uh, in, uh, Venture Brothers, Harley Quinn Show, Aqua Teen and uh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. 
I haven't seen any of them, so I don't watch a lot of Western cartoons. So um, those are those are step races. What is the better superhero comedy, Venture Bros or the Harley Quinn show? Also, what is better, Aqua Teen or Super Ghost Ghost of Ghost? I'm blind. I can't see. Space Ghost is, uh, I would say, better than Aqua Teen. I don't know. It's yes. apples and oranges, so it's hard to compare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very different type of series. But yeah, they're both super funny. Venture Bros is great. Harley Quinn is great. Harley Quinn is great. Like, that's the only show I've watched out of all of those four, to be honest. And um, I do, I did enjoy the Harley Quinn show. I actually need to continue it. If I had to <laughs> guess, I would say Space Ghost has probably aged better, since uh, a lot of older Aqua Teen jokes are... Mm, for of the time. Of the time sure is aqua seen the one with the milkshake and the the and, talking and, meatball? And the meatball okay mm -hmm. okay i watched bits and bobs of that but not too much to really give an opinion i need to say uh best aliases line because it made me crack up reese with her spoon and reese without her spoon <laughs> <laughs> I ended up accidentally figuring out how to do a meatwad impression by trying to do a stitch impression. Oh. Because it's basically trying to do like this, and then you make it a little higher voice, and then it becomes like this, just like what meatwad does. That's actually well, that, pretty that, close. It's really good, yeah. I just want to go do the thing over here, and I'm like, oh no, I can't reach with my hands up there. But then it's like, okay. But what you need is, um, like, you should have eaten, like, a peanut butter sandwich to make your like mouth very spitty and dry yeah his meat has got that weird nasty sound when he talks a little nasty sound yeah because 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 like stitch stitch kind of has like that kind of voice but it's like you're trying to like make it lower but it's like you're you need to have a specific uh, cadence in your voice to do that so instead you end up going higher and when you go higher pitch that basically just makes it meat wad that says the bubble good question the magic jimmy mm -hmm. Oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna be right back. Hold on one moment. Okay. Where was that one flower at? Or I guess it was a fly trap. What are those things called? Yeah, I watched Hung I watched Aqua Teen. Yeah, whenever, whenever I stayed up late as a kid and like Aqua Teen was on, that was when I usually saw it most of the time, or on DVD. Yeah, like I said, young people, they don't go to bed on time. They're up watching the charity like, room. Because it was uh -huh. always, like, for the longest time, it would be, like, oh, whenever I'm, like, out, like, out somewhere, like, at families or friends' places, and, like, for, like, parties and stuff, and, like, those would be times when we'd end up staying late, and, like, staying late after 1 a.m. was, like, a magical thing when I was a kid because it's like wow I'm not supposed to be this late and then it's like if the TV's on I'd see TV shows I've never seen or like I usually never see and it's like oh my god there's more TV I always remember because since I had I had a satellite TV so when like you could scroll through and see like all of like the TV shows like the next day so you could see all the TV shows that air in the middle of the night so I'm like look at all these shows in the middle of the night that I want to see but I can't And then, and then when you're in college and you're just like, yeah, I'm just going to stay up literally all night just to write a paper. And that's fine. Dude, I did so many all-nighters I shouldn't have in college. Like, it was a bad decision. Yeah, most of the writing, most of my, most of my essays in my final year of uh, university was literally just staying up all night the last, like, the day, the day before, just writing it all, submitting it and getting, like, a high 70, low 80 and being like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> No, I didn't need to read the rules. I'm a fool. I'm Boo Boo the Fool. How you holding up, David? Oh, I'm doing all right. You know, uh, oh. you, you, were, you were talking to anime. Didn't have much to say. Like I had something whole... I don't know what to say. Now it's my uh, turn. I don't watch now. a whole lot of anime. Uh, Stephen, the last what's an anime David anime. would love. 
Well, the the last anime I tried Star to Wars watch, Visions. which one? Star Wars Visions. That's an anime. Oh yeah, anime. I I do. I I need to finish that. Um, I did recently watch uh, ten, uh some some nineties anime, uh ten, Tenchi Muyo. I was watching mm. some of that and. It was fine until it wasn't. <laughs> uh, the 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 first, like, because there's a whole bunch of different Tenchis, right? There's there's the OVA, there was Universe, uh, there was something called Tenchi in Tokyo, which I did not watch. Uh, so so I watched I watched the the first two OVAs, then I watched Universe, even though Universe is a separate universe. Then I watched the three movies. Movies one and three are sequels to Universe. Movie two is not. Movie two is a pseudo sequel to the first OVA, but is in a separate continuity, which is based on a bunch of novels that were never translated into English. And then watched OVA three and went, huh? And then started OVA four and went, no, because at some point uh, it gets bad. It it stops making sense. It's not. It's um, yeah, I can't. Uh, I, th I think it has something to do with the fact that, that the first two Tenchi OVAs is, is early 90s, so it looks interesting and cool. And then they waited 10 years to do the th third one. And uh, you can tell that um, waiting really uh, threw off whatever pacing they had. And also, it just gets insane. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about uh, uh, Tenchi Muyo. No. The uh, yes, the oh, man. Um, uh, very very quickly. Uh, we got twenty dollars from Ooh. Dylan Wolfo. Dylan. I'm, I'm something of a twenty year old myself. <laughs> why I'm donating? <laughs> and why I'm donating twenty dollars to the Ben and Kazoo plush. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when when you try to make something that is absolute into a fraction. <laughs> something of a twenty year old myself. <laughs> oh man! Oh, and uh, uh, an anime I think that anybody also could get into is Loop on the Third. Oh yeah, I've been wanting to watch some Loop on. Uh, the only Loop on I've watched was the most recent movie, the one that's in three D. Were, 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 were you were you on the I, I, I don't know if you were there yeah because we, we watched all together uh, on the discord uh no I, I watched it uh separately before I think I did I didn't watch it on the discord uh, yeah yeah because well why uh the yeah the, the the first is a very good the CG movie is a very good starting point and then yeah, I've just been going off just watching as much as I can of the movies and the TV shows yeah it i mean it looks fun um it's basically japanese scooby-doo like <laughs> you know, if you want that kind of scooby-doo energy uh for your, in, in your franchise in an anime lupon's the way to go only only with more with, with more murder oh well what's what's a little murder between friends so. yeah. does anybody get murdered in scooby-doo ever like um I don't think. Well, well, I guess there there are those occasions where there's real monsters. So sometimes that would be a ghost, and a ghost would imply someone died. But I don't know if they were. No, there's there's been death in Scooby Doo for sure, but I don't know if there's been like murder. You know. Yeah, people are saying Zombie Island, and technically the supernatural crossover. There's murder. Oh. There's yeah. a supernatural crossover with Scooby Doo. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's like one of the best of the recent. Yeah, where there's a whole episode where yeah, the supernatural guys they go into they end up in like the Scooby Doo world and it's like animated like an episode of Mystery Incorporated. It's basically like a lost episode of Mystery Incorporated, where where, where, where the two brothers are in like the Scooby Doo world and then somebody gets killed and they got to figure out like what's going on. Okay. Um... There's a Scooby Doo multiverse, you know. Or Shaggy's Ultra Instinct. Yeah, they 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 made the meme canon. Uh, I know I've talked about it before, but there is a website, ScoobySnacks.com, 
and and they they put together an official chronological viewing order of Scooby Doo. Ooh. Oh my god. Uh, What's I, the official does it start with the pup named Scooby Doo? Uh yes, yes it does. It is uh, canon. There's no cuz I know a pup named Scooby Doo I feel like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't cuz there there are different origins depending on like oh how did everyone meet? Um a pup named Scooby Doo implies that they've known each other since they were kids, but I guess this person is like that's what I do. Uh or, <laughs> that's what they that's what I I haven't since I haven't watched every single Scooby Scooby Doo piece of media. I haven't been able to put together my own timeline, so I'm only going to assume that this person has actually done it uh, correctly. So, uh, somebody named Mr. Kind Nerd, an avid Scooby fan, has spent over a year carefully plotting out each point in the series and finding a chronological order for the entire franchise so that fans, both new and old, can actually watch the series as you would normally watch it in chronological order. Uh, Are you tired? Hmm? Uh, what no. was that? No, I'm oh. just seeing returns. Sorry. Oh, okay. Just in time to hear Scooby do <laughs> timeline. Okay. So so this person who put it together, it starts with, yes, a pup named Scooby Doo, which aired from eighty eight to ninety one. Uh so I guess it's just what consists of is it really only four Okay, whatever. Okay. Then it skip goes ahead to Scooby Doo, where are you? That's the classic. Everyone's into it. Sixty nine. What, yeah, what is what is going on? And this person put the Scooby Natural, the Scooby Doo Supernatural crossover, in between episodes sixteen and seventeen of the original that, Scooby Doo series. Yeah, That's an extremely specific placement for that. For well, the yeah, record. technically, because it does take place like in the original cartoon world, like it's like it's like okay. they like, they end up in an episode of like the the Scooby Doo cartoon, so it's like well, yeah, it's in the classic. I guess they're they're taking account of the uh, taking account the 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 time of the year. These so I guess the show starts in summer. Uh, the first episode of Scooby Doo, where are you? What a night for a night! Apparently takes place in summer, and then. The last episode of the first season, That Snow Ghost, starts in winter. And Nowhere to Hide, they've marked as January. And episode two of season two, Mystery Max Mix-Up, is marked as late January, Chinese New Year. So there must be some sort of reference to uh, the Chinese New Year in that episode. Uh, so maybe, because maybe Scooby Natural, since I haven't seen it, is very, like, classic early, like, if classic early Scooby-Doo, maybe? Like, it feels that way. So it makes sense to shove it there yeah, I, we, we, it, yeah it is supposed yeah it's supposed to be like yeah a classic scooby-doo episode okay. yeah i'm not sure about like obviously don't know about the specific placement of putting it in between those two episodes but <laughs> it's like, supposed to be in there okay so then so then you have uh they then next up they've got uh some some of the direct-to-video movies uh scooby-doo legend of the phantasaur from 2011 scooby-doo camp scare from 2010 uh, Shaggy Showdown from 2017 and Scooby-Doo and the Gourmet Ghost from 2018. So those are very recent entries into the Scooby-Doo canon. Where did they put um, them there? Yeah. Then, then next comes the new Scooby-Doo movies uh, from 72 to 73. Um, those are all the crossover shows, right? Like, oh, hey, we've met... Uh, well, this one's called Scooby-Doo Meets the Addams Family, so... Yeah, the, that, the, the, new, yeah, the new Scooby Doo movies. Yeah, that that was the series that uh, that was the second series after the first. Uh, that was that was the second series, and that one was pretty much with all the the guest stars. Right. So you get you get like Dick Van Dyke, uh, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Batman and Robin, uh, I Dream of Genie. Yeah, it's the uh, it's the best of. Okay. So then we've got Scooby Doo Abracadabra Doo from 2010. Uh, then, then Scooby Doo Batman the Brave and the Bold from 2018. That's an interesting. I mean, I guess yeah. Why not? Uh, Scooby Doo Music of the Vampire, ooh, from 2012. Big Top Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo Stage Fright, Scooby Doo WrestleMania Mystery, uh, Scooby Doo Moon Monster Madness, uh, Scooby Doo and WWE Curse of the Speed Demon. So all those movies uh, from the 2010s we shove in there. Then. The Scooby Doo Show, uh, when it aired with Dynamut, uh, Dog Wonder. So the episodes from that show, uh, 1976, that comes next. Then just the Scooby Doo Show, uh, from 77 to 78. 
then I guess the next era is called the Fame and Fortune era for some reason. Uh, they they've included Scooby's uh, the All Star Laugh Olympics, which ends with Scooby Doo Goes Hollywood, and I, I guess that's the end of just Scooby Doo uh, as as a as a lone a lone dog figure. Because what's next? Uh, Scooby Doo and Scrappy Doo. That's right, everyone's favorite pint sized putt putt pup, who even though most people hate him uh, now for some reason uh, was, was uh, a very big reason as to why the Scooby-Doo franchise continued. Hmm. Uh, it was, it was almost like canceled completely as a no more Scooby-Doo, but for some reason kids loved Scrappy-Doo and that's why Scooby uh, continued uh, throughout the eighties. So yeah, we get, we get that. Um, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo continues when it's been uh, sandwiched with, with the Richie Rich show. So it was called the Richie Rich Scooby-Doo Show and Scrappy 2. Enjoy it. Um, now, for some reason, oh, it looks like there's some episode differences. One thir- like episode 113 comes in between. So, you know, you got to watch it in chronological order. You can't just watch it in, in episode order. This is good. Then we got uh, Scooby and Scrappy-Doo slash Scrappy and Yabadoo. Uh, the Scooby and Scrappy Doo Puppy Hour. I hope that long title didn't make you afraid of it because you've got to watch all 39 episodes. Then you've got Scooby Doo meets the Boo Brothers. From that 87. one's okay. That's like a decent. I love Boo that's like so a. Much. <laughs> that's one. Of, that's like the best one with Scrappy in it that I can remember off the top of my head. Okay. Then, then we got a Scooby-Doo in the Ghoul School that takes place on Halloween. That was released in 88. And then Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf. Yeah. Then you got the, the new Scooby and Scrappy-Doo show from 1983 in which um, uh, Daphne comes back. And it's like, oh, there she is. You know, because there is that period where, like, the rest of the gang is just gone. It, it's like we don't need them. We've got Scrappy Doo, and then they slowly start reintroducing. Uh, <laughs> I see that Nick. Okay, so that was right. The the new Scooby and Scrappy Doo show. We got that, uh, and then the new Scooby Doo Mysteries from '84, which I guess is just more of the same. I don't know why they kept on changing the name of the show, but I guess it's what you did in the '80s. And then, and then comes the 13 ghosts of scooby-doo which uh is followed uh, right so that that's the one with with vincent price is very spooky very spooky i hope you like spook uh and then scooby-doo in arabian nights from 1994 uh then the then the next era here we, we keep going it's called the new adventures era it starts with scooby-doo on zombie island which which everyone loves then you got Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Uh, it was, I guess, the follow-up released in 1999. Uh, Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. Scooby-Doo and the Cyber Chase. Oh, that's right. We're entering the 2000s properly because the next, the next show in the timeline is What's New Scooby-Doo, which aired from 2002 to 2006. Watch it them aired. all. What's New Scooby-Doo aired that long? Wow. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that, but I guess it did. All right. Then we get a whole slew of uh of just uh I guess direct to video uh movies. Scooby Doo and the Loch Ness Monster, Aloha Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo and Where's My Mummy, Scooby Doo Pirates Ahoy, Chill Out, Scooby Doo, Scooby Doo and the Goblin King, Scooby Doo and the Samurai Sword, Scooby Doo and the Legend of the Vampires, and also then and the Monster of Mexico. And then here's some other stuff, which is in a different color and doesn't have years after it. So I don't know what that means. Mecha Mutt Menace? Is that a game? Spooky Games? Ghastly Goals? Spooky Doo and the Spooky Scarecrow? Spooky Scooby Scooby Doo. I can't even talk anymore. Too Scooby. much. Scooby Doo Haunted Holidays. Oh, fuck. Uh, right, right. Also, oh, Brewhaven, uh, you, you do have a good point. I don't know why the WWE crossovers are during the 70s, because... That, yeah. that they weren't <laughs> wrestling. Those wrestlers were not wrestling in the 70s. Uh, maybe it's because it's like a vague, maybe the 60s aren't really the 60s in this universe. I don't I don't know. Uh, like, that it, makes like, sense because like they've all been teenagers for 40 years, so... Right. And I guess they just really like hanging out with Laurel and Hardy. 
in the 2000s. <laughs> then they got uh, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo get a clue, which I've only seen a little bit, but it never felt like it belongs, you know, with everything else because it looks different. It's weird. Oh, whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's from 2006 to 2008. So you got that show. And then uh, Scooby-Doo and the Curse of the 13th Ghost. So I guess the, the final, the follow-up to 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo. Uh, Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island from 2019, which I have not seen. They did a return to Zombie Island? Okay. Oh, oh I guess. It, I, I've, I've seen it. It, it, um, it, it's, it's very controversial because it's basically saying, oh, yeah, you know how all like the monsters were real in that one? Actually, no, they weren't real. Oh, that, I mean, it that does is... go against like the inherent like Scooby Doo, like. Yeah, but there's there's nothing wrong with some ghosts. I mean, what about the thirteen ghosts of Scooby Doo? That's about ghosts, or or does the curse of the thirteenth ghost tell us there are no ghosts? Well, well, actually, well, yeah, you, yeah, the curse of the thirteenth ghost is basically about because like Velma is in there and she's basically like, are you sure about that? It's like, are you sure they're actually real ghosts? And this is all just not a fraud. And then, like the film kind of ends in a very vague way of being like, maybe it isn't actually real. Uh, I, I I did I saw a video uh about uh, and, and I think it's I think it was Nerd Sync uh did did, did, did this really good video like uh, uh, analysis on Scooby Doo series and like how it like it keeps like switching between like oh are the monsters gonna be real or are the monsters gonna be like oh fake just people in masks and it's like how it's they shows like how how the changes between all the different series and how like he kind of like in a lot of ways kind of recontextualizes uh like Return to Zombie Island and the Curse of the Thirteenth Ghost because because he's like, oh, like they, they they kind of like make it much more ambiguous whether those monsters were actually real or not. And he likes that because it adds into another aspect of the mystery of Scooby-Doo is that you're never going to know exactly if they're they're going to be real or not. It's like so it's like it makes makes everything more unsure and like adds to that level of mystery. OK, All right. Then the, the final entry in the main Scooby-Doo timeline is Happy Halloween Scooby-Doo. Which, Wait, uh, where's Mystery Incorporated? Mystery Incorporated is listed as an alternate timeline, which is right underneath. It says alternate timeline, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. Which I guess makes sense because I think that has a different, that that has like, oh, they didn't meet when they were kids. I think they met when they were older. So that probably, right. that, that makes sense. Right. And I guess uh, they also listed Scooby-Doo in the Beach Bestie uh, in that same universe, which I'm not familiar with, with that, so... Uh, know then, that right, and there's also a reboot timeline that they've listed here, which starts with Be Cool Scooby-Doo from 2015 to 2017. And then that's followed up with Scooby-Doo and Guess Who uh, from 2019 to 2021. I guess Scooby-Doo Guess Who is basically like the new version of the new Scooby movies where every episode has like a new guest star on there. Right. So I don't know what about that show would make it work only in this new timeline as opposed to the original. Uh, maybe because like, characters like, like Batman is in an episode. So, uh, OK, so if Batman's in there, but he doesn't if it's new Batman. OK, I can see yeah, that. So it's like Batman and like all the Batman characters. Uh, yeah, like Mark Hamill Joker's in there. Oh, OK, OK. And then there's there's three things listed here and i don't know if they, they're meant to be next in the timeline or their own separate things uh because you got scoob exclamation point a live the, the, the cg movie yes which i guess they're counting maybe as part of the the reboot timeline uh scooby-doo the sword and the scoob that's a good title <laughs> and then and then straight out of nowhere scooby-doo meets courage cowardly dog i guess it's also part of the reboot timeline so we've got um so this person has, has charted out three separate uh, animated timelines, which, of course, none of those gel with the live action stuff. Um, because there is, right, the Scooby-Doo movies. Um, but then there's also, like, that one weird movie that's Daphne and Velma in high school, which I don't think meshes with the uh, other live action Scooby-Doo movies. Well, because there was the live action Scooby Doo movies, and then there was the direct to video uh, live action Scooby Doo movies. They made right. direct to video live action Scooby Doo movies. I yeah, did not was, know like, that. Yeah, because there, there, there was, I, I remember, yeah, I remember because uh, like Robbie Amell plays uh, Fred in those. 
<laughs> so, I mean, as, as someone who has thought way too much about the Sonic the Hedgehog timeline, I, I can definitely appreciate uh, this dissertation on the Scooby-Doo timeline. Okay, so I... Um... David, I need your expert opinion on something, because this is something that has haunted me for years. Okay. Where the hell in the Sonic timeline does Sonic Battle take place? Because it doesn't make sense. What um, do you mean? Because, like, Shadow's all like, oh, Maria, my past. But, yeah. like, the only place where that makes sense for that to be is post-Shadow the Hedgehog. Where in After Shadow the Hedgehog, he's like, my past doesn't matter. So, like, it just doesn't make sense to me. This always happens to me. He always goes back under the ice. <laughs> I always die here. It's okay. I've collected everything. Uh oh, I thought you were going to be like, this always happens to me. He always goes back to the Sonic timeline. Uh, wait, how many uh, <laughs> Jiggies do you have? 99. Stephen. Oh, God. Sonic? I'm actually, I'm at... 63 so it's honestly closer than i ever had any right to make it but um what what if i told you we just got 4k now that's not funny Wait. Stefan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'd laugh um I'd, I'd do it i'd laugh too but then i'd cry um Especially since I don't know where a lot of the stuff I skipped was. <laughs> Normally, I'm way more thorough. So. So, unfortunately, save. I do have work tomorrow. And I do well, I do too, but I'm calling out sick. Um, screw that. Uh, I don't have any work at all tomorrow. From, 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 the tw from the story I told you, I can't call out sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. So dumb. <laughs> But, uh, All right, yeah. have a good night, Sabrina. Thank you for sticking with us so long. Yeah, I wish I could have seen the end. <laughs> but have a good night, guys. Thank you, you oh, as well. I didn't hit that grunty switch. Uh, whatever. Can you hit the grunty switch in any season, or does it have to be like... It's in winter. It's in winter, okay. But you can just like skip to winter, right? Like yep. you don't have to... Okay, that's that's good. Someone in the comments asked, where does the OKKO OK crossover fit in the Sonic timeline? That's a question. <laughs> that I'm not entirely sure. I, I would assume, well, because it, because it's like a weird crossover thing. Um, I mean, I guess personally, I would probably shove it, you know, near the end. Um, probably before the the uh, wallpaper stories um i mean probably i mean there's a lot of sonic and tail stuff going on i mean it's probably after forces yeah i mean i would just be like when it happens i don't know it, it is one of those weird things it could kind of fit anywhere but it would definitely have to be well anywhere in like that later ish era because it is i think the fact it's roger probably helps you know putting it in roger era but uh yeah, Sonic Battle takes place after Shadow. Why is that hard? Because it just it doesn't make sense from a character perspective. Because the entire point of that of that game is, oh, my past doesn't matter, and then he immediately goes back to worrying about his past. It's like, well, okay, not, it's it's not that Shadow is like my past doesn't matter. He and also that is sort of like plenty plenty of times Shadow thinks about Maria and the Ark and later media anyway but it, it it's shadow in shadow the hedgehog has amnesia right he doesn't know who he is he doesn't really know what's going on he he's like am, am i actually shadow the hedgehog am i a clone am i a robot am i like are my memories about maria real uh him going like hey this doesn't matter i think is more it what what my past is shouldn't control my future right um but shadow he still there there was still like the promise he made to maria and we know that he he's still like helping to protect the world as best as shadow can i mean that is what he's doing in sonic of six he's presumably joined up with gun is part of gun 
uh, part of whatever Team Dark is. He's working with Rouge. He's working with Omega. He is still pretty much doing what Maria wanted him to do. Uh, if, if something were to come up like, hey, there's this three, uh, 4,000 year old Gizoid that could potentially destroy the entire uh, world, he might want to, you know, look into it and, 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 and not just let it happen. You know, maybe give it some peace in the in the way that he has been looking for peace. Yeah. You know, like, and, and I mean, even in real life, you know, when you're when you're dealing with issues and you're like, I'm done with that issue. Sometimes you're not done with that issue. Uh, you know, you're, you're still working through things. Uh, and Shadow, I think, is is a work in progress. You know, like he wants to be he wants to be a better person. He wants to be a better hedgehog. And and so I think dealing with aspects from his past that are not just who am I? Uh, why do I exist? It it's a bit there's a bit more to it. Um so so I think I think it still works um overall. Whoa. Damn. <laughs> Nintendo 64! I got 64 jiggies. Game over. I win. You win. Minor spelling mistake. I win. No, but wait, no, but no, but you're on you're but but this isn't the 64. If you had the 64 version, then you'd win. Fuck. So oh, how many do I need to win on the Xbox? 360. God damn it. I can't get <laughs> that many. I think I think it, uh I something I always thought was weird was that in Spyro 2, the amount of orbs in the game are 64. And I always thought it was weird. It was specifically that number. R2 is so strange because you're collecting these orbs and then at the very end of the game, the orbs, like, the, in the last world, orbs don't matter because you've already gotten enough orbs. No, 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 no. Orbs are what matter. No, because the whole thing is that you're collecting talismans in every, st in every stage in the first two worlds and those are what you need to unlock the boss. And also you're collecting the orbs and the orbs you need to unlock, like, certain, like there's like a section of... There's like one section of level that's blocked off, but you need uh need to pay money bags in order to get a move that lets you go to that second half. And then there's another section of the level that's like, oh, you need orbs in order to open that up. So they're kind of blocked. Oh, off. I'm thinking of how they just like stop having talismans at the end of the game. Yeah, which... and then in, yeah, and then in World Three they don't have any talismans, and it's just oh, you need this amount of orbs in order to fight the final boss. Yeah, it's a weird way how they handle it. And then uh, Spyro Three just goes back to oh, they're just eggs are like stars in Mario 64. Some are just lying on the ground and some of them you use missions. Yeah, oh, I what, think that's, a, that's a smoother formula. Like one's progression formula is also weird where it's like sometimes you need gems, sometimes you need dragons, sometimes you need dragon eggs. It's like it's a little strange, but and also all oh, this blood in this game. This game's hardcore. The blood in Kirby, uh, in Kirby 64 was enough to make the collection E10. Wait, didn't they write Kirby 64 on the Nintendo Switch T recently because of the blood at the very end? I'm not sure. I'd have to look. I didn't see it's the like... question. I skipped yeah. through the question. I don't know why. Uh, and his name is Lord Wu Fak Fak. <laughs> yeah, and if you play this on an Xbox One, then it's just one. Wait, this is- I am playing on an Xbox One. Well, wait a minute, then you win. I win? Yeah. Honestly, don't care who wins at this point. I just want it to be over. I want to go to bed. Yeah, I agree. Um, Struggling. I forgot that I got to go get all the extra things from the cheats that I got from Cheeto. Mm -hmm. Wait, you have to get extra things from Cheeto? Why? I guess I don't have to, right? Like, I found Cheeto. Do I have to enter in the codes and get all those bonuses? No, you already, you already, like... Like, does the game track them anywhere? No. It's just no, a no, thing say, you can no. do. I want to go to bed, so I say you're fine. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, I'm going to do it. No, Steven, please. Please, now you're making me try. I'm making you what? Oh, you're making me got, try. I've got like 67 jiggies right now. Oh, got, shit. Got a little 
we got a little raid from uh, Juan Zaral. Thank you for the raid. Much appreciated. Uh, welcome, Raiders. Uh, we're playing Banjo, Tui, and Kazooie race. We're racing 100% Banjo, Tui versus any percent. Ba no, shit. Uh, we're playing 100% Banjo, Kazooie versus any percent Banjo, Tui, and the winner um, determines which game is better. But uh, Steven's probably going to win because his game's shorter. Uh, and he's already at the end. So. Um, Yeah, thank you. Uh, God, um, words. Right, We've wait. got um, donations and stuff happen. Oh, I was at 64. Sorry. We had just talked about how many jiggies I had. Shit. Um, how many do I have left in this world? Um, Blue eggs, red feathers. Uh, I don't remember what the other jiggy I missed is. Oh, wait, no, I can do that. I can do that one. That one's easy. And yeah, one. Yeah, th th this this is the last thing for the, this is the last thing for the night. Yeah, once they're done, then we're closing it off. Imagine doing so. Something just after a this. reminder for everybody: once this uh once this event once this di uh, game ends, uh donations for the crash race are cut off, and donations for the raffle entry for today are cut off as well. So um, if you want, make sure if you want those, make sure to. Get your donations in as um, soon, because I think Steven's probably going to be finished within the half an hour. Um, What's the crash yeah. race uh, tally at? I'm pretty uh, sure three is still winning by yeah, a lot, but again... Winning, yeah, by over a thousand bucks. So. Oh my god. But again, if everybody in the chat donates $10, it can swap. So, like, it can change... You, you have to believe in the you that believes in the change that can give money to make the the look i i don't know all right like crash uh, 3 is, seems like a fine game we can play that one that's okay oh uh, and true blue ted needs 70 right is that right yeah i need 70 i'm at 65 i'm about to get 66 because i remembered that um you haven't even gone to cloud cuckoo land no, I'm there's I'm gonna try to get the last couple in Cloud Cuckoo Land as soon as I can. Um I kind Thank of very Mary. Yeah. Well the thing is is that I'd I would have liked to have just gotten um Canary Mary's is actually fairly short, is also the thing though. So like Um if the pause trick Matt was talking about works, I would I would do it just to like get a quick jiggy. Oh, we got a $5 donation from uh, Monotone pa uh, Monotone Patio. What about the OK episode with the Ghoul School or the Johnny Bravo episode with Scooby-Doo? Are all these crossovers canon with Fortnite? What's y'all favorite crossovers in general? <laughs> Is Johnny Bravo in Fortnite? No, he's not. But I think it's like it's just it's just like oh like connecting like one crossover which is crossover something else crossover something else which was in Ford. It's like all those like six degrees of separation. Right. Yeah. The the timeline I read didn't involve uh didn't mention like the Johnny Bravo crossover, did it? Damn. Johnny Bravo crossover is pretty good. My glasses. Yeah. I can't be seen without my glasses. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why that is. Uh... Do do they consider it just like auxil and auxiliary or oh, whatever? Auxiliary uh, cannon. Auxiliary, yes, auxiliary cable cannon. It's uh... a. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, HP Joe is saying, Ted, it does work. Proton Don did it in his playthrough. A and also, yeah, no, and I remember, yeah, Justin Mon says they did the pause trip trick in the TJ2E stream. Ted, do you have a, um, do you have a game show in Tui? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to game show now. 
It's shorter, I believe. Um, ah. Yeah, I, I, I do. Li I like the game because well, the game show in uh, Tui is played out like, oh, it's it's four people competing uh, like in like an actual game show rather than like the board game that you're doing. And yeah, because it's designed to work in multiplayer since there's a multiplayer version of it. I didn't see the question. I need to read the question. Did you have to like memorize the like brand of cereal Grunty eats and all that? For your quiz show? I have all those uh, written down. I was failing um, a different question. <laughs> Yeah, but how do you know which ones are supposed to be the the right ones? Because they're randomized every time. I wrote them all down. I visited all the Brintildas. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought that you like you cheated and looked up online because you can't but you can't cheat. Oh, but they're randomized, so. You have competed Jiggy Wiggy's challenge. Why I I um why I I um why I oughta Okay hang on I got a uh, an audio question I think there's something weird going on with the sound on <laughs> mine I know that you can't ten. hear Yes Okay you can talk now Well <laughs> oh <laughs> Oh well, in the uh, game oh Yeah I have an audio oh. question <laughs> Yeah, like, like right. you have to listen to like the what the like they're saying. I thought you had an audio question for like me, like you were asking me a question about my audio. Man, how, do you, how do you plug a microphone into a computer? I love I love that in order in order to I love that to open to open up Cloud Cuckoo Land, Jiggy Wiggy shoots a bubble. Man, I wish that uh, Cauldron Keep could have been a full level. Like, the design's really cool. Um, but um, I believe they were running low on time because Nintendo really wanted this to be out for Christmas because 2000 was the was the system's last... Um, Full year. Last holiday, yeah. Oh, man. I hate this minigame. What's the red crocodile's name? Mr. Snapper? Yeah. I mean, uh -oh. oh shit. I mean, Mr. Uh, Dick up his butt. No, he, he doesn't need to know the name. He's playing a minigame against him. Oh, God damn it. So slippery. Why are you so slippery? Also, what what are your what are you some of your fave crossovers that you can think about? Oh right, that was a question someone asked. Sorry. Um, favorite crossovers. Um, shit. Um, I'm having trouble thinking of many that I like a lot. Um, typically speaking, crossovers have not usually been my favorite thing. Um. um Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm drawing a blank. Um, I guess, like, if we want to count it, the Marvel movies. <laughs> um, but again, that's like... I've... This is me being a grumpy old man, so I apologize. Uh, Did I not get cake? About this. I've been having trouble enjoying Smash Brothers past couple of years. Um, like, I just haven't been in a, like the competitive nature of the game does not drive with me at all and i haven't had many instances where i can be casual with it so i just haven't had many instances where i can just enjoy the game lately 
Uh, Kevin, did, did uh, uh, Steven's already in like the final section. And he can't go back, so you're too late. Choose color, color, color. Can't donate thirty-seven hundred. Wesley Gray. And also, someone said uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. That, that, yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom is a really good uh, example of a crossover. Okay, I've got an audio question. Okay, that one's easy. Okay, well, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna give the people what they want. Marry Canary! I'm gonna marry your Canary. Are you gonna do yeah. the... Uh... Wait, why don't you actually try to win? Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not gonna try to lose, obviously, but, like... She's cute. She's I cool. don't think I'm I'm gonna like American I would have done Mary Canary anyway because it's one of the shorter missions. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, another one someone says the Sonic and Mega Man comic crossover. Uh, the Worlds Worlds Collide I think is like my favorite uh like set of uh, in, in of all the Sonic comics. So yeah, I think I think that, that that's a really good one. And also the the DC yeah, DC meets Looney Tunes. <laughs> That's always fun. Man, I like I like crossovers, but I'm I'm having a hard time thinking of it. Is this like a crossover episode? Whoa. God. I like well, um, I mean on on mon on Friday it might technically be a crossover episode. Because we're crossover, crossing over with the internet famous celebrity Cut Icarus. I mean, Charity Room kind of is a crossover to begin with. God. This pause trick isn't working. Um, it might only work on the second one. God damn it. I don't even need to do the second one. The second one's for the Cheeto page. Yeah, for the Cheeto. Let's say, bitch. I like it when TV shows cross over. The TCR cinematic universe. The TCR. Let me let me type that into Google. TCR cinematic universe. And let's TCR see what... CU. Wow. Um, you'll be surprised to find out that um, there's nothing about us. Uh... God, I'm I'm pathetic. Needing to pause. At this because I'm actually like physically getting tired trying to match this button. Oh. Okay. okay no, I'm, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, no, no, I'm not doing this. No, thank you. You can do it. Clearly, the greatest crossover uh, was when the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles met Garfield. Yes. They met Garfield. Yeah. When did that, that happen? Uh, it happened. Uh, was it was it the early nineties? It it was published. It was a it's, a it's a single page comic that was published in an issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles magazine. And <clears throat> it is it is it is the greatest. Okay, it was published in nineteen ninety two. Okay. Basically, Garfield dresses as a turtle, goes into the sewers, and he's like, I'm Garfello. Why don't you dudes go out and fight crime while I stay here and guard the pizzas? So he, Garfield is trying to uh, to join the group and then steal their food, but he gets foiled by Odie. It, it's a... Um, it, it, it was it was written by Jim Davis or a Jim Davis associate, but uh, the the turtle the turtles were inked by Peter Laird, so there is some authentic turtleness in the comic. It is one page; it's a good page. You just search Garfield meets TMNT. Where did I go to which school? I like it. You should like it too. Which school? Which school? Which school did she go to? Uh, Fuck. I don't know. Oh, I got it right. 
<laughs> Jim Davis of Odie's channel. Wait, Jim Davis is a is a tuber, I think. That was that was an old joke that we did. Oh. That, that, that Jim Davis ran Go ran a Garfield it. News YouTube channel oh. called Odie's channel. <laughs> on toast a long, long time ago okay i've got another audio question <laughs> it's clinker's cavern Okie doke. Thank you for Blanker. letting me do that. Blanker. Oh, great, this one. You guys don't have to be quiet anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to focus. Okay, yeah, I'm, me I'm too. Kind of checking out a couple things. <laughs> Clanker's cock. <laughs> yes, Spider says time to get close. You want a chance of winning uh, the banjo plush? It might be you. Could be. There's still time. Slip in those donos. Is that is that a phrase people use? I'm sure they probably say it from time to time. Uh, that's it. The, the the TMNT Batman crossovers. Those are fun. It's such a w random crossover, but like Batman's sillier than people pretend than people often remember. So, like, I guess it works when you remember that. And it did give us the best panel in comic book history. So, you know, there is also that. Dinner, dinner, dinner. Talk this to is where her. my parents died, Raphael. Well, then there's also, um... This is where my parents died, Raphael. This is where your parents died. This is where I've got another audio died, question. Parappa. This is where your parents died, Parappa. Mm. Well, uh... Phew. There were, Are you there done were with the, the quiz now? Uh, in just a second, I will be. There, uh, there are there are three comic, uh, three comic miniseries. There's yep, a, Damn it. a okay. there's one that is a uh, like a version like with the uh, Batman the animated series and the TMNT 2012 uh, versions crossover, and then there's the uh, then there's the Batman versus TMNT animated movie. So there's yeah. already like there's a lot of different Batman TMNT crossovers too. Right. I mean they're both comics. Batman does weird things. The turtles are weird things. I mean the turtles aren't all goofy. The turtles can be serious too. The turtles are many things. And uh, was it uh the in in the in the third uh, mini series? There's a part where they cross over with the Mirage Turtles, and the Mirage Turtles are drawn by Kevin Eastman Ooh. in there. I have been reading uh, uh, TMNT, The Lost Ronin. They got all those issues because that like that's the big thing. It's like it's the first seer. It's the first story, TMNT story that Eastman and Laird collaborated on since the original. I haven't read that yet. I want to. But... Oh, I read Batman and Phase Clan. Uh, mentioned oh, you in Phase Clan. I have not yet. I have not. I I've seen some of that. But I have not read that. Oh, it's not good. Yeah, but it it's it's worth reading. I, everyone should read it. The Fortnite one's actually good though. That the, the Face Clan is ironically good. The uh, the Fortnite one is unironically good. Right. And then there's a. Uh, isn't there like a Subway comic as well? Like, I have I don't probably, but I I don't know about that one. Like, 
like DC heroes. Go to Subway. Go to Subway. Yeah. What does each DC hero order at Subway? Uh, that's a question. Uh, um, would Aquaman get the tuna? There's a ep there's a comic about that where Aquaman's eating fish and everyone's like, "What? Aquaman's eating fish?" And like Aquaman's like, "Yes, I do sometimes eat fish." It was less funny than I'm making it sound, and I'm not making it sound particularly funny. So you know. Okay. We got a go go goggle, and I'm gonna search top ten. Crossovers. Goggles. Going to goggle. Ten best crossover SUVs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there are all of the the top results are about car. That's not what I want. Best crossover uh, media. Top ten media crossovers. Yes, I don't. Wait, hold on. I know gonna, a quick jiggy. There's a quick jiggy I can get. I want to at least get to 70. I want to at least say that, like, I was less than an hour behind Steven. Like, <laughs> that's, the new, that's the new goal. Um, and there's a really, really easy jiggy to get over here. Yeah, because the, yeah, because everything, like, yeah, the, the, the final boss and the, the clip sh and the, the quiz show, yeah, would, wouldn't take more than an hour, I assume. Hmm. Oh, we got uh, five dollars from Everboy87. Haven't been able to donate because of work. Glad I could donate. Smiley face. Thank you for your donation. Thank you, everybody, for staying with us till two o'clock in the morning. Oh my god. Uh, you <laughs> know, it's still, not, it's still not the longest, but. No, but it doesn't make it not long. Unless you're living in, like, Hawaii, then. Then it only then yeah then like what's what's the time difference in Hawaii? I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Five, I think. What um, time is it in Hawaii? Says I'm asking Google. It's eight oh four p.m. There we go. Are you a uh, sixty nine? Nice. Can I, I get a nice in chat? Playing. Now I can stop playing. Are you sure? Am I free? Well, because you got sixty nine, so. How do I get out of here? There's a house of mouse. That's right. I, 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 the house of mouse is fine. Huh. They're like, wait, Smoothie's won. A lot of people are actually fooled by, by this credit. They're, they, people think that you actually won. They don't know. Yeah, they, they don't know. I guess uh, they never played uh, banjo before. And then Spider's like, "Whoop whoop, the sun is out." <laughs> Nab not? I, that's a that's a rude name. Is it? Well, we like. Nabbing, nabbing nuts? Like, sounds rude. Nah. There you are. You're running back home. A drink? You see, the reason why Steven has to... The reason why Steven has to keep on watching, even though he's already at the credits, is because at the end, Samuel L. Jackson comes and... He's going to tell Banjo that he's going to be in the Avengers. Uh, so that's why Steven has to keep on playing. Otherwise, the event, otherwise we ruin Avengers four or five shit. Um, and we don't want to do that. So that's right. Avengers five and or six and six, five and six. They announced both. They did. Yeah, yeah no, that was what they it was like uh, Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. Which, for some reason, they have both coming out in the same year, which I don't know why. 
I Aang's think. kind of a weird villain to pick, honestly. Like, he is an intergalactic threat, but he's also kind of just Thanos, but less cool. Um, so... Thanos, but funny. Uh, well, because well, yeah, you haven't seen Loki, because he shows up at the end of Loki, and, like, just, like... It's it's mostly just because of the guy who's playing him. He's, like, he's, do, he's doing, like, a really funny job. So it's, like, okay, I, I want to see it. I want to see him for him. Because it's, like, yeah, because otherwise, that yeah, King on his own is just, yeah, very, like, oh, I'm interdimensional space god guy. My, well, you know, it's, uh, not, not everyone can be the biggest threat. Uh, comic books, I mean, Marvel. I love Mingy Jongo, though. Like, when, when did the modern... Well, I guess when did the Silver Age of Marvel comics start? Like sixty one. Like the seventies, I thought. No, um, no, sixties, early sixties. Like fantastic. Well, no, well that's because Marvel Marvel started in the early sixties with um, uh, because that's when Fantastic Four came out. Marvel started a lot later than um. Oh DC shit! Did. I forgot to grab a jiggy. <gasps> uh. No, he's not at hundred percent. You got, you got a chance. <gasps> what, Steven? Don't do this to me, Steven. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> right, like um, well, cause uh, well, uh, was it? Cause, well, cause Marvel had, Marvel had like lots of stuff in uh, uh, in like the thirty. I mean, like, technically they started in thirty nine. That was when like they fully like started as Marvel Comics. Right. Like, well, they weren't Marvel yet. They, they released a comic called Marvel Comics. I think yes, they were that's, right. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the the beginning of the Marvel universe is generally credited as the Fantastic Four. Yeah, the number one. Ooh, yeah, which is nineteen sixty two. Yeah, nineteen sixty two is when like sixty one. Yeah, that, that, like that's when Marvel like got its uh like like full, full, yeah just like how uh nineteen it's night is nineteen thirty nine when uh, Superman. 38. So 38, Superman. yeah. So yeah. it's like, yeah, Superman, Action Comics 1 is when DC actually, like, got its, like, that's when it, like, the true beginning of DC, and then the true beginning of Marvel is 1961 with Fantastic Four. Right. Because even though there were Golden Age heroes, you know, like Captain America and the original Human Torch and things like that, 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 those comics all stopped. They didn't continue forever. Like with DC, I mean, because because there was a point where superhero comics fell out of favor. Like most of these titles ended. That's why, like when you look at DC and there's like a Golden Age Green Lantern and a Silver Age Green Lantern, they're two different people with two different origins and things because the one Green Lantern ended. Um, and so like the only comics that were in continuous production, I think, was Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, that was because they were legally obligated to print it, otherwise the rights would revert back to, I guess, the creator. Uh, Walter, whatever his name is. Marston. Uh, Mars, yes. Um, uh, William, William Marston. Green Arrow and Aquaman, I think, was the fifth one. Like, those were the five that just continuously uh, were... They, they never stopped were those five. Um, which, of course, then led to the point where they... When, when the Flash, when they brought in the Barry Allen Flash, and, and then they're like, oh, but how could Superman have known Jay Garrick, and Superman also know Barry Allen, if Jay Garrick was a comic book to Barry Allen, and then that's when the whole Flash of Two Worlds thing started, and then the DC Multiverse, which is uh, such and such a blah blah blah. Uh, but, you know, comics have been around forever and ever, like if, if, the, if modern Marvel begins, well, if, if Marvel begins in 1961, and now we are six, 60 years later? Is that right? Man, no? Four? Yeah, because there's also, yeah. like, the Captain America comics mm -hmm. are canon. Like, the original ones from the 40s are canon up to a point, um, but not all the way. Right. You know? There's a little bit of retconning because there were Captain America comics that took place post World War Two, like they had written them post World War Two. Yeah, but uh, they're like not And they're like, oh well that actually wasn't Captain America, that was somebody else. I mean that wasn't Steve Rogers Captain America, that was somebody else playing the part because oh, you know, when they brought brought him back, he's in the iceberg. Uh didn't didn't see it, the war end. He's stuck um, in the ice chamber. Yeah, I, I guess it's just like, you know, 
uh, Avengers Endgame. It's like, well, that's the end of Thanos. Oh, what are you going to do after that? It's like, I don't know. There's only like 60 years worth of comic books that you can pull from. There's, there's especially, plenty especially of... because the most and like most of them are like new stuff that they're focusing on anyway. So I think we yeah, can just yeah, yeah a new stuff. Mm -hmm. I just wasted like the three minutes that Stephen gave me because I thought that there was a quicker one I could get than Mingi Jongo, but oh well. Mingi Jongo. Game over. I saved. I know. It's just it's just funny to me. It's so weird that it says game over. Right. It's impossible to save without it saying it. It's annoying. Which, which, which to be fair, like, two is the same way. If you save and quit the game, then you it says game over. It just doesn't play the whole cuts. It doesn't to have a whole uh, game. Yeah, over. they didn't. They didn't have time to put one in the game. They wanted to do one where like Grunty shoots the world and sucks <laughs> the life out of it, but they didn't oh. have the time. Do you hear that? No. Exactly. What do I hear? Everyone's oh. so fucking tired. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it is. It is, uh, late. it is later. It is later I'll in the. Hyped. I don't have any drink. I ha I didn't get any drinks with me, so I can't be like uh hyper focused. Drinks? That was routine soldiers. Like coffee. Nick saying, you got it, Steven. I love you, Steven. <laughs> love Are you, you on the final boss now? I am almost there. Demon Bulkum. I, sa I saved, so I had to, you know, exit out of the whole thing. I remember when Mingi Jongo was, like, the code name that they originally used for ukulele? I was following that account and saw the moment, like, and saw the couple of tweets where they changed it from Mingi Jongo to Platonic. Because um, they did like a bzz, 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 Mingi Jongo offline thing before officially turning it into Platonic's uh, Twitter yeah. account. Uh, bruv, and if we're not done in 20 minutes, I'm getting a divorce with Steven. Oh. Wait, what do I... Go in the sexy... Have Banjo go in one side of the machine and Kazooie in the other. <laughs> See what happens. Where's the... Oh yeah, I guess I gotta go this way. Where's Dingpot? Hey, I'm Dingpot. Look at me. Forget how long the quiz in Banjo-Tooie actually takes, like when you skip everything and you know all the answers to the questions. Are you there? Um, I'm. I'll be there in a moment. I'm. Um. So did you get seventy? Yeah, I got seventy. Oh, nice. I'm doing the final puzzle. Yeah. So honestly, it's like maybe he's maybe thirty minutes behind you, which really isn't that. That's actually that is really really good. Ted, if I fuck up a bunch, you could take this. I don't think you will though. And also, I cheated because I was playing when you took your second break. So, you know, there's that. But, like, I've also been cheating the whole run anyway, so who cares? Cheating how? Because right. I'm using the version that runs at, like, double the frame rate yours does. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, te well, I mean technically, the Switch version probably runs slightly better than the N64 version. Playing it on, on an N64 would anyway. Um, I mean, considering how the other N64 games emulate, I'm not so sure about that, but, you know. Um, I don't know about that one, Stefan. Oh. Although, yeah, but, but, although, yeah, if he was playing the 360 version, then, yeah, that would be much more smoother. Double Chimby, um, Chimbus, um, TJ had to 100% the game. Uh, I have, like, another five hours left if I want 100% the game. Because I but skipped... All 
many, yeah. many, many. I skipped um, like 17 or 18 jiggies, um, not including Jinjos, because like um, I got a couple of Jinjo jiggies. Um, and I purposefully skipped the like. Like, I didn't do the Clinker Cavern, I didn't do, um, Weldar, I didn't do, man, um, many of the longer ones in, uh, in Cloud Cuckoo Land, so. Yeah, if I was going for 100%, we'd be, I'd be here for at least another three hours, I think. Um, well, that's too long. I mean, not long enough. It's not the long, if, uh, I think, oh, damn it, this is, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, TJ didn't 100% the game, but he, and he, and it took him two, like, different sessions, because, like, there's, he like, didn't one. He did 100% the game? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't think so, yeah, because there, there was one side, there was one session that took, like, all night, and they didn't finish, they had to stop, and then he went back to it, then following day, to do the rest of it. That means that... We need to actually 100% Tui for a stream one day, because we've never done it. It's all up to you, Ted. Can it be up to me? Not right now. Not right now. Okay, good. All right. Okay, yeah, I, I don't care. Who is that? Is this a race or a walk, guys? Come on! <laughs> Why are you still up? Why are you still up? I'm always. Still... I'm playing because I have no control over my life. Are Wait. you? In, are you in New York right now? Are you in New York, NYC, the place to be? Do 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 do. I just I just I just assume you're everywhere where Kevin is. Right. Uh, it's like, you're oh, the same. New York. What if you are too? He does live like seven hours from me, but yeah, <laughs> I, I'm there. <laughs> no. I'm not back in my room. There's a song about New York City on the Carmen San Diego soundtrack. <gasps> Why? Well, I died. Uh, I... Oh no! Don't die. That means you gotta do it again. Okay. You died on Grunty. So I just for half a second I turned the opposite direction of her while standing on the ledge, and but she was also standing behind me when she shot me so when the projectile came towards me well technically it should have knocked me back onto the normal ground but no because i was facing a certain direction i got knocked back in the direction the projectile came from mm. uh, a trick a trick of the game even i've been reading some of the gossip on the r slash the charity room subreddit where there's been a lot of gossip happening tonight we have a subreddit and they I don't think that you're throwing the game to keep dramatic suspense. Oh. We have uh, a subreddit? No. I mean, yeah, then they're all really, <laughs> really, really reading the tea leaves here, I think. Is it TCR or The Charity Room? Um, yeah. Uh huh. I've always loved this dialogue where Kazooie says that every time this music plays that they get into a fight. <laughs> oh, I can go again. Uh, when when I searched the charity room one word on Reddit, the only thing that popped up, indie devs are mad at the charity room for streaming Mario's death. Nintendo <laughs> one April twenty twenty one. Wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dear the charity room team, we represent Nintendo of Europe, GmbH, Nintendo. I see, I see what's going on. Oh, I believe there's yeah. comedy happening. Right, the, the DMCA oh, that we got. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. April. Well, what happens when you search it with with spaces? Oh, with spaces. Um. Oh, I like how the relevant ones are are from last Nick. year. They're just all posted by Star Killer, aka Nick and Chat. <laughs> That's the right. FTCR subreddit, David. Everything the sun touches is yours. That's your land, technically. 
That was my fault. I jumped right into that. I can't I like believe it. I almost died to Klungo. That was pathetic. Oh, I forgot you fight Klungo. Yeah, it's like an extra 45 seconds. Yeah, and, and also because because with Klungo, all three like the fate like the the three moves that he does is randomized for each of the three fights. Like so, it's like there are three different like things that he can do. But like it's like the like the first one could be the third one on like a different playthrough. Yeah. Speaking of discussion happening elsewhere, I popped in FTCR's uh, charity uh, room. Not that charity room, but the room about the charity room. And Golden4 asks, How much would we have to raise for you to delete all traces of the streams instead of archive them? <laughs> all of oh, them? That feels like a solid like 150k, right? Yeah. Like The entire event's just gone. Oh, I thought he meant like everything, like even on our YouTube channel, like everything. Oh, did he just say I, event? I no, he he said, "quote delete all traces of the streams from existence." Yeah, the streams. I'm just saying the entire event because that's the entire event. <laughs> Fuck me, man. J Conroy says, "I think we need to cure diabetes." <laughs> Me, oh, yeah, if you can give enough money that we will definitively cure diabetes, uh, then fuck all this shit, man. Yeah, we, we did it. The charity room is no more. Our final mission. Goodbye. <laughs> Five year mission. The yes. truth about 50 years ago. Space Colony Arc. End everything. That's right. Ooh, hedgehog. Wishes <laughs> are eternal. What does that mean? When you make a wish, it goes out into the stars and it never goes dead. <laughs> Will Defoe, I might have made 20 million from the Fortnite movie? <laughs> How do you make 12, 20 million? Will, Will Defoe <laughs> made 20 million. That that is an ultimate crossover, right? Isn't there like an internet movie that somebody made on the internet? This is the ultimate showdown. Damn it, oh, yeah. Grunty. Steven. Uh -huh. I've never thought about how the fight against Ripto and Spyro 2 was either a better or worse version of the Grunty fight. I would say the Grunty fight is a bit better, just because that that like I the the one it's it, it's both. Uh, well, it, it's it, if you know what you're doing, it's really short, and also uh, the, 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 because there's, because since in this one you can like land on the ground and like restart your old position while you're just you're flying in the air and either you get it done or you're dead and you gotta do the whole thing over again. Yeah. So, I like the Grunty fight until the very end, um, where it's like you don't kill her, the Jinjos do. Like I don't know. Like I wish that, like you killed her, that would be cool. I like murder. I don't know. Like Steven might have this. I don't know. I mean, you're flying around in the sky. Steven, you've been gaming hard for about eight hours. Is your switch about to melt down right before you input the final command? So ready, Chris. <laughs> a shell of a man. Well, I started off as a shell. I don't even know what's left. Dust? I just have some creamy filling now. Where'd that come from? It, from Manjo. They put a little essence back into you. A little sticky, gooey, gelatinous essence. Gooey and gel... <laughs> Don't right, you pick apart finish. the wording, it's just true. No, it's true, I'm just saying you better finish <laughs> soon. I'm taking some melatonin right now. You better finish soon, I'm almost there. You better finish soon. Speak for my... For, for <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, Genjo Nader's about to spawn, and then I can fill him with eggs. 
in Oh two. no. If you die and then die again, <laughs> maybe I can win. And Cloud Cuck. Yo. Hawk. Eggman's cock? <laughs> no, 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 don't zoom in like that. Oh, Steven. On the edge of my little seat here. I wasn't expecting to come back and see this so close. What's Ted doing? I'm on the... I'm on the, the quiz show. He's doing pretty okay, too. Uh, he's not under a giant weight, so I think he's doing okay. Tell us a duvet. Uh, a duvet is a piece of furniture. It's, it's like a, a bed it's thing, a, right? It's a blanket. Yeah, a bed thing. It's something I could have told you what it was if it had been asked any other time than just now, apparently. <laughs> Duvet is a blanket, then just say the word blanket, stupid British. That's game. Player. Yeah, okay, I'm, thank you. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> You did it. Oh my you god, did. Steven, you won Banjo Kazooie. How's it feel? Um, feels, feels great, Chris. You showed Ted once and for all that Banjo Kazooie is maybe slightly marginally better than Banjo Tooie, going by the results. <laughs> Can I go to bed? No. Well, you got it. You no. got it. The, uh, the final quiz. Yeah. Once you finish the quiz, then you can go to bed. Well, no. I. No. There's another member of the thing of the quiz after this. It's two in the this, morning. This is how we string Ted along. It's like, okay, but I mean, you beat the quiz. What if you just beat up Grunty? Yeah. What if you just beat the? Why don't you just beat the no. game? You're so close. No. No. no it's just another half. Of... I have work at. I have to be up for work at before six and seven in the morning. Oh Jesus! Oh, that's yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well then you should. I'd like to have more than four hours of sleep tonight, right. so I'm gonna respectfully say screw you. Um, <laughs> I guess you, you gotta. Well, if it's done, then, then you got to do all the the wrapping up for the night, right? Like. Oh yeah, the 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 the. the, the, and the yeah, the raffle and stuff. Let's do that. Yeah. I'm gonna stop streaming on my end because that sounds like fun. Okay. Right. Right. Tie everything up into a nice little bow. Do what you do. Do what's been done. D express express your charity in the room in the most. Thank you, everybody, for raising yeah so <laughs> much money. Um, um, today, everyone. Like I know that I'm a barely functioning shell of a man. Uh. But I absolutely appreciate your support. Um, we've got eleven thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars and ninety cents. That's like a crazy, crazy. amount of money. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody. Um, so let's start off by cementing what game won the crash poll. It was Crash Three. Um, I think that's not gonna surprise. It was Crash One. No, it was Crash Three. Did we read Everboy Everboy eighty seven's donation? Okay. All right. So, uh, can we pick our uh, raffle winner for the night? All right. Uh, I saw the melons go by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yuck, 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 yuck. Have we finished now, Tootie? Can I relax? I think that's what everyone's saying right now. <laughs> Okay, I'm I'm ready to uh, raffle off. 
You guys all good to go? Hey, yo. Raffle it off, baby. The winner of the Banjo and Kazooie plushie is... Delinquo Savvy. Hey, I recognize that username. Congrats. You get a whole ass banjo plush. <laughs> I wonder if they are here with us. Who was this it? This is where I'm like. Who Delinquo was it? Savvy, I believe. Oh, are they in the chat? I don't know, but we will send them an email when they yes. are um, uh, announcing them of their winnerness. Um, did we have anything else we needed to wrap up before the game is over? I... Are we closing the crash one thing now? or? Yeah. Yeah, we just did. I, I went in and did that when we said okay. it. Okay. Cool. So... I guess that is um, basically what we wrap up with. We will return Friday with Kadikaris and Nairman, aka Ryan, at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, are we keeping the bid war for Team and T Shredder's Revenge and Scott Pilgrim open? Yes, that, that, that's staying open until after. Uh, yeah, until after uh, Crash is done, since it's literally just they're both on Switch, and I can just quickly go to whatever, whichever one. So yeah, that, that's no worry. So okay. yeah, we're. Keeping that open, so you have that. Yeah, we. Yeah, so we all have. We all have three days to basically just take it easy, rest ourselves. Uh, we're, we're gonna have. We're gonna have a couple more uh, little call out post videos for you to look out for to remind you. We're, we're gonna try and see get a couple of these videos out during this week, just so you have like oh something to watch if you want to rewatch uh, any any of these on YouTube. And then uh, yeah, then we're gonna just jump right back in to everything on Friday in hopes of reaching 15k for that second Monday. Thank you, everybody. Go to bed. Go to bed. Or wake up, depending on what you're doing right now. Wow. Was imagine gonna... if... Oh, go on, David. I was just going to say, imagine if somebody could only sleep while while listening to the Charity Room stream. And now, apparently, Catherine was sleeping in the charity room stream. So. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, yeah. should I should I wait for the credits to be over? Or do we not care? Turn it off? Not doing? really. No. Are they are these credits different than the other credits? They are. They're just listing off the enemies, and that's it. I think at, work, or at the most, at least, Ted can go and we can stay. I don't care. Up to you guys. But we should probably let Ted go at least. Go to bed, Ted. Okay. Good night, Ted. All right. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for taking it easy on me, Steven, and uh, giving me something <laughs> resembling a fighting chance. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Hi, Ted. Bye. And we never saw Ted again. Ted's bed, baby. Ted's <laughs> bed. <laughs> That'd be real awkward if he got crushed by an anvil on the way to his bed. It'd also be funny if somebody donated $4,000 right now. I was like, can't wait to see that 100% run. I was going to joke about that, but I didn't want Ted to be angry at me. <laughs> well, uh, that's gone now. No, I, already, I already did that. I already <laughs> joked about that. Oh, okay. Because that's the kind of joke where you say that, and then there's like a 50-50 shot it happens. <laughs> well, I think at this point, if it if it if it did happen, it'd be like, sorry, that that's over. But thank you for yeah. Like right sh shortly before he got to uh, the thing, I was like, hey, hey, what what if I told you we reached 4K? There was like five seconds of silence, and they're like, don't do this to me. No, no. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Stephen, Chris, I played banjo again. Still like it? Um, yeah, still like it. Uh, I played it maybe. It's probably my third or fourth time playing it this year. Oh, wow. This year alone? Mm, yeah, this year alone. Oh, I respect that. I practiced it like. Okay, this would be my third time. I practiced it twice this year. Mm -hmm. And then left it alone for two months and so obviously forgot everything. So that's. Nice. <laughs> 
understand. Mm. I have probably played through SA1 maybe 14 plus times, and I still have things where I'm going through as Knuckles, and I'm just like, where do I go right now? <laughs> the simplest thing, and I lose it. Oh, oh man. Fish. Oh, All right, you want to rate the uh, SA1 right now? <laughs> you and me? Yeah, it's, 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 it's fine. We got some days to fill. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> David, do you think you could win a race in SA1? Um, it would. I I feel like I would have to. to I mean, if if I were to do it, was maybe, maybe. I don't know if I could do it this very second. Like win. Um, I feel like I'd want to practice a little bit if I was if I were to actually compete properly. But just for the heck of it, I can just play it. Uh, who knows? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I have the crown right now, so you'd be you'd be up on my turf. That's right. That's like when 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 the heavy weight boxing man says, "Whoa, <laughs> whoa, uh, hey!" <laughs> and you're like, "Oh yeah." That Dreamcast controller could be in your hands right now. Right. right. Well, you know, I mean, if I I don't know like all the speed run strats, but I've played Sonic Adventure a number of times. Let's do it, right? Not right now. So my thing what? is, I don't... Privately, in a secret, you know? Yeah, in secret. I don't like putting in the time to learn, like, the speedrun level skip stuff, but I do yeah. like putting in the time to get really fast at playing the game semi-normally. Like, the spin dash jump is maybe debatable sometimes, but for the most part, I like to just do what the game kind of expects uh, you to do. Yeah. Uh, D David, what, what, what's what's the Scooby-Doo timeline that you and were talking about? Because someone is, was was looking for because they want to see it themselves. Oh, um, it is on. Did I close it? No, I didn't. Um, it, the website's called Snoo. It's, I think it's ScoobySnacks.com. Uh, S N A X dot com. That might just redirect to a Weebly website because the address is Scooby Snacks. Then the number one dot weebly dot com um and it, it's hiding somewhere in in that uh oh wait can i just post the link i guess i could post the link why not i guess i have that power there it's in the chat it's in the stream chat that is the scooby-doo it says official but it, i mean i don't think hannah barbera signed off on it chimba says Charity Room has done every banjo except Pilot One. Oh, Pilot, I believe. What's Pilot? Banjo Pilot, the the, the racing game on GBA. Oh, we gotta do it next year. We gotta finish the list. We also gotta do Conquer. Oh, we do. No, I was thinking Conquer uh, Race. Bad, bad Fur Day versus Live and Reloaded. Mm. Hmm. Do we have? Conquer heads, Stefan. You probably like Conquer. Yeah, right? probably me. Is there I anyone know. else? I think one of our Conquer people left. <laughs> I am. Uh, I want to play it. I just have never owned it. Yeah. Yes. The the entire like rare in sixty four landscape. I I just haven't dived into. And also, but, uh, technically, gold, we were going to do Golden Eye for one of the years, but that fell through. So we need to try to do Golden Eye again. Yeah. Oh, Brewhaven says we should do a DK64 race. Kevin would be interested in that. And, and, Shade, and, we, and, and we bring Shade in for that. Shade. <laughs> oh, yeah, Shade. Shade's you debut. Watch, like, or do anything. Shade. Huh. I am looking at Scooby Snacks list here. Uh huh. Uh, oh, okay. Wait, I, I I was looking at this wrong. Oh, okay. I, I had an issue, but I got over it. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, the list it has three separate timelines. I mean, I guess Mystery Inc. is its own universe. There's a reboot world universe, and there's yeah. a regular universe. Um, Mystery Inc. Been... being an alternate timeline is where I started thinking what, but then I realized I don't actually remember anything that could or wouldn't <laughs> make it a different timeline so i said you know what i don't care 
Yeah. But it's like technically because like the because in, in, in that in that video it says that oh pup named Scooby Doo is in the, the thing where they all met, but it's like in Mystery Inc. they say they met like later, not as kids, so that's probably where that the main uh, reason why it's a alternate. Always fucking Scrappy's fault. Alright. And then they meet R Ricky Gervais in the new one. I mean, Scrappy-Doo is still an important character. It, it did keep the Scooby-Doo franchise afloat for a number of years. So you gotta give that little... That little... <laughs> dog credit. I was like... What's and, I mean? and, then, and then James Gunn single-handedly killed him. With a gun? Yes. The yes. end. There it is. Let's go look at that save file real quick. We gotta make sure he actually did it. 99%! Ted, oh. come back here! Ted, get back in! Ted, Red Dead Redemption! It says you, you only finished 47% of the game. That's so weird. There it is. Six, almost seven hours. It says almost seven hours, but... It's been way longer. Yeah, you've been streaming for eight hours, eleven minutes. So I don't know what happened there. Yeah. That would have been all the achievements if you were on an Xbox, you Chivo gamer. Thinking the game's clock might be a little slow. Mm hmm That's it. Well, were you running your own clock at the same time? <laughs> what? Hmm? Like, <laughs> does, it, does, it count pause, does it count pauses as in-game play? Because it might not. Uh, no, but I don't think I was paused for an hour. <laughs> Our experts will examine this in post, I'm sure. And by experts, <laughs> I mean whoever watches this again and cares. <laughs> they will care. Um, well, first they'll have, to get to this, subreddit. they'll have to get to this point <laughs> of the video, and then they'll be like, oh, well, I gotta go back now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh. Okay. Let's write something in the description when it's uploaded. Uh, please, oh, someone have no. a question? Okay. Are we done here? Yeah, we're done. Let's shut it down. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Yeah, Justin Munn says, I'll watch it, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think okay. that, yeah. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, gamers. Good night. Exclamation point. Harry versus Room.